Welcome to this course, and in collaboration with Leap Year Learning, we'd like to welcome you to the complete AI guide to 10x your productivity and creativity. So why enroll in this course? Because one day of research can literally save you one year of trial and error. So together, we'll learn how to fully understand and implement the most powerful AI tools for your personal and professional projects. This is going to lead to you gaining the confidence and know-how to use these rapidly evolving AI tools in your daily life. We'll also be updating this course regularly as your one-stop shop for AI learning. Let's do a quick overview of the course. So here on the right, we'll see all the different sections that we have. And if you expand on the sections on the right, you'll see the different lessons that are inside of each section. And some of them have external resources attached. If so, you can just click the link here and it will take you to whatever website or resource was being discussed inside of the lesson. Sometimes we have articles that are not video lessons, but they will take you to an external link or resource of some kind. And finally, we'll end each section with a learning activity. So we suggest you go through the course from start to finish to get the most value. But if you come across a section that is maybe not of your interest, for example, if you don't know how to code and you just want to jump ahead to learn how to make some AI art instead, feel free to skip a section and continue progressing through the course. After we go in depth with ChatGPT, Midjourney and Dolly. Then we go into the third party AI tool integration section. And that section is going to list an overview of some amazingly powerful AI tools. But the goal of that section is to get all of these on your radar so you know what's out there, you know what's possible. From there, you can explore the tools you are most excited about in these sections. We put so much into this course and we're so excited to share it with you. Anything less Less than a five-star review does hurt the rating of the course, so if there's any issues at all, please reach out to us directly. And before we hop into this course, we just wanted to share a quick background about ourselves and who we are. So my name is Julian Melanson, and I've been a full-time filmmaker, an entrepreneur in the creative and educational space for the last 10 years. I've also been a best-selling online teacher for the last five years. As the media director for Subject.com, I brought together cutting edge technology and software to develop and teach over 60 courses for high school students around the country. And in this course, I'm super excited because I'm gonna be sharing all of the information that I've learned about how to use AI to optimize your productivity and spend more time on the exciting parts of your projects and your career that bring you the most enjoyment and success. And I'm Benza Maman. I've been a full-time creative and entrepreneur in the advertising, music, and tech space for the past 13 years. As the creative producer for Subject.com, I implemented systems and technology to maximize student engagement, curriculum development, and video production workflow. In this course, I'll be sharing every technique I've learned on how you can expand your life by effectively learning how to use and fuel your imagination with AI. Together, Julian and I have over 160,000 students with over 8,500 reviews in over 130 countries. And now onto the course. Now to start things off, I wanted to share with you three awesome and incredibly powerful AI tools. The first tool that I wanted to share is this Chrome extension called YouTube Summary with ChatGPT. What this is gonna allow you to do is in one click, copy the entire transcript of any YouTube video and paste that into ChatGPT to get a concise summary of the most important points of the video. Next is Layapix, which is an AI tool that will automatically add motion to any of your AI generated art. And this is so cool because just in a few seconds, you can really add a dynamic look and bring your pictures to life. And lastly is this incredible ChatGPT prompt. Just at the click of a button, it's gonna give you the top five business ideas to go after in your specific industry 
organized by the difficulty level, the time needed, and the potential upside. It's also gonna break down your target market, competitors, potential challenges, revenue streams, marketing strategies, initial startup costs, ongoing expenses, if it's in your brand alignment, the social impact that the idea is gonna have, and its scalability. Now that was just a small example of what's to come in this course. We are so excited to have you on this journey and now on to the next chapter. So welcome to this chapter. In this section, what we're gonna do is talk about ChatGPT, what it is, how you can use it, and really get an overall fundamental understanding of the magical genie in a bottle that this AI tool actually is and we're going to learn what we can do to use it for our job for our personal projects for creative endeavors and really anything so let's hop into the info so first of all what is it it's an ai language model trains on a massive amount of text data that generates natural language responses that's the key to chat gpt in a conversational style so what that leads to is the future of it. So tools like this and other tools are really gonna seamlessly be integrated into our entire daily lives, into our computers, into our smartphones, and eventually what we're gonna have is literal full-time AI assistance in life. If you have a problem with your wife or girlfriend, the you know AI uh, co-pilot or personal assistant is gonna know you, your demographic, your spending habits, your emotional uh, tendencies, really who you are and all your personality traits. And this is the first wave of what this is gonna be. So understanding it now is gonna do wonders for you down the road, but really we're all gonna have these personal AI assistants that are gonna be able to speak to us just as a human does, but the difference is, is it's plugged into billions of pieces of content and data, just like a superhuman brain, so it knows a lot more than the average person knows. So that's gonna be the future of it. It's gonna be custom tailored to you and it's gonna be able to offer you any information and advice that you need. So the main benefits of this are, of course, the first one, saving time, saving time, saving time. That's the big takeaway with all these AI tools is it, what it does is it's not gonna necessarily be bad in the sense that it will change people's jobs and be a radical disruptor. So it's gonna be a massive time saver. And what else that leads to is it's gonna also allow for you as a creative or a business professional to extend into fields outside of your normal expertise. So you can say yes to new jobs, even though jobs will change, some will be taken away and some will be added. At the end of the day, if you know how to use these tools on a fundamental level and for your specific job, then you can use it to say yes to more gigs. If it extends beyond what you would normally not be able to do, something like chat GPT, the only problem is the name of this tool. I swear they need to change that, but it allows for you to extend beyond your general field of expertise. And it also allows for you to quickly get ideas off the ground and reiterate much, much more effectively and efficiently. The first part of brainstorming and creativity of getting your ideas out and remixing them and brainstorming is very time consuming with something like this what we're going to learn to do is be able to quickly reiterate and create new ideas so with that said let's talk about the main types of outputs that really help to categorize the abilities of chat gpt into different categories so the first one that we're gonna cover is synthesizing info. And this is one of the huge parts of this tool. You're able to summarize massive amounts of content in a clear and concise way. Up next is content creation and copy. This is where we're gonna generate brand new content on a specific topic for a specific purpose. After that, we're gonna talk about learning and research. We're gonna be able to get questions answered super effectively and super quickly without wasting any time. And lastly, we're gonna talk about coding. So we'll get into generating code, info on programming concepts and APIs, and debugging. So now that you see what we're gonna get into in this chapter, next up we're gonna talk about why Google is different from ChatGPT and how it matters for you. So now let's talk about the difference between ChatGPT and a Google search. So they both 
are AI powered tools that differ in a few different ways. So let's first talk about the purpose. Of course, as we know, the Google search purpose is a search engine that helps you find links to information on the web. While ChatGPT, on the other hand, is an interactive tool that not only finds you the information you're searching for, but intelligently, and I put that in quotes because it's kind of hard to say what's if it's intelligently doing it, but it's processing the information that it's been trained on in a way that's personalized for your needs and for your prompts. So if I wanna find information on top 10 search destinations in Paris, I can go online and I can type that and Google, of course, is gonna serve me up a specific link that I can find on their search page that will give me that information, but it's not personalized to me. There's algorithms for Google that's showing you certain links and it's not showing other people that, depending on your demographic and where you live, but it's not really personalizing the information. ChatGPT, on the other hand, can grab that information and give me a list of the top 10 destinations, but in a personalized, conversational way. So we can get more information and it can be more specific to our use case. So the next thing is now the input. A Google search requires a user to type in a specific qu uh, query or question, whereas ChatGPT interacts with the user, like we just mentioned, in a conversational and iterative, iterative manner. This is key. So you get to work with ChatGPT to get your desired output by asking follow-up questions. Even if you don't know the right question to ask, this is one of the coolest parts about the conversational style. It opens up a whole new world of learning where you basically have this magic genie in a bottle on your screen where you don't even have to know the question to ask it yet. You can literally ask, which we'll get into, ChatGPT, what question can I ask you to get better at XYZ? Or what specific trends and new things coming out should I know about for my online cooking business? It'll tell you what you should know before you even know that you don't know it, if that makes sense. So we can ask questions which you cannot do on Google to get the answers that you want. Next up is output. So Google searches return a list of web pages related to your question, where ChatGPT can provide a single answer or a specific response. And an interesting statistic that I came across recently was that 40% of first clicks on a Google search, that user generally returns to the search page. So what this means is when you're doing a Google search, you find your page of information, you look at the different links, you click on the first, second, or third link, and you go back to that search, and then you click another link, that's generally uh, stating that you're probably not finding the specific answer on the first link that you clicked. So it's actually not as effective as you'd like to be getting that information quickly. So ChatGPT is gonna serve you that information, especially when you give the correct prompts to get it on the first search versus the second, third, or fourth search. And the last point is the scope, and this is gonna change with time, but right now, currently, Google has much more access to more current and a larger amount of information on the web that is current today. ChatGPT is limited to a certain amount of information that it was trained on. This is gonna change with time, because eventually, tools like ChatGPT are gonna be connected to the current online information that's on the web the moment you're doing your search. So in short, Google is a search tool to find information on the web, while ChatGPT is a conversational tool that can help you get the right questions to ask and then synthesize large amounts of that information for your specific needs. So as we dive into this course, once we get these basics figured out, we're gonna learn how you can use this tool for your business and for your personal life. So what we're gonna do in this lesson is look at the layout and the different tools that we have on the main ChatGPT website. So you first wanna to go to chat.openai.com, sign up for your account if you haven't already, and this is gonna be our standard layout. We have our toolbar on the side here. We can clear our past conversations, and every time you create a new chat, like this, you click new chat, and you type in whatever your question is, it's now gonna uh, log that chat in this sidebar and you can actually delete or you can rename your chat as well. And if we scroll down here, we can clear all of our conversations. We can change it from dark mode to light mode. 
We can open up the OpenAI Discord, which I highly recommend you checking out for information, FAQs, um, and the community that OpenAI is building. You can go to your account information, um, updates, and uh, frequently asked questions page, and you can log out. So let's go ahead and do our first uh, example search using ChatGPT. So I'm just gonna type in explain um, how a DSLR camera shoots photos at the comprehension level of a fourth grader. You hit enter, and once you hit enter, boom, it puts in your question, and ChatGPT goes to work right away gathering your info. So while it's answering your question, you can click this button to stop it from generating an answer if you wanted to change something in your question, or after it answers, you can hit regenerate response, and it's gonna basically pop out the same information, but spoken in a different way. So I definitely recommend experimenting with uh, ChatGPT to see how it answers your questions so you can really start to learn how it processes what you're saying. There's a thumb up and thumb down icon. This helps ChatGPT's team to hone in on what search answers and information are working well for their um, customers and what aren't. Now, if I wanted it to, for example, rewrite this answer as a 1,000, let's say actually say 500 word essay for a um, photography blog. I'm gonna hit enter. Oh, and by the way, while it's generating your information, you can click the stop generate button for it to stop right away generating its answer if you wanted to change your question or you just wanted to stop it for whatever other reason. And after that's done, you can regenerate the response. If for whatever reason you didn't get the response you didn't that you wanted, and you don't wanna change your question, you can click regenerate, and it's going to take that same information and give it back to you in a slightly different way. Up here as well, if you wanted to change your question, you can question, you can click this icon, and it's gonna allow for you to go ahead and retype the information of your question to get a slightly different response. So just like that, we have now a rewritten version of our first question. Now we have a 500 word essay written for a photography blog. So I would really recommend getting on ChatGPT, asking it questions and really trying to understand and see how it processes your questions and how it processes information so you can better learn how to use it. So this lesson is all about effectively creating prompts because as you can now realize, what you put into ChatGPT is enormously responsible for what you're going to get out of it. And you can put different results in and get different results out. So let's expand upon this so you can find the best way to understand what you really want to know. Effectively creating prompts. You can have levels of explanation. You can explain the sun as if you would explain it to a first grader or an astrophysicist or somebody that works at SpaceX, which is going to be a completely different depth of explanation. You can ask top books I should read this year versus top 10 books I should read as an up and coming musician. Now on to the chat GPT formula. Here we've broken down how to effectively create a prompt into five steps. We have a GitHub prompt book link, which I'll show you at the end. Now on to the chat GPT prompt formula. We've broken down how to effectively create a prompt into five simple steps. We have this GitHub prompt book link, which I will show you at the end. And now we'll dive into these five steps. So the first and most important thing, you need to consider the context of your prompt. How is ChatGPT going to engage with you? You can ask ChatGPT to act as something. It can act as a personal trainer. It can act as a therapist. It can act as an expert in gravity. It can act as, 
It can act as a genius musical composer. You need to ask ChatGPT to be whoever you want it to be to get the right answer. So if you're asking about music, you want to ask it to be an expert musician. If you're asking about food, you want it to be an expert chef, etc., etc. If you have a text thread already going and you've, say, asked ChatGPT to act as a travel guide and suddenly in the same chat you change your mind and you have a completely different question, you should say, ignore all previous instructions before this one because ChatGPT has short-term memory. So it will remember a conversation, which is what allows it to, say, break down an article into 10 bullet points, and then you can just say, summarize number three, and it will know exactly what you're talking about and do it correctly. So if you want to change your mind and go into completely new direction, you need to tell ChatGPT to ignore the previous instructions so it doesn't get confused. You can ask ChatGPT to have a different tone when it answers. It can write something serious and formal, friendly and casual. It can explain something like to a five-year-old. It can explain something like to a college graduate. You have an example prompt here that is all of the different steps that we are talking about. Step number two, give your model a task to complete. It's helpful if ChatGPT knows what task are you trying to complete. So if you say your task is to break this article down into 10 bullet points, or your task is to synthesize the information I'm giving you and write me a meal plan, whatever it is, it's helpful to be as specific as possible so ChatGPT knows exactly what you're trying to get out of it. Number three, it's important to be specific. If ChatGPT keeps responding with certain symbols or things that you don't want in there, you can say, in quotes, remove this symbol, whatever that symbol might be. Maybe it's giving you a bullet point list when you didn't ask for one. Maybe it's numbering things when you didn't want it to. So you can ask it to remove specific symbols. You can ask it to answer with specific symbols. The more specific you are, the better your result will be. Number four, this is really why ChatGPT is so amazing. You have to ask questions. It's iterative. You can elaborate on things. You can ask it a question, it will write you something, and you can respond to it. You don't have to put the whole question in the answer. And You can just say, hey, tell me a little bit more about that. Or, I didn't understand the third sentence. Or, can you rewrite that in a different way? So ChatGPT remembers what it just said to you, so it's able to talk to you conversationally to help explain something in a more digestible way if you need it to. And number five, if you don't like the output, just rework your prompt, try again. That's what I mean by iterative. Sometimes it takes a couple tries and you have to say, hmm, okay, I asked it to act as an expert in this field, but that didn't quite give me the answer that I want. Maybe I should ask it to pretend to be a professor at a university in this field. And sometimes it does take a couple tries but if you're willing to work with this, this is the skill set of the future. As AI keeps coming in and will be more and more embedded into society, learning how to prompt it, how to ask the right questions to get the results that you want is so, so important. A couple unique prompts that are fun to play around with is you can ask, what would I not think of on this topic? Or what are some uncommon or less well-known answers to this same question? You can ask ChatGPT for the things that you can't even think of, and it can help you understand the questions that you need to ask. So now let's take a quick look at this GitHub prompt book. It'll open in this page here. So you scroll down, awesome ChatGPT prompts. Indeed, they are awesome. And you scroll down until we arrive here, act as an English translator or improver, act as a Linux terminal, act as a position interviewer, and so on and so forth. And these are all the prompts that people have already made to act as specific people and experts in different fields and a screenwriter, a novelist. And this tells ChatGPT, how do you want to interact with it? Who should it be? What kind of information should it pull from to give to you? And these are such a wonderful starting point 
for when you're looking to ask ChatGPT a question, I highly, highly recommend you dive in to all of these, well, or at least the ones that are relevant to you. This lesson is about modifying your prompt to get the best results you can from ChatGPT. So we have prompt modifiers for better outputs. Here are a list of different modifiers you can use when speaking to ChatGPT to get different results. We have qualifiers. If you ask ChatGPT, what are some things I can do in Paris? It's going to give you a different answer than what are most of the things I can do in Paris, which is a crazy question to ask, or what are all the things I can do in Paris, which I don't recommend you asking that question. But you can see how you need to be specific and tell ChatGPT what are you looking for. Are you looking for some recipes? Are you looking for five recipes? This will help ChatGPT know how to give you the answer that you want. Adjectives. Words that describe or modify nouns and pronouns, such as red, happy, large, exciting. Do you want ChatGPT to write an exciting article about something? Do you want it to write a depressing article about something? This will drastically change the quality of response you get. Adverbs. Words that modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs such as quickly, well, loudly. Do you want intensifiers? Words that strengthen the meaning of an adjective or adverb such as very, extremely, totally. Do you want ChatGPT to write negatives? Words that negate or reverse the meaning of a sentence such as not, never, no. This is good for telling ChatGPT things you do not want it to include or you do not want it to act as or things you don't want to hear about in your answer. Number words such as one, two, few, many, several that indicate quantity. Again, a list of five things is different than a list of many things. Time words, words that indicate when something happened or will happen, such as now, yet, soon. That's very different if you ask ChatGPT to give you a history of the US between the years 1890 and 1900. That's a very specific time versus just what's the general history of the US or what's the history of the US from the 1990s to the 2000s. Place words, words that indicate where something is or happen, such as here, there, or everywhere. Degree words, words that indicate the extent or degree to which something is true, such as totally, completely, slightly. Remember, the choice of modifier you use will greatly impact the quality of the answer you get. So put some thought into your modifiers. Take some times with your prompt. In the previous lesson, we talked about how if you act as a personal trainer, it will give you better fitness advice than if you simply just ask chat GPT to give you the same fitness advice without telling it to act as a personal trainer. Just like with these modifiers, you just need to put time and thought into your prompt and work with ChatGPT to get the answers that you want. Now what I want to talk about is the OpenAI Playground. Now this is going to be a separate website using ChatGPT's same functionality, but there's a few good reasons to check it out and to use it. If you're getting error messages on the normal ChatGPT website, you can use this website to circumvent those problems. Um, if there's a high amount of people using ChatGPT, sometimes they'll throttle back the website and you can't ask it questions. So if that happens, go here. Um, and as well, this website also allows for more uh, customized functionality. So this is the overall layout. We have three different modes. We have a completion mode, we have the insert mode, and we have the edit mode. So with the completion mode, this is kind of the same normal functionality of ChatGPT. What is the capital of Alaska? And it's gonna give us our search results just like it normally would. And on this sidebar, we have different parameters that you can set to change the output of your question from ChatGPT. So if you want more info, you can go ahead and hover your cursor over these to find out how the parameters change your answers. So let's say I wanted to dive in a little bit more about the history of Alaska. I can say, write me a 150 word uh, overview about the history of Juno. Now we have our overview and what I'm gonna do is change our mode. I'm gonna go from completion mode to insert mode. And let's read through this briefly. So the city was named after Joseph Juno, one of the miners who discovered gold in the area and later established the town. And let's say I wanted more information added at this section, I can type in brackets with the brackets and type in insert, hit submit. And now ChatGPT is gonna intelligently 
add more information at that specific part. So this can be pretty handy if you want to update only certain parts of paragraphs or certain parts of information. You can use this insert function to do that. So that's the insert function. Now if we go to our edit function, this is gonna allow for us to do things like uh, fix and find and replace and fix grammar. So just looking at this, I see we still have this insert. So let's go ahead and say remove insert. So it can go in and take out exactly what you're looking for. As you can see, it went in and it took out insert. You can also say fix grammar. I know there's not gonna be any errors in this because ChatGPT wrote it, but if I wrote my own um, 150 word overview about Juno, I could put it in here and give it specific instructions on what I wanna fix. So you can of course do that on the normal website, but this is gonna just give you a little bit more of that flexibility to do it in a more specific way. Another thing you can do is show your past history. So this shows the different edits that you made, the different editions and the time of day that you did them. And lastly, with this edit function, once you update and have your wording the way you like it, you can then use it as an input. So it'll basically copy and paste it over to your input window. So now you can then start again making additions to it. Now the last part about this is the presets. So this is pretty cool. You can go through and you can scroll and find different presets or layouts for ChatGPT to take depending on what you're looking for. So for this Q&A preset, you can see exactly how it's working. It's working in a much more short form question and answer. So you can see how does a telescope work? It gives a very concise one sentence response. Uh, where were the 1992 Olympics held? Super quick response. <laughs> how many squigs are in a boink? I guess their coding team was making a joke here, but we can say who was the 20th president of the United States. You hit enter and boom, there's your response. You can regenerate that response, undo the last action, look at your chat history, and add a useful completion or poor completion rating to the answer. Now, there's a few other uh, layouts and presets that we can look at. For example, if we click summarize for a second grader, it's going to give all of its responses at the, uh, at the comprehension level of a second grader. So you won't have to type in to your search criteria to summarize it at this comprehension level. It's automatically gonna bounce out every single response at that level. So if we have our question here about Jupiter, it's the fifth planet from the sun and the largest in the solar system. We have all the details here. If we hit submit, it's then gonna bounce this out in a much more digestible version that's much less dense and easier to understand. And the last functionality that the Playground has that the normal website doesn't currently have is a speech to text function. So you can start recording and um, notate or transfer your audio messages straight to text, which can be pretty helpful if you are wanting to upload a lot of text without typing it. Or something even more specific like transcribing portions of an audiobook. Congratulations on making it to the end of this chapter. I know we went through a lot with Benz and I about the functionality of ChatGPT, how to use prompts and modifiers, and now it's your turn to really dive in and ask ChatGPT to deliver you specific information. So what I want you to do is ask ChatGPT to act as a specific role in your prompt use the prompt formula that we discussed and use specific modifiers. So just a very tiny example could be, I want you to act as a Michelin star chef and create a recipe for yellow curry or act as a travel guide and plan a six day trip to Paris for my family trip. So these are very tiny examples. I would like for you to get more in depth and more specific with your prompts to see what information you can come up with and how you can get ChatGPT to really give you the exact data and information that you're looking for. So I wanted to create this quick lecture because OpenAI just released ChatGPT4 and it has some interesting new capabilities and functionalities that I wanted to go over so that when you're going through this course, you know the differences between ChatGPT4 and the previous models. So with that said, let's get into it. So if you're logged into ChatGPT and you have a Plus account, 
which is the only way you're gonna be able to access this new model. And by the way, that's currently $20 a month. You're gonna be able to click uh, this drop down menu up top. And I actually like this because it's gonna show you the difference between the reasoning, the speed, and the conciseness of these models. So we have the legacy, which was the previous plus model, the current default 3.5 model, which is really optimized for speed. So this is currently the fastest model if you wanna get things done more quickly. If you have the Plus account, then ChatGPT4 is gonna be available for you, which is their newest, most advanced model that excels at tasks that require really advanced reasoning, complex instructions and understandings, and overall has way more creativity. So the reasoning has gone way up and the conciseness has gone way up, but the trade-off is the actual speed of the outputs has gone down. So that's something to keep in mind. So now let's hop over to the OpenAI website and go through a little bit more of the new updated details. So like I mentioned, GPT-4 can solve more complex problems with greater accuracy and overall context on the more subtle parts of prompts. So it has a broader general knowledge and better problem solving abilities. And I kind of like their breakdown here, breaking down the new updates in a creative, fashion, a visual output fashion, and a longer context fashion. So let's go into these individually. So the coolest part of the creative update for GPT-4 is that it is way more efficient at helping you do things such as composing songs, writing screenplays, and learning your specific writing style with priming, which we go into in the course. And next up is the visual input because one of the coolest parts is that GPT-4 is gonna be multimodal, so it's gonna be able to integrate with other things like photos and in the future, audio and video. This functionality, I will say though, is currently in a testing mode and isn't available for public use, but what it can do is pretty cool. So you can feed it a photo and the input was, what can I make with these ingredients? And in the photo we have eggs, flour, and some other ingredients to cook with. And here was ChatGPT's output. There are many options of what you can make with these ingredients, but some possibilities are pancakes and waffles, crepes, French toast, omelets, quiche, custard, pudding. And that's pretty incredible that it's understanding the context of the photo and the context of the question and bridging those boundaries between photos and text like GPT-3 or the previous model could never do before. The third coolest upgrade is just the sheer amount of content that the new model can handle, which is over 25,000 words of text which is gonna open it up to so many more use cases with long form content. For example, you can now paste in nearly 50 pages of written words and it can of course digest that information, synthesize it and pop out whatever it is that you're putting into your input. The next big update is just the overall advancement in reasoning capability and its capabilities to just handle complex data. So if we look here, we can see GPT-4 outperforms ChatGPT by scoring way higher on approximate percentiles amongst test takers. So for the bar exam, the first ChatGPT was in the 10th percentile, so at the very bottom, and the newest version is at the 90th percentile. So all of these updates are coming out consistently, so we will be adding lessons as the new functionalities are rolled out. And I also wanted to mention that everything else that we teach in this course is still completely applicable to this new model. So as you progress through this course, you can choose to use whichever model you'd like to use for ChatGPT, and we'll continue to add new lessons into this course for the new functionalities that OpenAI continues to release. Welcome to this chapter. Now, in this course, Benz and I go into tons of practical and real world prompts that you can use in your everyday life. And in this section, we wanted to take the time to really dive into prompt engineering because as you'll find out, this is a massive, massive part of using generative AI, whether it's Midjourney, Dolly, or ChatGPT because the output of what you're trying to get out of these tools is only as good as the data that the uh, tool itself was trained on and the input of the prompt that you're using. So the better the prompt, the better the output. Now, you're gonna learn in this chapter 
the different frameworks that you can use in your daily life for personal and professional projects that are repeatable, uh, copy and paste, and will really maximize your output. And then you'll also see how you can start to develop and create your own template prompts using these prompt engineering uh, techniques to really you know, 10x your creativity and productivity. So before we get into these lessons that I'm really excited about, I wanted to show you a recent post that I saw online from Anthropic, which is Google's latest $300 million AI investment that they're uh, putting a lot of resources into as a adversary uh, to ChatGPT. So let's check out what their job posting was. This is a prompt engineer for $250,000 to $335,000 a year plus equity. Now, what they're looking for is someone who's going to build up a library of high quality prompts and prompt chains to accomplish a variety of tasks and also build a set of tutorials and interactive tools that teach the art of prompt engineering to their customers. Um, they go in a description here about what the good fit would be, have a creative hacker spirit and love solving puzzles, an excellent communicator, love teaching the technical concepts and creating high quality documentation that helps others. So nothing in this is super unattainable to the average person and I wanted to share it because it's just a good example of what the future of new jobs that are gonna be created from these new aspects of these incredible AI tools. So with that said, let's now dive into this prompt engineering section. Without further ado, let's hop into this prompt engineering section. So what I want you to do first is download this prompt engineering guide that Benza and I put together to give you all the resources that you're gonna need for this section. So you can download it now in the resources tab. Now, this guide is an overview of prompt engineering. What I wanna do in these lectures is just read through this so that you can follow along and you can use this as a complete GPS and cheat sheet for all your future prompts. So first, the overview. Like I mentioned, this prompt engineering doc is designed to optimize your ideation process and enhance the quality of your output. So this document is compromised of two main sections. There's a simplified section, and then there's an advanced prompting section. The simple section is ideal for creating quick ideas, and these will probably be most of your prompts. Generally, when using ChatGPT, you just have a quick question, and you don't really need to go into detail with crafting an entire prompt. But on the other hand, when you do need to do that, the advanced section is gonna go into the intricacies of creating a detailed outputs that you can use for personal and professional purposes. So what is prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is the process of designing and optimizing your prompts using NLP models like ChatGPT, and this involves crafting the prompt, like we mentioned, in a clear, concise, and effective way so you can get your desired output. And I put a little bit of a metaphor here, AKA prompt engineering is like making an effective fishing lure. Just like a well-designed lure is more likely to go and catch the fish you want when you're fishing, a well-crafted prompt is more likely to get your specific response or desired output. And now on to the three primary principles of prompt engineering. First up, you wanna be specific. The more criteria you give, the more focused the output will be. You also wanna work in steps and break up your tasks into smaller chunks, just as you would with a human. You wouldn't go to your friend and ask them to do 10 things back to back. You would work through things methodically. First, let's create our schedule for the week. Then let's talk about our schedule for the next month. Then let's talk about our long-term goals. And then let's go here, here, and here. So with ChatGPT, you wanna do the same thing and break larger tasks. Don't ask it to write an entire book. Start with the chapters, or start with the table of contents, go into the chapters, go into the content of each chapter, and then further, further go into the details. This is gonna make a better output. And lastly, on these three principles, is you wanna iterate and improve. Like we mentioned, one of the most amazing parts is that you can rework your inputs to have ChatGPT iteratively improve on its own output. Now let's talk about what makes a good prompt. So a great output all comes down to the data that the model was trained on, like I mentioned, its parameters, aka how it's trained to use the data, and then your input, aka prompting. 
So since we can only control one of these, we can't really control the model that it was trained on, and we can't control the way it was programmed to use that data. We can only control our prompting. So here's what that boils down to. Clear and concise language that's direct and unambiguous. The persona that you wanna assign ChatGPT to act as. For example, you can act as a marketing expert, a biologist, a mathematician, or a psychologist. And then it's about the information and examples that you provide. And the interesting part about this is that ChatGPT is going to basically remember and be able to reference any of the information and examples in the previous chat history. So even if it's not in the direct prompt that you're inputting in that very moment, if you were having a conversation and you pasted example information into the chat earlier in that chat history, it's gonna be able to reference that data. Next is a specific task that you are clearly requesting ChatGPT to complete, AKA your desired output. And lastly on what makes a good prompt is refinement. So once you've received your first response, you can then reiterate until you receive your desired output. So that's an overview of what makes a good prompt. Now let's actually talk about the main prompting steps that you wanna keep in mind. So you first wanna define the goal or the problem, and you wanna clearly articulate what you want ChatGPT to help you with. Kinda of like what we're mentioning and what makes a good prompt, this is another way to frame it in your mind so you're really clear on it. So you wanna tell it what your goal is or what your problem is, what you want fixed, what you want answered, and you wanna use relevant keywords and phrases um, that you can input, which will help guide things to your desired response. The next step, of course, is really crafting and writing your prompt clearly, like we mentioned, the information, the tasks that's required, using keywords and combining everything in step one in your specified prompt. Then lastly, you wanna test, evaluate, and iterate. So we generate our responses, we evaluate the results, we adjust the prompt as needed, and then we repeat the process until we have a successful rock star prompt that is created and consistently generates the desired response. So before we get into the actual prompting, let's first talk about prompt priming. Now prompt priming refers to the practice of providing some initial input to the model before generating your response. You're basically training it on a specific data set. So this input uh, is intended to guide a model like ChatGPT towards generating a response that's more relevant, coherent, and trained for the user's intended output. And you can use entire pieces of text that you've written in the past. So you could literally paste in, if you're a writer, you could paste in all of your past work from the last few months. And ChatGPT will essentially understand how to replicate your speaking style, tone, grammar, and the words that you use. And you can use that with any type of data. So let's dive into these examples that further explain how prompt priming works. So for our first example, without priming our prompt, our question is, where should I go on my next vacation? So ChatGPT has no context, no uh, data or details on how to effectively answer our question. So it's gonna just tell me any destinations around the world with no criteria. Now, if we go in and we prime our prompt, we can say something like, I like to go on a trip with my wife and kids. The location should be tropical. We'd love to be close to the beach, and I'd like the flight to be a direct flight to and from LAX, and my travel budget is $5,000. Then I ask my question, where should I go on my next vacation? And the priming output is one suggestion for your tropical family vacation within a $5,000 budget can be Cancun, Mexico. Direct flights from LAX are available and you can find affordable, all-inclusive packages with pricing starting around 1,000 per person for a week-long stay. And popular family activities you can do in Cancun include snorkeling, visiting ancient ruins, and exploring local beaches and restaurants. So it addressed who I was with, where I wanted to go, my budget that I had, and having a direct flight from where I live. Now the next example, without priming, the question was, please create three potential titles from my new online course that teaches how to use AI. Now I'm gonna get an extremely generic response, but what I did instead to craft a better output was this. Please create three potential titles from my new online course that teaches people how to use AI. 
Here's an example of my recent course titles. Please emulate the style and written format of these. So we have one of my past courses, Video Editing Masterclass, Edit Your Videos Like a Pro, Cinematography Masterclass, The Complete Videography Guide. So it looks like I used two past examples and here were the outputs. AI Mastery, The Complete Guide to Using Artificial Intelligence. The AI Expert, Learn How to, or Learn to Harness the Power of Artificial Intelligence and then AI Foundations, a step-by-step -step guide to using artificial intelligence. So now you should understand how important and effective prompt priming is. So whether you're training the model on pages of your past writing style or just giving some more context and guidelines for ChatGPT to follow, this is gonna help you really start to use prompt engineering and get more effective outputs. So now let's get into some simple prompt starters. This isn't necessarily prompt engineering because we're not really crafting a very detailed prompt, but I just wanted to put together a set of 30 to give you some ideas of quick things that you can use. So let's check this out. So outlined below are 30 concise and simple prompts that are aimed at just really inspiring you and offering quick value. So if you're experiencing writer's block or seeking to establish a new daily routine or some insights on business ventures, these are just some cool prompts to jumpstart you on next steps before we really get into the good stuff. So you can just use these as a little bit of a cheat sheet when you need some more inspiration. So we can define the following term and give a metaphor if we need some more explanation on something. We can elaborate on the purpose of something, create a template, construct an outline for a podcast, create a budget plan, and suggest some creative writing prompts to get me started. Brainstorm 10 ideas for improving the writing in this transcript. Draft a well thought out chapter list for a book on and list some recipes for using these ingredients. So this should just be a nice little list for you to keep on your computer that you can use in your daily life. So as we continue to go through these lessons, we're gonna start going from simple to more intermediate to more advanced prompting. And now we're gonna actually start going into crafting prompts. So let's check this out. These are some practical everyday prompts and I put together the top five in this PDF. So outlined below are a series of practical prompts and frameworks that you can use in daily life and ideation. These are really designed to provide a practical prompting framework for individuals seeking to enhance their productivity and creative output. So we have our first brainstorming new ideas. So this is a formula that you can use anytime you wanna brainstorm new ideas. Same with the copy generation. These prompts are formulas. When you create a prompt and you craft it, what you're doing is creating a formula that's repeatable, that's going to always give you the desired output for that specific prompt. So if we take a look at our formula, we have, I'm looking to explore a specific subject in a specific format. Do you have any suggestions on this specific topic I can cover? And some examples of this are, I'm interested in creating an Instagram page that covers travel. What ideas do you have on topics I could include, such as budget-friendly destinations and hidden gems to visit? Next example, I'm working on a newsletter that focuses on technology. Can you recommend topics that would be engaging for my audience, such as the latest gadgets and software updates? So let's go ahead and grab one of these and paste it into ChatGPT. So with our prompt, I'm working on a newsletter that focuses on technology. Can you recommend topics that would be engaging for my audience, such as latest gadgets and software updates? Boom, here we have a list of 10 topics that are technology focused for my audience. And prompts you can also build on top of as well. All the prompts in this PDF, you can remix and rearrange to be specific to your use case. So I could even add in my audience, details about my audience, or just use the prompt as is. So now let's move to our copy generation prompting formula. I'm interested in this type of text that highlights the benefits of this subject. Please write this number of pieces of copy for me on this subject. And our examples are, I need an email campaign that showcases the features of my new product. Can you write one for me on the ease of use and affordability of the product? The next example, I'm interested in a web page that outlines the benefits of my coaching service. 
could you write one for me on the personalized approach and proven results of my coaching program? So let's go ahead and paste in one of these examples and see what ChatGPT comes up with. I really like this type of prompt because it's so flexible to really almost any type of copy generation. You can change this formula to be specific to almost any field of work. So here is what ChatGPT came up with. We have our initial outline for our coaching service. We have our intro here, we have our personalized approach, we have our proven results, we have what you can expect, and a little bit of a call to action at the end. So this is a perfect output to get us off the ground and really kickstart the creation process. So let's go on to the next lecture where we go into more everyday prompts. So let's continue with these everyday prompting formulas. Next up is a client and customer support uh, formula. So I want you to act as a customer support assistant who has these specific characteristics. How would you respond to this specific text as a representative of our type of company? So example one, I want you to act as a customer support assistant who is analytical. How would you respond to a customer who has experienced a bug while using our software as a representative for our tech startup. Next example is, I want you to act as a customer support assistant who embodies confidence and empathy. How would you assist a customer with a billing issue as a representative for our financial services company? These are great frameworks that you could even go in and add more details about your company, but let's paste in one of these examples. So this is a great response. It used our framework and it answered our question in the way that we wanted to with confidence and empathy. It addressed the specific question and outlined things in a great way that we could send this off to one of our customers. Now let's talk about generating analogies. So the formula for this is, I'm trying to better understand the concept of, please help me understand this concept by creating a practical and easy to understand analogy. Example one, I'm trying to better understand the concept of photosynthesis. Please help me to better understand this concept by creating a practical and easy to understand analogy. The next one is I would like to better understand the concept of search engine optimization. So let's go ahead and pop that into ChatGPT and see what it comes up with. Here is its response. Search engine optimization can be compared to a library where books are arranged and labels in a way that it makes it easy for people to find what they're looking for. Just like a library, search engines like Google have billions of pages of content that you need to be organized and indexed in a way that make it easy for users to find relevant information. This is honestly a great analogy. So you can use this for any kind of complicated things in your life that you just want some more context on and just to see it from a different perspective. Lastly for this section is bulk copy creation. So our formula is please come up with a specific number of content. The type of content is, it's for this specific platform and it includes these references. So example number one, please come up with eight email newsletters for my investment site that includes industry reports and data analysis. And then we have our next one, please come up with four video scripts for a marketing YouTube channel that includes expert opinions and insights on digital market trends. So let's grab one of these examples and see what we get. So we have, please come up with eight newsletters for my investment site that includes industry reports and data analysis. And what we have here are eight options to go after that are gonna include what we want. So let's go ahead and go with number two, industry specific newsletter. Focus on a particular industry such as the healthcare field or technology. This newsletter should include insights on market trends, company updates, and relevant news. So what we would do is grab this and paste it into ChatGPT, and then it's going to actually write that newsletter for this specific topic and industry. Now let's move on to creating effective prompt revisions. So at the beginning of the chapter, we talked about the iterative quality of ChatGPT. 
Now, this lesson is gonna be about using that uh, quality and effectively creating revisions. So once we put in our prompt, we get our output, these are some great prompts to use to magnify or improve on those outputs. So what we're gonna do here is use ChatGPT's memory capacity and the chain of dialogue to our benefit. After we've gone through and we put in our input and we get our response, we can then have a follow-up prompt for something like, now put the single most important keywords in bold formatting. So it will literally go through the output and analyze what the keywords are and put those in bold format. Another thing you can do is, okay, great. Now organize this by date, location, and price, which is something that we do later in this course. You can even come up with more novel and uncommon results if ChatGPT's outputs seem a little bit too cookie cutter. And you can even ask it to add emojis to the following text. So if you have a bullet point of five items, you can ask it, hey, please add appropriate emojis to each one of these bullet points. And it'll add a fire emoji to something that's related to that. It'll add the green check emoji to something that's related to that. And just is a little bit of a cool step that you can do in the revision process. You can also ask it to explain any output at the comprehension level of a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, a third grader, whatever you'd like. Another thing, and this is actually one of my most favorite, you can ask it to put information in tabular format, which we'll get into. You can ask it to rewrite things as an industry expert or make things more formal or informal. You can fix grammar and even find and replace specific words or terms with updated words. You can add more personality and humor. You can write it in the perspective of or even the voice of your favorite movie star or your favorite author. You can summarize an entire book or YouTube video into one tweet. You can do the exact opposite and expand things into something like a three-part, four-part, or five-part summary. You can compare and contrast all of the information in your previous prompt so that you can better understand it. You can ask for the top 10 key takeaways and you can ask for an expert point of view and how you can improve on a specific piece of writing. And lastly, you can put any type of output into a bullet point list. So take some of these, experiment with them, see which ones you like, and I suggest that you set them aside for use with your future prompting. Now we've made it to really the most important part of this section. In the following lessons, each lesson is going to be a specific prompting framework that you can use. So let's dive into it. What we're gonna get into now are a set of highly effective frameworks aimed at enhancing focus and the precision of your outputs. So by providing a specific framework, as you know by now, these prompts enable ChatGPT to produce more detailed and accurate responses. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is shot prompting. This is the simplest of all of the frameworks we're gonna get into, but I still wanted to add it in for your reference. So these three variations have three different outputs that you're gonna receive from ChatGPT. The first one, which is zero shot prompting, is kind of like what we mentioned before. We're not priming our model with any specific data. So with zero shot, there's no data, there's no guidelines, and there's no focus. ChatGPT is gonna take your prompt and go any direction with it. So you're probably gonna use this when you just want a quick question answered like we did with when we started with this section with our 30 simple prompts. That's just when you want a quick response and you're not gonna actually give it any parameters. But one and few shot prompting is when we're actually giving parameters and specific reference data for the model to use. So even though this one's a little bit basic, there's not some amazing framework that we're working with on this one, but it's just nice to know what the actual term is when you're not giving ChatGPT any kind of specific input. So if I were to say, write a YouTube script for a tech review channel, that's called a zero shot prompt when I'm not giving it any kind of guideline, just so you know the terminology. If it was gonna be one shot prompting, I would say something like, using this specific example as a reference, write a YouTube script for my tech review channel. So if you do that, that's called one shot prompting. Now, as you are moving more towards complexity and moving away from a simple question to more of actual prompt engineering with something like 
few shot prompting, you would say something like, using these examples, one, two, and three as a reference, write a five minute YouTube script on the latest iPhone camera specifications from my tech review channel. Start with a 10 second hook and notate a photo for each main point. So some of the times you're gonna be using zero shot, some of the times you're gonna be using one shot, and other times when you need a very detailed output for a specific use case, you're gonna be using few shot prompting. So our next prompt framework that's really effective for daily use is chain of thought prompting. So let's check it out. This framework is a great technique to guide ChatGPT to explain its answers in a step-by-step -step format. Um, this is really cool because you get to see its reasoning process. So this technique helps to ensure that A, the model's answers are transparent and easy to understand from you, the user, and it's great for making explanations that are expanded upon and more useful for educational and explanation purposes. So rather than explain this anymore, let's just go into the formula and the example. So our formula is actually very simple for this one. We have whatever your question is, and then the prompt that you always wanna use is let's think step by step. So let's see what ChatGPT does. So we have our first example. What is the diameter of the sun? And I want to put this in without our prompting framework. So it says exactly what the answer is to our question. The diameter of the sun is approximately 1.39 million kilometers, AKA, this is a big number, 864,938 miles. Now, if we were to do the same exact prompt, but I do our chain of thought framework, which is very simple for this case. Let's think step by step. Let's go ahead and submit this. And we're gonna actually see the thought process that ChatGPT or a person would go through to actually get the answer to this question. So here we go. Let's break down the process of determining the diameter of the sun. Step one, you understand what we mean by the diameter of the sun. The diameter of an object is the distance between two points on its surface passing through its center. In the case of the sun, its diameter is the distance between two points on its surface passing through the sun's center. So it's talking about from the basic level of the explanation, what the diameter is for an object, what the diameter is for the sun, and then the next step. Step two, find the most accurate measurement of the diameter of the sun. And it goes into how it came up with that or how one would go through that process. According to NASA, the most accurate measurement of the diameter of the sun is approximately, boom, our number. And then we wanna understand the units of measurement. It's important to understand the units of measurement used when discussing the diameter of the sun. Kilometers and miles both specify the length. And then we go to step four, convert the diameter to units of measurement as an optional step. So now let's look at our second example and see what else we find out. So we have, what is the weight of an oxygen molecule? Okay, so we have our answer here, which is the weight is approximately 32 atomic mass units. Now, if I was a person interested in this topic and I wanted to understand the logical step-by-step -step process of how a person comes to that specific answer, we would use our formula. So let's go ahead and let's think step-by-step. And here we have the logical steps to arrive at that answer. Step one, identify the chemical formula of an oxygen molecule, explains what that is. Then we wanna determine the atomic mass. Then we wanna calculate the weight of an oxygen molecule and then convert that atomic mass units to grams as an optional step. And we can really see how an expert would go through and get the answer. And you can see what's under the hood and expand simple, straightforward answers into more detailed breakdowns. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite functionalities with ChatGPT, which is tabular formatting. So let's get into it. Using tabular formatting with ChatGPT allows for you to create clear organization and presentation of data, which is why it's one of my favorite parts. This makes it easier for the user, AKA you, to analyze and comprehend the output, which leads to a more accurate understandings and insights. So here's what our formula would be, and this is in a multi-step process. So we wanna start with your question. The next prompt that you wanna do is, what are the different categories you can break your answers into for more descriptiveness? 
And third, now create one single table that includes your original answer with these new categories separated into different columns. So let's just go ahead and hop into what this actually looks like. And we're gonna do zero shot prompting, as you know by now. We're not gonna add any bells and whistles to this prompt. We're gonna focus on the tabular formatting versus creating a dynamic prompt. So our question is, what are the main factors of growing a YouTube channel? Great, so we have our six part answer about consistency, quality, SEO optimization, collaboration, and promoting your channel. Now I wanna do part two of this prompt, which is what are the different categories you can further break your answer into for more descriptiveness? This second part of the prompt is going to essentially break down your original question into six subtopics. Then we wanna paste in our third part of this prompt. Now create one table that includes your original answer with these categories separated into different columns. Perfect, so what this did is it took our original output and it categorized it in tabular format, which for me personally is so much easier to look at, comprehend, and quickly understand. So we have different columns with different rows that have this information just organized so much better. And we can go down the rabbit hole of asking ChatGPT to expand on even more different columns. So we ask, what other categories can you add to this table? It added a branding column, a promotions column, and a monetization column. So this is one of my favorite prompting frameworks because tabular format is so much easier to look at. It's visually just easier on the eyes and you can literally use it for any type of output using ChatGPT. So I'm excited to see what you come up with with this prompt and I'll see you in the next lesson. Now let's get into ask before answer prompting. So what this framework does is it's a technique to guide ChatGPT to ask for clarification before giving an answer. And what this does is it helps to ensure that the model's answers are as accurate and specific as possible. So if we get into the formula, this is another two-part uh, prompt. What we wanna start with is you are an expert in the field of blank. I'm gonna ask you some specific tasks to complete, but before you answer, I want you to do the following. If you have any questions about my task or uncertainty about delivering the best answer possible, always ask bullet point questions for clarification before generating your answer. Is that understood? Part two is, okay, great. My question is, put in your question, your task is, and then please ask any questions that you have so that I can improve my prompt before you complete your task. So let's start with putting our first prompt into ChatGPT, and then we'll use one of these examples down here. So we have, you are an expert in the field of, and for this specific example, I'm gonna say consulting. Consulting, I'm gonna ask you some specific tasks to complete before you answer, and I want you to do the following. Always remember to ask questions and asking if that is understood. So ChatGPT should read our prompt and say, okay, understood, I'll ask bullet point questions for clarification if necessary before providing an answer to your task. Now let's get our response. Great, my question is, how can I drive more sales for my consulting business? Your task is to create a step-by-step -step guide for me to implement into my business Please ask any questions you have so that I can improve my prompt before you complete your task. And there we have it. Before providing you with a step-by-step -step guide, which is our task, it asks the proper questions. I have a few questions for you to better understand your consulting business and your target audience. What type of consulting business do you offer? Who's your target audience? What is your current marketing strategy? How do you currently generate leads? And what is your budget for marketing and sales efforts. All of these we can use ChatGPT to help find our answers or if we have our answers we can literally plug them in just like this so we can say it's a technology consulting go to the next question target audience current strategy and how we currently generate leads. It's going to read these step by step plug it in essentially to your original prompt and then give you a much more specified and concise answer to your specific use case. 
And this is really what separates normal quick one-off questions with actual real prompt engineering because we're getting such more in-depth answers. And real quick, just to give a second example for this framework, let's go up to the top, let's hit edit, and let's say you are an expert in the field of chat GPT. I'm gonna hit save and submit, and that just restarted our conversation, and ChatGPT understands our prompt, so we're gonna put in what we want. Great, my question is, how can I use ChatGPT to maximize my productivity? Your task is to make me a weekly schedule that I can follow, but please first ask any questions you have so I can improve my prompt before you complete your task. And just like that, we get another set of questions that's gonna help us create a much better output by creating a much more specific input. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about fill in the blank prompting. So what this is, is this format allows the user to focus on the specific aspect of a sentence or idea that at the end of the day is gonna encourage deeper thinking because you're actually gonna be filling out information. So additionally, this is a flexible tool for learning and communication because of the format that ChatGPT is going to output its content in. So our formula is, you are an expert at creating prompts that generate the most concise and resourceful responses. What additional bullet point details can I add to the following prompt to improve the output? My prompt is, boom, your prompt. And then the part two of this prompt is, okay, great. Now turn these bullet points into a fill in the blank format, which I can put my information into. So let's take one of these examples. Um, I have a $100,000 in savings. What should I invest in? So let's go over to ChatGPT and do this prompt. So here we have our prompt and I'm gonna go ahead and paste in our first example. So we have what additional bullet points can I add to the following prompt to improve my output? My prompt is I have $100,000 in savings. What should I invest in? Now we have a very in-depth bullet point list of 10 things to focus on to get really clear on our answer. Now what I wanna do is put in the second part of our prompt formula, which is great. Now turn these bullet points into a fill in the blank format, which I can put my information into. This is gonna make the answers a lot more intuitive or just really make the ability for me to complete this task and fill in this information in a lot more intuitive way. So my investment goal is blank. My risk tolerance is blank. My investment timeline is blank. Uh, my knowledge of investing is this. My current tax situation is this. And it even gives an example of what direction to go into. So this is a lot more intuitive to work with ChatGPT on versus this type of format. So it's a pretty cool prompt framework to use. Now let's go on to our next prompt framework in the following lesson. As we continue to go down this prompting framework section, I'm excited because these frameworks are gonna get more and more interesting and more and more unique from the standard question and answer format with ChatGPT. So let's get into perspective prompting. And what this framework can do is help broaden your understanding and provide a more comprehensive view on a specific topic. And this is interesting because it can, at the end of the day, help you make more informed decisions and help you have a more nuanced understanding of complex situations and issues. So this prompt formula has two different use cases that we can use it for. The first style is singular perspective. This is where we want to do something like, please write a topic about a perspective from the viewpoint of one singular viewpoint. We'll go into an example of that. And then the next style, which is also really interesting, is the multiple perspective format. So what we would do for that formula is, Please write an argument for or against a specific topic from multiple perspectives. I want you to include the names and point of view of each different perspective and the viewpoints should be the following. So let's now hop into our singular perspective example and then we'll hop into the multi-perspective example. So prompt number one, please write about improving as a kickboxer from the perspective of a kickboxing coach. 
And there you have it. We have the technique, the physical and fitness conditioning, the strategy and tactics, the mental toughness and focus from the perspective of an expert, AKA in this situation, a kickboxing coach. Now you can leave it at that. And this is interesting because you can start to use ChatGPT to understand complex topics from different perspectives and from different fields of view. But the cool part is we could then ask the same prompt, but from a different perspective. So please write about improving as a kickboxer, same um, topic that we wanna look at, but from the perspective of a human anatomy expert. Now what ChatGPT is gonna do is break this specific topic down, but from a physical standpoint. So we're talking about body mechanics muscular strength and flexibility, injury prevention strategies, and seeing it from a completely different perspective. So you can use this for an endless amount of different topics and really develop a well-rounded field of view on that specific topic by seeing it from different perspectives. Now let's move on to our multiple point of view prompt. So we have our framework, please write an argument for or against a specific topic from multiple points of view and include the names and point of views uh, from the different perspectives and the viewpoint should be the following. So I went ahead and filled this out and we have, please write an argument against genetically modified organisms, AKA GMOs, that consider multiple perspectives, include the names and points of view from different perspectives such as a farmer, a consumer, and a geneticist. And similar to our first style of singular prompting, this is gonna give us now multiple styles, but in one single prompt. So we can look at GMOs from the perspective of a farmer, from a consumer, and from a geneticist, which is on the same exact topic, but with extremely different points of view. So this is an incredibly cool prompting framework that you can use to better understand your target audience, your clients, or even just better understand the world around you. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about the constructive critic prompt framework. So let's dive in. This prompt is great to provide an objective and expert feedback on your writing. So it helps you highlight areas of improvement and offer constructive criticism of how you can help and refine your copy, almost like an expert copy or writing coach. So the prompt formula is, I want you to act as an expert critic in the subject and field of blank, criticize my content pasted below and convince me why it's bad and give me constructive criticism on how it should be improved. For some context, my product or service is and my demographic and the details of my product or service is the following. The purpose of this product or service is to blank and the content is blank and let's think step by step and I want you to address each piece of content individually. Here's my content for you to critique and then you paste in your content. So here we have our example prompt. I want you to act as an expert and critic in the subject of fashion. Criticize my content pasted below, convince me why it's bad, and give me constructive feedback on how it should be improved. For some context, my product description is for my clothing brand, which is for 20 to 30 year old eco-friendly consumers which appreciate unique and modern aesthetics. The purpose of my product description is to get consumers, I keep saying consumers, but it's customers, to purchase more clothing products. Let's think step by step and I want you to address each piece of content individually. That's very important. Here is my content to critique. And this is basically just a content description that I asked ChatGPT to create, which says, introducing our latest addition to our eco-friendly clothing collection. The Modern Vibes t-shirt, made with 100% organic cotton. This t-shirt not only feels great on the skin, but is also kind to the environment. With the sleek and modern design, this t-shirt is perfect for the fashion savvy 20 to 30 year old who wants to make a statement while still being conscious of their environmental impact. So let's see what we come up with. And just like a personal writing coach, here we have a critique of the three main things that we would update to make it better 
and then we also have a rewritten and improved version. So we're not only asking ChatGPT to rewrite it, which is something a lot of people would generally do, but we can actually use this as more of a learning process and treat ChatGPT almost as a personal coach and teacher with this kind of prop so that we're actually improving our skills versus just asking it to spit out different prompts and different answers. So this takes things one step further and offers a lot more value in your daily life. Now let's talk about comparative prompting. And this is pretty interesting. So comparative prompting highlights the key similarities and differences across various factors which can help you make more informed decisions and gain a deeper understanding of the strengths and weaknesses of two different options. So the formula for this is please compare and contrast the following text examples. I want you to outline the similarities, differences, qualitative characteristics, quantitative factors, functionality, impact, key takeaways, and other important factors into one single table. Now, you don't need to have all of these different uh, factors, but these are a great starting point because it's gonna break your answer down into a really great depth of information or outline. And to finish the prompt, here are the two pieces of content that I'd like for you to outline. So we have content one and content two. For our two examples, we have the business and design philosophy of Apple and Microsoft. And example number two is investing in real estate versus investing in cryptocurrency. So let's take our prompt formula and let's put in our first example. So we wanna know the key differences and similarities between the design philosophy and business of Apple and Microsoft. And because we asked ChatGPT to put everything into one table, AKA tabular format, here we have a list of the similarities between the two, the differences, qualitative characteristics, quantitative factors, functionality, impact, and key takeaways. Now, this is a lot of information that we can easily digest because of the way it's formatted. Let's now do our second option or our second example. So we wanna learn more about the similarities and differences of investing in real estate versus cryptocurrency. Perfect, so we have our key differences and similarities outlined in this table format. So if you, for example, were wanting to invest money and you couldn't decide between real estate or crypto, asking ChatGPT to outline a table like this can really help you to make more informed decisions in your daily life. Now onto the next framework, which is called reverse prompting. And this one's really interesting because we're gonna learn how to use ChatGPT to reverse engineer any piece of content that you can find online. So if you had a speech from one of your favorite writers or authors, you could use this prompt framework, put in their speech, reverse engineer it to get the exact prompt you would need to recreate that speech. If you're a company that sells online products and you wanna emulate another company that's maybe your competitor that is doing a better job at making more sales because their descriptions and titles are more effective, you can paste that in, reverse engineer their prompts or reverse engineer their copy and learn exactly what prompt to use to recreate that text. So let's get into it. These two frameworks offer an incredible insight into how to effectively reverse engineer any piece of content. As a result, you can have almost endless possibilities for enhancing personal and professional projects. So there are two different prompt formula options. One is two steps and the second is multiple steps. I've honestly found that step two or option two rather is more effective at generating more detailed uh, reverse prompts. It's a little bit hard as you'll find to get ChatGPT to really do this super effectively. So the four step process I found takes a little bit more time but it is a little bit more effective. But regardless, let's go through both of these formulas. So prompt number one, you are a prompt engineering expert that is able to reverse engineer prompts based on the text that is provided to you. I'm gonna provide a specific type of content 
and I want you to be as specific as possible on providing a prompting suggestion based on the tone, style, syntax, language, and any other factors you consider relevant. I'd like you to use this prompt in the future to replicate the style of the provided text. Your prompt is effective only if, when entered into ChatGPT in normal context, it would provide the script. Please reply if understood, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, do not reply and further ask questions to clarify your understanding. So let's set this up. Let's go ahead and type in that our content is going to be for a tech company product description. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. ChatGPT says, great, understood. Please provide the tech company product description. So we're gonna grab that from our example. And we have some copy from the Apple website on their Apple AirPods. So their copy is wireless, effortless, magical, with plenty of talk and listen time, voice activated Siri access, and an available wireless charging case. AirPods deliver an incredible wireless headphone experience. So if you were another company that sold, uh, that sold rather, uh, headphones or audio equipment or whatever it is, and you saw that your competition, someone like Apple is very effective and highly successful, you can go ahead and take something like their product description and put it in and reverse engineer how to easily and repeatedly recreate their prompts. Here's the output that ChatGPT gave us. It took our description and it wrote, write a product description for a wireless headphone product that delivers a magical and effortless listening experience. Highlight the features of the product, the long battery life, the activated digital assistant, and most importantly, use language that emphasizes the seamless user-friendly experience that this product provides. So what this allows you to do is rewrite very, very similar product descriptions for your own products. So that's a pretty good output, but what I wanna do now is go to our second version of this prompt formula to get a more, in my experience, more in-depth output. So if you remember us talking about chunking down larger tasks towards the beginning of this chapter, this is an example of something like that. Getting ChatGPT to do reverse prompting is a little bit difficult because if you play around with this functionality and this framework, you're gonna find that it's gonna wanna just put out new prompts and it's gonna rewrite what you try to input into it. So to get it to really do this is a little bit difficult. For option one, you can get it to do it. It might take some regenerating of the answer, but for option two, I get way better results. So let's look at this. There's four steps here. First step, let's talk about reverse prompt engineering. By reverse prompt engineering, I mean creating a prompt from a given text. You're gonna put that in and then you're gonna say, can you give me an example of prompt engineering? ChatGPT is gonna pop out an example and then great. Can you create a very technical reverse prompt engineering template? Now reverse prompt engineer the following text now that you've primed the model to understand exactly what it is and what it should do. Uh, reverse engineer the following text and be sure to capture the tone, syntax, language, and writing style of the text for the prompt that you come up with. So now let's go back to ChatGPT and put in this four-step process. So let's start this priming process before we get to our actual prompt. So step one, we pasted that in here. ChatGPT gave us a response about reverse prompting. And then we're gonna say, okay, great. Can you give me a specific example about reverse prompting? And then it says, okay, a given text could be the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And a potential reverse prompt for this could be write a story about a quick brown fox and a lazy dog. Putting in this input would ideally give you the output that you want. Now let's go to the next step, which is great. Now create a very technical reverse prompt engineering template. Now we have a technical template on reverse prompt engineering. So all of this chat history is priming ChatGPT for a ideal and more specific output. We're gonna to go to our next step, which is now reverse prompt engineer the following text. Be sure to capture the tone, syntax, language, and writing style of the prompt you come up with. And what I wanna do is grab one of our example texts. So again, let's say that for your product or business, you want to emulate another company's success. And let's say this is an incredibly 
um, high selling item. There's 220,000 reviews on Amazon with 4.7 out of five stars. They're obviously killing it with this product. They have their copy on point. We could reverse prompt engineer the headline for our own product. We could reverse prompt engineer the description so that we could create similar descriptions very easily for our own product as well. So let's go ahead and grab the headline and we'll reverse engineer it. So I have the headline, I'm gonna paste it into our prompt formula. So now reverse engineer the following here. Let's put this in quotes and be sure to capture the tone, style, and syntax. So we have our input text about the uh, best-selling Amazon product, and then we have the reverse prompt. Create a review or description of the product that highlights its outstanding 4K streaming quality, convenient TV and smart home controls, and access to free and live TV channels. So what you would do is put in your own product, and it would recreate a very accurate and similar description, but for what you're selling. So this is a really interesting framework to use because you're essentially flipping what normally happens. Normally you give a prompt to ChatGPT and it gives you an output. But what you're doing is you're giving the output to ChatGPT and asking what that input was to create the output in the first place. So use this prompting framework to get out there and recreate your favorite pieces of content. So we just went through a ton of very specific prompting frameworks. Now what I wanna do is talk about two very effective but general frameworks that you can use for a multitude of different pieces of content. So let's get into it. These prompt frameworks are designed to be applicable to all different types of scenarios while still generating and enhancing detailed and effective outputs. So by providing this specific framework, these prompts are gonna enable ChatGPT, as you know by now, to produce way more helpful and way more accurate responses. And the first of these two different types of frameworks, which by the way, they're very similar um, in what they do and their layout, but they're just a different way of wording things. So I suggest that you find one that works best for you and you use them regularly. So the first style, which is the RGC style, this framework is gonna present a structure that can be applied to universally any type of input. And the reason it's called RGC is because we go into the role, the results, the goal, the context, and the constraints. So this is just a very concise way of creating the guidelines for ChatGBT to operate under. So if we have the role, this is ChatGBT's persona. And by the way, this is similar to what we talked about at the beginning of the chapter around what prompt engineering is, what makes a good prompt, and the steps for doing those prompts. This is taking all that information of the basic fundamental understanding and process of prompt engineering and putting it physically into a prompt that you can regularly use. So we have at the beginning, ChatGBT's persona, AKA you are gonna act as an expert marketer. We have our result or our desired output, which is, for example, create five emails ending with a call to action. We have our goal, AKA the purpose of the output. Let's say the goal is to drive more sales to a product. We have the context, AKA the who, what, where, and why. This could be that the emails for the newsletter are for my online audience and entrepreneurs. And then we have the constraints or the limitations and guidelines for ChatGBT to act under. So this email or these emails should be friendly and less than 200 words. So now let's get into the examples. Our first one you can copy and paste and use as your general framework. You are an expert in this field. I want you to create this with this goal in mind. This is the content and your guidelines are the following. So let's actually move down to the third example and put this into ChatGPT. So you are an expert nutritionist. We've established ChatGPT's persona and I want you to create a seven day meal plan for my five foot seven, 40 year old female client that exercises three times a week. The goal is for her to lose one pound of fat per week by being in a caloric deficit and eating the right amount of carbs, sugar, and protein. She doesn't eat pork, so we're giving more specifications, aka guidelines. 
She doesn't eat pork. She wants to spend $200 per week on food. The meal plan should give the recipes, cooking directions, prep time, and specific meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's put that in. And just like that, we've used this framework to create a seven day meal plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we have the ingredients with the prep time and all of the details we need to now go out and do this. So this framework doesn't have to be just for a nutritionist. It can literally be across any field, across any discipline and any industry. So I 100% recommend having this prompt as a cheat sheet on your computer set aside so that you can easily use it for future prompts when you're wanting a very detailed response. Now let's get into our next general prompting framework that's similar to this one, but it's reworded in a slightly different way. Now let's get into this next prompting framework. So this is called, I want you to act as prompting. So this framework is another way to really give a universally um, applicable input to chat GPT. So let's check out our prompting formula. So I want you to act as dot, dot, dot. It could be a historian, a biologist, anything that helps set the stage for chat GPT's persona. I will give you uh, my target audience, a specific direction, a product. This is really where we set up the dynamic between you and chat GPT. You will then, it could be create emails, make a video script, or summarize a specific piece of text. And I want you to do that in the tone and style of XYZ. It could be more upbeat, professional, or even tabular format. So this is where we wanna explain the desired output and the writing style. Next is the important details. So if you're asking in point two, I want you to give my target audience a specific direction. You have to then also elaborate on what those things are. So if you say you're gonna give ChatGPT your target audience, in bullet point five, you wanna explain who your target audience is so that the output can be as effective as possible. And then number six, we wanna refine the output as needed. So once we get our output, we could then ask ChatGPT to be more persuasive, put the important keywords in bold, or put it in a different format. So we have two examples at the bottom. The first is setting up the persona as a personal coach and saying, okay, I'm going to give you my personal professional goals. I want you to create a seven day schedule in order for me to hit those goals. My short term goals are this, my long term goals are that, and to please put your answer in tabular format. The next example, which is what I want to walk through with you is I want you to act as a virtual doctor. I'll describe my symptoms and you will provide a diagnosis and treatment plan. You should only reply with your explanation, diagnosis and treatment plan and nothing else. My important details are, I've been experiencing headache and dizziness for the last few days. What could be the cause? So we'll go ahead and put that in a chat GPT and you can start to see how putting chat GPT in a different persona opens up the field that let's say you're traveling and you don't have access to your doctor that you would normally speak with. This is something where you can get a personalized diagnosis from a quote unquote medical professional. You can do the same exact thing with this framework, but use it as a personal coach, a financial advisor, or anything that you could really think up using this framework. So let's see what our answer is from ChatGPT. We have our explanation, we have our diagnosis, we have our treatment plan. So we can ask ChatGPT to elaborate on this further. Of course, with something like medical advice or financial advice, you want to speak to a real professional, but the important part here is the framework. Asking ChatGPT to act as a persona, telling them what you're gonna provide them and what you expect is a major fundamental of prompt engineering and is gonna help you progress as you go through this course to create better inputs and in turn create more effective outputs. Welcome to this chapter. So a huge use for ChatGPT is the ability to quickly summarize information. So let's dive right in. Summarizing dense text. So we're gonna use an example of an article about rocket science and show you how you can summarize a big piece of information into you can paraphrase it, you can summarize it into bullet points, you can extract keywords, you can simplify it, you can make it easier to see visually. 
find comparisons, highlight important parts, and so much more. So let's jump right into ChatGPT. Here, I've already copied this article, so we can just paste it in here, and we're going to say, summarize the following article. So here we can see this article is pretty long, and ChatGPT is giving us an easier to understand, quicker summary version of it. Now, summarize the original article into a list of 10 bullet points. For me personally, this is way easier to digest than this long article about rocket science, which I know literally nothing about. Please give me a list of 10 keywords from the original text. Here we see ChatGPT gave us some keywords. Now we can ask, please give me a list of important dates and people from the original text. You can see here it broke down into two most important people and three important dates. Now we're gonna ask ChatGPT to simplify the original text. We can see that ChatGPT now has broken down our pretty long and pretty jargony article into a much easier to understand text. Now we can ask ChatGPT to compare the original article to something that maybe makes a little bit more sense to us so we can find some helpful analogies. ChatGPT is starting to compare building a rocket to baking a cake. Neither of those I know how to do, but I'm much more likely to bake a cake than I am to build a rocket. And here we can see ChatGPT did a pretty concise version of how to build a rocket. You can also ask ChatGPT to provide you context for what you're learning. So please give me some historical context that led to the invention of rocket science. You can see that we can ask ChatGPT to give us context so we can better understand what we're trying to learn. And here you can see the context has been provided. ChatGPT is telling us what we need to know that led to the development of rocket science. And just to show you all that you can really do with ChatGPT, you can ask ChatGPT to give you a summary in the form of a stand-up routine. So here we go. Hey guys, you know what's really cool? Rocket science. And ChatGPT is going off trying to present this information in the form of a stand-up routine. So that's just to show you an example of how customizable you can get this information. You can have ChatGPT summarize, paraphrase, give you bullet points, give you context, maybe some visual representation. You can have ChatGPT give you the information in the form of a stand-up routine. You can do so much, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, and the only limitation is your imagination. Now we're gonna talk about rewriting a text for a specific audience. So let's jump into ChatGPT. Here we can say, explain gravity to a fifth grader. And you can see ChatGPT has explained what gravity is as if to a fifth grader. Now we can ask, explain gravity to a high school student. Already we can see a difference in language and tone that ChatGPT is used to communicate. Here we're diving into Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, and we can keep going on to different levels of proficiency, but you can see how choosing your target audience has a dramatic effect on the information that it gives you. And lastly, we'll be explaining concepts to different fields or different industries to see how ChatGPT will break down information to be more digestible depending on what you already know. And here we can see that ChatGPT is explaining the increase in computing power to a software engineer. Next, we'll ask it to explain the increase in computing power to someone who works in marketing. We have to wait till it finishes before we can ask it a new prompt. So here you can see ChatGPT gave us two different articles for the two different industries and two different professions. The increase in computing power affects both of these industries, but ChatGPT is choosing how it's explaining it to the different fields because of the prior knowledge that they probably have. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about creating a customized health plan for you or potential clients, friends, and family. So let's get into it. So for the first part of this prompt, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to you to act as a knowledgeable dietitian, I'm a 32 year old male that is five foot 11 inches, 
And right now I'm just putting out the information so it better knows how to personalize the answer to me. So five foot 11, I weigh 170 pounds. I work out four days a week. And I'd like to lose three pounds of fat a month by being in a caloric, caloric deficit. Deficit. Okay, now let's put that in and see what it says. Perfect, so what it did is it gave a good overview of six main bullet points to adhere to to hit my goals. Now what I wanna do is take this a step further. So I'm gonna say now create a detailed meal plan for my goal of 2,500 calories per day. Do not include peanuts. I'm gonna be allergic in this example. Um, do not include peanuts, onions, or lemons. And so now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and pop out a much more detailed breakdown of what to have for breakfast, what to have for lunch, and what to have for dinner. It has the exact foods and the calories associated with those foods. Perfect, so now I have my detailed outline for one day of eating. So let's say that I'm at the point where I wanna go and buy this food, and I can say now create a grocery list for these food items. Now I have my purchase list, so I can go to the store, buy these fruits and vegetables whenever I'm ready. But what I wanna do is I'll take this a step further as well with now create a detailed workout plan with the above criteria. So it knows my goals, it knows my specific, it knows my demographic, and now what it's doing is it's putting together a detailed weekly schedule that I can now use as a fully fledged put together workout plan, just like as if I hired a personal trainer. Now we have our detailed workout plan for the week and you can get specific with this one as well. You can remove certain exercises or add other exercises into this. Now lastly, what I wanna do is create a schedule for the rest of my week that involves activities, work, meditating, and journaling. So create me a schedule for the week that includes time to journal work, go to the gym, meditate, and hang out with friends. And boom, as this is still generating, we have an entire health routine to follow for fitness. We have a meal plan and we have our grocery list all made within just a matter of minutes. So I'm excited to dive into the next ability and functionalities that we can get into in the next lesson. So let's talk about language translations. And this is something that Google has been great at for years, but now that we have ChatGPT, there's a lot of cool functionality and accuracy that ChatGPT does better than Google. So let's check it out. We have our beginning sentence, which is, excuse me, what time does the train arrive? We have it in English, and then we have our Spanish translation. And actually, I also typed this up ahead of time just to save a little bit extra time. So what the prompt is, is translate the following, let's add text, into one English, two French, and three Italian. I'm gonna paste this in um, and then hit enter. And what this does is pops out three different versions right out of the gate. So it saves you time of going on Google, pasting it in, and then changing the translation option. This, you can do it in one click. Now what I wanna do is take a French article and translate it in ChatGPT and then also see what we can do after we do the translation. So translate the following text into English. Perfect, so we have our translation and I chose just a small excerpt from an article for time's sake, but if this was a larger article, we could say, great, now summarize the main points of this into four bullet points. So the cool thing about this is that we can take something that we didn't understand that was in a different language, 
We put it in a language that we did understand, and now we can get further deeper into the information. So let's focus on Normandy. So we can say, give me the best travel tips for vacationing in Normandy. So now we have the information that we wanted to find on this specific article. Now I wanna talk about one more use case with translations where instead of it's something online that you're translating that someone else created, you can then do the same thing for content you've created. So if I go to one of my course descriptions, I'm gonna go ahead and copy the description that tells students in English what the course is about, what they should expect from the course, and all that information. So translate the following text into French. And now it's gonna do that type of translation. Other things that I could do ahead of time are summarizing my text that I created before translating it. Let's say that I want it to be a little bit simpler for people that speak a different language and not as dense as the English version. I could summarize it and then translate it or translate it and then summarize it. It works both ways. So here we have our translation. And one thing I actually wanted to add is we can tell ChatGPT who to create the translation for. So I could say, translate the following text and we can adjust the age, demographic and comprehension level of the reader who's reading the text. So translate the following text for 18 to 25 year old filmmakers interested in learning about cinematography and rewrite the French version as if it was written by a native French speaker. So ChatGPT is gonna go through and use the mountain and mountains of data and information on writing that it has to make more organic and less robotic sounding translation that's gonna sound a lot more human with these parameters. So those are all the cool ways to use the translation function of ChatGPT, and I'll see you in the next lesson. This is one of my favorite ways to use ChatGPT. You can use Chat to summarize YouTube videos. So let's dive right in. First, you're going to need this YouTube summary with ChatGPT Chrome extension. I already have it, so for me it would say remove, but if you don't have it, this is where you would click to add this to your Google Chrome. Next, you go to a YouTube video. I have this, how do you replace a broken door? And with the Chrome extension installed, this will appear and you can click here. The entire video will be transcribed. You can hit copy and then we jump over to ChatGPT to summarize. I'm gonna paste in the YouTube video and ask ChatGPT to summarize the text into a five bullet point list. Here we see this is a pretty long video. I think it was about 15 minutes. That would take me, well, 15 minutes to watch. But here ChatGPT is able to summarize this into five bullet points. You can experiment with how many bullet points you wanna use. You could maybe try to do two per minute or something like that. Maybe if you have a 15 minute video, you would want more than five. Maybe it's the perfect amount. It takes some experimenting, but the point is, is ChatGPT can save you an enormous amount of time. Think about any tutorial that you wanna watch, boom, you can get all that information in seconds. So now we're gonna talk about proofreading with ChatGPT. And it can do some pretty cool things that you can do in your standard you know, Word software, but because you can also summarize and rephrase things inside of ChatGPT, it's kind of nice to have it all on one platform in one place. So let's start with a past PDF. Um, this is a course release strategy for a previous course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all this text and I'm gonna paste it into ChatGPT. And I'm gonna say, oh, actually, we're gonna see that there's some spelling errors here and here, so what I first wanna start with is fix all grammar mistakes in the following text. We're gonna paste this in. So as you can see, as it's typing this out, it fixed our spelling errors that we had here, here, and it also went ahead and removed the duplicate that we had here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click stop generating. And one of the next things we can do is finding and replacing words or adding punctuation like parentheses, commas, exclamation marks. So I can say find and replace all of the words course with class and remove all number fours and replace with number sixes. So we're probably not gonna do that specific thing, but this will just show you how it can dynamically go in and save you a lot of time and energy of doing it yourself. Now we can make a change that's a little bit more subtle that your normal Word application or software would not be able to do. So what I have here is a brief overview of what else but quantum physics. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this um, paragraph and I'm gonna take it into ChatGPT, start a new chat, and I'm gonna say swap all complex terms with much more easy to understand terms for the average person. And instead of going in and directly replacing specific words that you don't want, it's using its understanding of the words and swapping out more difficult terms for something that would be more digestible for the average person. And of course, with this type of uh, synthesizing of information, you can get as specific as you want. You can do it at fifth grade comprehension level, do it for a high schooler comprehension level, or any other specific terms. You can use ChatGPT to reorganize and reclassify data. So let's jump in. First, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to just give me a list of 20 important dates that change the world. So you might have a set of data already that you are looking to work with, but for me, I had ChatGPT create some data for us to show you for this example. So here is a list of 20 significant historical events that change the course of the world. Now we can ask it to organize the data alphabetically. And you can see we are reorganizing these alphabetically. Now let's ask ChatGPT to organize this data chronologically. We can see that ChatGPT is organizing this in chronological order. Next, we can ask ChatGPT to organize this in tabular format. Great, now let's add ChatGPT to add a column for geographical location. So you can keep adding columns or organize the data however makes most sense to you and your use case. But the best thing is in the tabular format, you can copy this and it will retain its format. And now we can paste this into notes and boom, you can see it retained its format. This is to show that you can use ChatGPT to reorganize any set of information in any way that you can imagine. Now we're gonna use ChatGPT for named entry recognition, which basically means it's extracting names from text. So here I'm gonna paste in this article that I found on James Webb Telescope, and I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to extract some important data. So as you can see, I asked ChatGPT to extract names, dates, and location from the following text, and here we go. This was a pretty long text, and right away we have all the names written out here, all the dates written out here, and all of the locations written out here. This is way quicker and way easier to look at and understand than this is. This is just one specific example of how you can use this function, but you can let your imagination run wild. You can use this for research. You can use this for new products that are coming out that you don't wanna to have to read everything about. You can use it for manuals of how things work online and just extract the important things. Maybe your competitor drops some new article or some new product and you just wanna know the important pieces of information to you. You can use this function to extract the information that you need. You can use this to save you time and energy. Now on to advanced data reorganization and classification. Text classification. You can use ChatGPT to categorize text data into different classes or categories based on their content. Text classification is the task of assigning predefined categories or labels to text data based on its content. You could use text classification to categorize news articles into topics like sports, politics, technology, etc. 
We're going to take the example from our previous lesson and expand it into five different categories. Let's dive right in to ChatGPT. We're going to use this example of 20 significant world events, and we're going to organize it into different categories. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to organize this list into the kind of event that it is. So as you can see, ChatGPT was able to organize our chart into the kind of event that it is. It added this type column over here and explains this is a war, scientific progress, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm going to ask ChatGPT to categorize the data even further. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to organize this data by century, scale, impact, and duration. Great, so you can see that ChatGPT organized the data into the new categories that we asked for. You can also ask ChatGPT to organize data by significance or really any other category that you can think of. You can use this for food, nutrition, you can use this for sales, really any set of data that you have, you can put it into ChatGPT and ask it to organize however you want, which is more relevant for some businesses than others, but everybody at some point comes across some kind of data and we always love to break things down. Let ChatGPT do that for you. Here I have a really, really interesting use case that I wanted to share with you. So let's dive right in. I stumbled upon this video on how to use ChatGPT to build charts. So let's watch it together. ChartGPT will help you to build charts in a second and blow your mind. Step one, copy your data table. Step two, throw it in a ChatGPT and ask it to build a website to showcase the data with chart types you want. You can even ask it to draw insights from this data. Step 3. Wait for it to finish and copy the code. Step 4. Open a text editor and paste the code to it. Then save the file with extension.html. Open the file and boom, you got amazing charts and key insights in under one minute. So this is obviously a multi-step, pretty in-depth way to use ChatGPT, but I saw this and I just had to share it with you all because it's so exciting and it shows you all the different ways that this tool can really be used. Don't worry, we're gonna do a whole section on coding later, but I just wanted to get the ball rolling in your mind's eye so you can start imagining all the amazing ways to use ChatGPT. So now let's talk about how ChatGPT can review and improve your writing. So I have a written article here about uh, meditation and its benefits. I'm gonna paste this in, and at the beginning, let's add a prompt, review and Give me five ways I can improve the writing in this article. So it gave me five points to keep in mind. It talked about adding specific examples about the scientific part of meditation, uh, explaining different forms of meditation, discussing the challenges of a meditation practice, considering adding personal experience about it, personal stories, and adding a conclusion. It said this essay ends abruptly without a conclusion. So it actually went through and analyzed and did a pretty good job of giving me some feedback. Now what I want to do is actually have it apply these additions to the article. So clearly you can see that ChatGPT went in and really expanded on this article. Now what I want to do is give another example of a friend's bio on his uh, website. So I'm going to go ahead and take this source text and I'm going to say improve. And I'm just going to do a more general prompt. Improve this to make it sound better. So clearly it improved some of the words. It's using the words term musical dynasty, something a little bit more fancy, and it's just elevating it slightly, but we can get more specific and we can improve it for a specific audience. We can improve it for a specific professional level. We can improve it to appeal to other musicians or even if he's looking for a specific job offer, which we'll get to later in the course, you can speak directly to an audience. So we can now say something not as um, wide, but we can get more narrow So about our improvement. So improve the text, now improve the text, improve the text to 
sound, very professional, and appeal to record labels and music studios that are hiring. So we can see if we just kind of dive into some of the terminology here, with over 20 years of experience in the music industry, he has established himself as a highly sought after writer, composer, and producer, delivering hit songs for himself and other artists, artists with impeccable precision. So that is not any kind of, of the wording that we had with our bass text that we were working with. So you can really use this a lot to hone in on a specific sound, a specific look, and completely transform your text and written copy. Another really cool feature of ChatGPT is taking text and being able to create essay questions, multiple choice, fill in the bank, uh, fill in the blank, and true or false prompts, basically. So this is super handy for online teachers, in-person teachers, anyone who has a student base or a purpose to really create this type of content for their audience. So what I'm gonna do is take these two paragraphs about meditation, I like that topic, so I'm gonna paste this in and actually at the beginning of this, we're gonna put our prompt. So let's go ahead and say create 10 multiple choice questions regarding the information below. I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna go through and it's gonna read, of course, our text and pop out 10 questions. Now, the next cool thing you can do is now create the answer key for these questions. And it's just gonna pop out the answers that you now have as the teacher. So that would have taken many, 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 many minutes to do this by hand, but this is a really cool way to save a lot of time. So of course, we can do the same thing for true and false. So I'm gonna say, now create three true or false questions for the original text. So as you can see, it gave me the three true and false uh, statements with the answers. Of course, you can ask it to not show the answers or you can just remove it yourself. And then lastly, you can either do a fill in the blank or essay question. So now write three essay questions about the original text. So you can take this technique of generating these uh, different types of questions to engage your students and your audience, and you can go down the rabbit hole of further expanding on certain points of the essay that you wrote or that you're using from online to create more detailed questions for your students. This lesson is about the web extension for ChatGPT. If you jump over to this Chrome extension, it'll allow ChatGPT to search the web. So you hit add Chrome extension, it'll show up here, you can click here to pin it. Then we jump over to ChatGPT and we can see there's some new functionality here. As we know, ChatGPT was trained on data up until 2021, so it shouldn't know who won the Oscars in 2023. So let's test it out. So as you can see, it generates kind of a long prompt automatically from this Chrome extension. And what's happening here is that ChatGPT is pulling information from different URLs on the internet. It cites them numerically and then it cites in your answer which website it was getting the information from. We'll continue to ask who won the Oscar for best picture this year. Finally, we will ask when ChatGPT4 was released and ChatGPT4 was clearly released after this model that I'm using, which is ChatGPT3. Here we can see that all three of the websites it was pulling from agreed that it was released on March 13th and that is where it got its answer. So if you wanna turn off this web access, you can just turn this switch off. If you wanna tweak the results that you're getting, here it's pulling from three different sources, giving you three results. You can go up to 10 or down to one. Here you can choose a specific time frame. You can choose a specific region. You can get into the prompt that the Chrome extension is sending ChatGPT and you would do that by, and if you click here, you can see the default prompt if you wanted to create a new prompt you could do so. You can also access the new prompt window by clicking here. 
But for the purposes of searching the web, I find that the default prompt works really well. So congratulations on making it to the end of this chapter. You now have all of the ChatGPT skills to effectively summarize and synthesize all the complex data that's out there on the internet. So now what I want you to do is use all the techniques in this chapter to synthesize information and data that is relevant to your specific hobbies or your specific work. So you can do one of two options. You can download the YouTube summary with ChatGPT Chrome extension that we talked about, extrapolate that data, and summarize it into clear, concise bullet points. Or you can choose an article online related to a topic that you're interested in, for example, successful startups, and then extrapolate that data and summarize it into useful bullet points. I'm excited to continue this journey with you with these AI tools, and I will see you in the next chapter. Welcome to the content creation and copywriting chapter. I am so excited to share all of this amazing information with you because ChatGPT has really just leveled up content creation to new heights. So let's dive right in. Content creation and copywriting. In this chapter, we'll learn about the best types of content you can create for professional hobbies and business projects. There are some mention of third-party tools and we will go over all of those in depth in the third-party integration chapter. In that chapter, we will learn how to connect and use all of the different AI tools to create new levels of productivity in a fraction of the time. For this chapter, we recommend you going through it start to finish to get the most benefit out of this while also focusing on the specific kind of content creation and copywriting that's most relevant to you. A great use for ChatGPT is to write articles and blogs. And I'm gonna just show you an example of how it can write entire articles and entire blogs, even about things that you don't know anything about. So let's dive right in. Here I'm in ChatGPT and let's ask it to write an article about the flight pattern of monarch butterflies. Incredible. You can see that ChatGPT wrote this entire article about the migration pattern of monarch butterflies. I know absolutely nothing about monarch butterflies, so I would never be able to write this without doing tons of research prior. So in a matter of seconds, ChatGPT can write this entire article. You can write an article about literally anything with ChatGPT, so this is just a specific example, but you will have your own use cases. Let's dive into another example real quick. Here I want ChatGPT to write a blog, and we're going to make it short, fun, we're going to make it for kids as our specific audience, we're going to add some jokes and some humor. Let's see what it does. Amazing. Okay, let's check how it did. Hey there, young nature lovers. Did you know that monarch butterflies are one of the coolest creatures on our planet? Not only are they pretty to look at, but they also take part in a massive migration every year. Let's dive into the hilarious world of monarch butterfly migration patterns. Why is it hilarious? <laughs> they talk about GPS. Oh, let's read this one. Now let's talk about the distance monarch butterflies travel during their migration. It's so far that if they took a plane, they would have to get a passport. So you can see that ChatGPT really is making this short, fun, and for kids. And they're adding jokes, which is really incredible. So you can just see our specific examples for articles and blogs, but you can write a blog about anything in any tone for any audience. Same with articles. So this is just a use case to inspire all the amazing things that you can do with this tool. Now we're going to look at how you can write essays with ChatGPT. And not only can you write original content about any topic you want, you can also rephrase, rework, include the best SEO terms, include specific keywords, and much more. So let's dive right in. Here, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write an essay at the comprehension level of a college student on the effect of blue light on sleep cycles. Incredible. So here we have ChatGPT in a matter of seconds wrote our essay at the comprehension level of a college student on the effect of blue light on sleep cycles. You can see here, in addition to its impact on melatonin production, 
Blue light can also disrupt our circadian rhythms. The circadian rhythm is a 24-hour cycle that helps regulate various psychological processes, including sleep. When our circadian rhythms are disrupted, it can lead to a range of health problems, including sleep disorders, obesity, and depression. So let's say I want to dive a little deeper into what is the circadian rhythm. So we can ask ChatGPT to expand on this. Here I'm asking, please expand on circadian rhythms. Now ChatGPT is telling me more about what circadian rhythms are. We're diving into where the word circadian comes from. These rhythms are essentially internal clocks that help regulate our body's daily activities. Wow, they, I didn't know that they also affect your metabolism and hormone production and your temperature. That's incredible. So let's go back to the first article and let's say we like this intro, but we just want ChatGPT to reword it a little bit. Cool, so here we can see that ChatGPT rephrased the initial paragraph. So we can always ask it to work with us to find a better version of what we're trying to say here. Let's say in addition, you wanted to add a section about blue light blocking glasses. Great, now we've added an entire section about blue light blocking glasses. Let's say we wanted to have ChatGPT use some better words to explain the second and third paragraph. And right away, ChatGPT is going to work rephrasing and using some better words to explain the second and third paragraph. Amazing, you can see ChatGPT wasted no time and immediately responded to my request. Let's say hypothetically, I wanted to post this article online for some reason. Let's just copy the original article and ask it to include the best SEO terms. So I'm asking ChatGPT to please rewrite the following article and include the top SEO keywords related to sleep cycles. I'm pasting in the original article that it wrote and off we go. Okay, so you can see here ChatGPT rewrote the article, but I'm unclear exactly what were the 10 SEO terms it used and the article is a slightly different length. So this I'm sure is great, but let's try a different approach to get the same result. Here I'm asking ChatGPT, what are the top 10 SEO keywords related to sleep cycles? Now I can ask ChatGPT to rewrite this original article and include all of these terms. So I'm asking to please add the keywords above into the following article. Great, finally, I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT to rewrite the conclusion to be a bit more creative and engaging. Amazing, you can see that instead of starting with in conclusion, ChatGPT switched to a more interesting hook about being in today's fast paced world and has a more engaging conclusion. This is just an example of how powerful ChatGPT really is, but hopefully you can see the amount of content you can generate and improve quickly which is really what this is all about, saving you time. So in this lesson, we're gonna create an example ad for a product that we wanna sell online, and then we're gonna take some of that information from ChatGPT, head over to Midjourney, create an example image, and then plug that image into Canva to see how much functionality and how much time we can actually save at the end of the day creating new content. So let's hop into ChatGPT, and what I wanna do is ask it to write me a copy for a Facebook ad to sell a reusable water canteen. My target audience is environmentally conscious outdoor people. And I'm gonna be a little bit more specific. I'm gonna say, write me copy in 100 words for a Facebook ad. And let's see what it comes up with. Perfect, so we have our 100 word copy. Looking for a sustainable way to stay hydrated while enjoying the great outdoors, our reusable water canteens are the perfect for solution for environmentally conscious outdoor enthusiasts. It's hitting my target audience and it even went in and added some hashtags. So I could go in and say, you know, replace these hashtags with the hashtags that I actually use for my brand, if that makes sense for you. Now the next thing I want to do, let's say I'm super happy with this, I don't need to refine it anymore. I next want to include a title for the post, a call to action, and to be a little bit more persuasive. And let's say a call to action, add a call to action to sign up for our newsletter and be more persuasive. 
Perfect. So we have a little bit more persuasiveness in here, but that's not all. Sign up for our newsletter today and get exclusive access to special promotions and insider tips on living a more sustainable lifestyle. And then we have our call to action at the end, which of course you can refine, regenerate, and make it more custom for your specific needs. But now that we have this, let's go ahead and move over to Mid Journey and create our product designed image. So now we're gonna take a look at Mid Journey and do not worry about the layout, the interface, and this application just yet because later in the course, we're going to hop into all of the details that you need to know to effectively use Mid Journey. And we'll also talk about Canva later in the course as well. So this is gonna be short, sweet, and to the point just so we can see the creation process from start to finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a prompt here of a product photo shoot for a reusable water canteen. Professional lighting, red, uh, let's go blue colored backdrop and photo realistic. Perfect, so here we have our two options created by Mid Journey just in a matter of seconds. And just for this example, I'm gonna pull the one on the left, so I'm gonna create an up version. That's gonna give us the final output that we need to download and then import into Canva. So here is our final image. Let's go ahead and save this image. I'm gonna save it to my downloads. Import into Canva. So I'm gonna go to Create Design, Edit Photo, go to the photo we just exported, and this is gonna give me a bunch of different functionalities. We're gonna dive into Canva later in the course. You can add text, you can create presets for different social media posts. But one of the biggest things is being able to remove backgrounds from your images. So you can isolate products that you create using Mid Journey and even photos of yourself. So boom, now we can create a PNG with a transparent background and more effectively use this and post it online. And just a quick recap of what we just did in a few minutes. We created a title for our post, the copy of the post, a call to action, sending people to our newsletter. We then went to Mid Journey. We created our placeholder that we can use as our image for our website or our social media post. And then we went to Canva where we edited our photo and removed the background. I hope this opens up your mind to the possibilities of using ChatGPT to create copy, but also combining it with other softwares that we're gonna get to later in the course. So now what I wanna talk about is three different practical examples and ways you can use ChatGPT to write various scripts for your online content. Perfect, so the first example I wanna start with is a pretty broad one. I want ChatGPT to create a 200 word script for a YouTube vlogger teaching viewers about creating more cinematic images. Perfect, so this is actually a little bit short for a YouTube video. I'm gonna go ahead and now make this 400 words and change the tonality to be more upbeat and engaging. Perfect, so as this is writing out, we have our script. First things first, let's talk about framing. To create more visually pleasing shots, use the rule of thirds. Me being a cinematographer, I know that this in fact is one of the first parts of cinematography to create better looking images. Uh, let's go on here. This means dividing your frame into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. So boom, it's going through our script. We have what we need to start recording our YouTube video. But let's say I wanna do a bullet point recap of the most important points. And I'm gonna put this at the end of my video as a cool way to synthesize all the information and conclude what the viewer learned. So now it's popping out a bullet point recap. Now I can just have that at the end of my script and create a cool little montage at the end of my video. So there's so many different ways that you can use this, remix it, put the content in different ways and just really create more creative content much quicker. Now let's go to another example. So this is our example of something more serious and more in the genre of learning and teaching. Now what I wanna do is create 
a two minute script on a video skit that's gonna be on the funnier side in the humor genre about eating the last slice of pizza. Let's see what it comes up with. Perfect, so we have our script about our concept. We have our different characters. We have a synopsis of what's going on. So the camera starts to zoom in down the last to the slice of pizza showcasing its deliciousness. And suddenly a hand swoops in and takes the slice. It's their roommate who had just arrived. So we have a surprise guest that comes into the storyline. So we can do things like change friend one name to Josh and friend two name to Paul and friend three name to Steve. Just to be more accurate for what we would actually shoot Perfect, so now we have our updated script with the correct character names, and we can swap out pizza with hamburgers, or hot dogs, or whatever other kind of food. We could change this, remix it, um, make it more funny, make it more serious, make it more of dark humor, make it more of positive humor. We can change it in any ways that we want. So now we have our first two examples. Now for this last example, I want to write three different 15 second TikToks promoting my reusable water canteen. Make it funny and memorable. So you don't have to just start with one script. You can tell ChatGPT to make multiple versions of one specific thing at a time. This gives you way more options out of the gate that you can choose from, remix, and eventually use. Now let's use ChatGPT to create a social media campaign around a product that we're trying to sell online. What I'm gonna start with is this prompt. I'm selling a coffee mug with a cool Star Wars logo on it for millennials. Please write a detailed description of the product and put a list of the SEO keywords as bullet points at the end. Okay, so this is great. Let's just read a little bit of this as ChatGPT is going to work. Introducing the ultimate coffee mug for Star Wars fans and millennials alike. Our coffee mug features a sleek and modern design with a bold Star Wars logo that ensures to impress. Made from high quality ceramic material, the mug is perfect for daily coffee fix or as a collector's items to add to your Star Wars memorabilia. It goes on to tell the capacity and all the other details about the coffee mug, its key features, and the SEO terms that I can use for my post. Now what I wanna do is promote this product on YouTube. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to come up with three ideas that I can film with two of my friends about the product. And I want ChatGPT to make the three ideas in the storytelling style of George Lucas. Perfect, so I have my three different options that are just potential jumping off points that I could then turn into scripts, turn into new ideas, or turn into blog posts and copy for online use. But let's just go ahead and take a gander here. The quest for the ultimate coffee mug. In this idea, you and your two friends could film a short video that takes viewers on a quest to find the ultimate coffee mug. On the way, you could encounter various obstacles such as broken mugs, weak coffee, and an evil barista. I like it. Eventually, you could stumble upon a Star Wars coffee mug and triumphantly declare that the quest is over. Pretty cool, pretty sweet idea. We could remix it as needed. And really, the options here are just endless. And because this first option is so funny, let's have ChatGPT write a 60-second script on bullet point one. Perfect, we have our 60 second script with me and my two friends and even it puts a placeholder at the end here to put a product image with a purchase link to our Star Wars coffee mug. Now you can go out and you can film this or you can even use a platform like ArtGrid and Canva to use online content such as b-roll and photos if you don't have the ability to film a concept like this on your own which we're going to get more into that later in the course and just as a little bit of a bonus tip here if we wanted to go out and shoot a concept that we created on chat gpt but we didn't have the equipment or the means to film it ourselves, there's great websites like ArtGrid that you can get a ton of really unique and professional looking stock footage from
Here we have the perfect case study of how ChatGPT will completely change the game for businesses, for advertising, for marketing, for copywriting, all in one. And I just can't wait to show this to you. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to save you money. So this year, we're kicking things off with an ad that I created using ChatGPT, the AI technology. This is what I asked it to write. I, I said, I said, write a commercial for Mint Mobile in the voice of Ryan Reynolds. Use a joke, a curse word, and let people know that Mint's holiday promo is still going even after the big wireless companies have ended theirs. This is what it wrote. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds here. Here he First of all, let me just say Mint Mobile is the shit. But here's the thing. All the big wireless companies out there are ending their holiday promos, but not Mint Mobile. We're keeping the party going because we're just that damn good. Give Mint Mobile a try. And hey, as an added bonus, if you sign up now, you'll get to hear my voice every time you call customer service. Just kidding, that's, that's not really a thing. And stay classy, everyone. That is mildly terrifying, but compelling. As you can see, ChatGPT created a unique ad completely tailored to Ryan Reynolds' company, which is honestly amazing because it did it in seconds. An entire script written in seconds, and it's pretty good, and he used it to sell his product. This just shows you how the world of marketing and the world of selling your products is really just blossoming into a completely new territory. Now we're gonna ask ChatGPT to write us video descriptions, titles, and tags. So I'm asking ChatGPT, I just made a video on intermittent fasting, write me a 100 word description. ChatGPT has just written our description for our video. Now I can ask, give me 20 eye-catching YouTube video titles. As you can see, I failed to specify what the titles are on, so let's try that again. Amazing, I can see at least a couple titles in here that I would actually use. Finally, give me 20 SEO optimized video tags for a video about intermittent fasting. Great, so you can see that ChatGPT just gets to work and can write our video description, can write our video title, give us options. We could even ask it to give us more options. We could give it parameters. Give me a three word title or whatever you want specifically. And it can give you the SEO video tags that you need to succeed on YouTube. In this lesson, we'll be talking about using ChatGPT for product description. Here, I'm going to paste an Amazon link straight into ChatGPT and ask it to write a 500 word description about the product. As you can see, all I did was just paste in the link straight from Amazon and ChatGPT is getting to work. That makes everything so easy. So here's a quick look at what the product is. Now let's look at what ChatGPT wrote about it. The Hustle Humble Neon Sign is a perfect addition to any living space, office, or commercial establishment looking to add some ambience and character. The sign is made of high quality LED tubing and can easily be mounted to the wall with the included mounting kit. Its design features the words Hustle Humble in a stylish font that is sure to catch the eye. This is really incredible. The ChatGPT is able to do all of this accurately just from a link. Now I'm gonna ask to rewrite this for a target audience of entrepreneurs. You can see already it's getting to work using the word entrepreneur. It's talking about the workspace. It's talking about motivational message, the road to success, work hard, stay focused. Get yours today and stay motivated on your journey to success. So it knows my target audience and it wrote the description targeted to them. Now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to write from scratch a description of some noise canceling headphones without pasting in a URL. I'm asking, please write a 300 word product description for noise canceling headphones. My target audience is music producers. So you can see as a music producer, you know how crucial it is to have a reliable and high quality pair of headphones to ensure that you're able to produce the best possible sound. This is really amazing. ChatGPT is able to write the product descriptions for links that you already have on Amazon 
or a new description based on what input you give it. So this is just to show you how powerful this tool is, and I'm sure you'll be using ChatGPT to help write your next product description. So now let's dive into SEO and keywords. And this is a massive, massive topic with a lot of third-party tools that you need to really dive fully into this. But what we're gonna talk about in this lesson is what ChatGPT can do and how it can help you with SEO. And just to give a little bit of an overview, what Google uses to rank its searches is something called latent semantic indexing. And what that is, is back in the day, you used to be able to just pad your articles and blogs with keywords like for example we're going to talk about skateboarding in this lesson you would say skateboard 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 again and again in your article and it would boost it to the ranking at the top now they use latent semantic indexing and what that does is it groups keywords with what they're related to so skateboarding is related to uh skateboard tape um bearings um uh, skateboarding decks, uh, all the other terms that align with that main term, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using that and ChatGPT helps us with that process. So let's hop into it. So what I first wanna start with is asking ChatGPT to write a 100 word product description about a skateboard with glowing wheels and we're gonna see what we can do to optimize it. Now what I wanna do is generate the high search volume keywords for skateboarders, AKA my target audience, when they're looking for online products. And as I'm seeing this list come out, I'm seeing some repetitious use of the word skateboard. And now what I wanna do is remove the duplicate word skateboard from this list. So chat GPT can do that. The words skateboard and Boards. Perfect, now we have our optimized list and now what I wanna do is ask ChatGPT to optimize our initial product description with the following key words. So I'm gonna copy these, put it in our prompt. So now we have our updated and optimized product description. Let's see what other techniques we can use to enhance our search engine optimization. So what I'm gonna ask is for ChatGPT to suggest content topics that are likely to perform well in organic searches. It's gonna come up with a list of product ideas and content ideas that I can go and create. So it came up with 15 new content ideas that I can go out and produce and upload online to show up in more organic searches. Let's see what else we can do. Now I'm gonna ask it to analyze my competitors' keywords and determine what they're targeting and how to optimize my content to beat them in search rankings. Perfect, so it gives me the other tools that I can look into to further improve on my keyword search analytics. And you can continue to dive down this and follow the steps that it outlines and ask for more clarification and further ways to upgrade your SEO. Now let's dive into how we can use this tool to quickly create podcast scripts. Let's check it out. What I wanna start out with is creating a five point outline for a mystery podcast on DB Cooper. Great, so we have our five point outline and it suggests how to actually go about shooting the podcast. So the podcast should start with an introduction to the case of D.B. Cooper, giving an overview of the incident that occurred on November 24th, 1971. The introduction should be set, the introduction should set the tone for the podcast, introducing the listener to the mystery surrounding the case and piquing the interest of the story. So now that I have this five point outline, what I wanna do now is have ChatGPT write a 500 word podcast script for the events in point one in storytelling format. And I want it to make the story sound suspenseful and engaging. So I'm gonna put in that prompt. It's gonna pop out basically a script that I can follow word for word and do that same exact process for each one of these points. And each one of these points could be its own chapter or section of the podcast. Perfect, so it not only gave me the narration for the script to follow, 
but it added some background elements of music and sound effects to add into the podcast just to further tell the story. And I could keep remixing this, keep rewriting it until I had exactly what I wanted. So this is an incredible, incredible tool for quickly writing podcasts. So now let's talk about sales copy and direct response. And ChatGPT is pretty incredible with both of these. So let's first talk about generating copy for making sales. And one of the best tools I found online is this prompt list. And this is over a hundred prompts for marketers. So we have things like generating a list of keywords for a new product launch, including long tail and high, and uh, high performing keywords, develop a personalized marketing email campaign for customers, uh, customer segment based on their interest and purchase history, create a chat bot script for a virtual assistant to schedule meetings and manage calendar events. So this is a gold mine. There are so many different prompts in here that you can use if you're selling online products or you're doing any kind of online marketing at all. So I highly recommend going through and really taking what works for you and trying it out in chat GPT. So that was for sales copy. And now let's talk about direct response. And this is really responding to people that reach out to you online through email, social media platforms. Maybe you're an online instructor and you have a student Q&A section, and this is gonna help you speed up your workflow of getting back to people. So I'm gonna paste in an email that I actually just recently got this week. And I'm going to say, please respond to this email in a professional manner. And I can use whatever types of keywords to change in an inquisitive manner, a professional manner, a friendly manner, all different things. And I can even ask it to, great, generate two more options. And rather than taking the time to write all of these out by hand, I can choose from the best pre-written one that works for this specific client and for this specific scenario. So I have so many different options to choose from and I can change all the criteria in a matter of seconds. So I really recommend checking this out and trying to speed up your direct response workflow with ChatGPT. In this lesson, we'll be talking about using ChatGPT to help you write songs and lyrics. Let's jump in. So I'm asking ChatGPT to write a rock song in the style of the police about heartbreak in 4-4 time using the chords A minor, E minor, G major, D major, and include the words pineapples and ghosts. I'll never forget those summer nights when we used to hold each other tight, but now that love is gone, I must find a way to move on. Pineapples and ghosts haunt my mind, reminding me of a love that was blind. This is hilarious. But you can see ChatGPT tells you where you are in the song, verse one, chorus, verse two. It gives you the chords above the lyrics, and it wrote an original song about heartbreak in the style of the police. And it did include pineapples and ghosts. It wasn't the most creative about how it threw them in there, but this is honestly hilarious. Now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to write a rap battle between Dr. Dre and Biggie Smalls about spaghetti. Write a rap battle between Dr. Dre and Biggie Smalls about spaghetti. Use the words jelly belly three times. Okay, let's see how he did. Right out of the gate, yikes, that is vicious. Listen up, Biggie, it's time to go to war. Your rhymes are weak, they're a total bore. I'm the king of the West, I'm a master of beats. You can't touch me, you're just a fat piece of meat. Oh my God. Okay, you talk about spaghetti, but you don't know the sauce. What is this one? I'm a master of the game, I'm the king of the beat. You're just a jelly belly, you can't even compete. This is absolutely ridiculous. And here it says that Biggie took the crown and he won the fight and Dr. Dre was just a jelly belly. So this is ridiculous. But if you actually write lyrics or you're a rapper or a songwriter, you can use ChatGPT to help brainstorm ideas for your music. Now let's have ChatGPT write our resume for us. Please write me a resume. 
I'm 30 years old. I have 12 years of experience in content creation. My skills are yada yada. My experience is working for Moment Films for four years, freelancing for eight years. Please include that I am a good worker and able to adapt and proactive in solving problems. Write that better though. And please write the resume in a friendly and professional tone. So as you can see, ChatGPT got straight to work and wrote me my entire resume. It even leaves a space for me to enter all my personal information. It tells me an objective, a summary, all my skills. Really, this is amazing. It talks about my experience working for Moment Films, my experience as a freelancer, education, and personal qualities. So some of the information, it just filled in on its own. It wasn't information I gave it, which is incredible, but I would have to obviously go through this and make sure that these dates are accurate, make sure that the things that decided I am doing for these different companies are accurate. But really, this saves so much time. Finally, you can see that I asked it to include that I'm a good worker and proactive in problem solving. And you can see here, I'm a proactive and adaptable problem solver. So perfect. It answered all of my requests and it put them into this one resume. Obviously, you'll need to tweak your resume a little bit here and there, but it's amazing how much time you can save by using ChatGPT. We're going to take a look at writing bios with ChatGPT. Here we have a resume that ChatGPT wrote for me based on the criteria that I gave it. Now I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write a LinkedIn bio based off of this resume. So please write a LinkedIn bio based off of the resume above. You can see there is a spelling error, but ChatGPT understood what I was trying to say. Great, so now we have our LinkedIn bio based off of the resume that ChatGPT created for us. Next, I just wanna paste in a bio of a friend of mine and ask ChatGPT to improve it. So this bio is for a filmmaker and I'm asking, please update the following bio optimized for film industry executives. Great, so here it is. Over the years, I've refined my skills in creative direction, producing, directing, and post-production, and have collaborated with professionals from every field to bring compelling projects to life. As a result, I've become a creative problem solver and experienced team leader who is known for bringing big ideas to the table and executing them flawlessly. This is actually a really great update from this already great bio above. Now, just for fun, we're going to have ChatGPT create a LinkedIn bio for Elvis Presley. Whether you're a fan of my music, films, or my legacy as an American cultural icon, I'm honored to connect with you on LinkedIn and share my story with the world. Thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. That last part was just a joke, but you can see how ChatGPT can really help you improve your bios. So let's talk about creating a speech or presentation from scratch and even being able to add uh, people that you'd like to emulate in the speech or presentation that you're giving. So let's start with this first prompt. I wanna write a speech about the importance of content creation spoken in the style of Gary Vaynerchuk. And let's go ahead and make this speech 200 words and see what we get. Perfect, so we have our initial version for our speech, and it's written in the style of Gary Vaynerchuk. So you see, with the rise of social media and the internet, anyone can create content and reach millions of people with just a few clicks. And let me tell you, if you're not creating content, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to connect with your audience and showcase your unique talents and expertise. So super motivational, and you know how he speaks. So of course you would replace his name in this circumstance with your own personal name. And what I also wanna add to this is adding notes where emphasis and emotional inflection points would work in this speech. So let's put in that prompt. So what it did is it went ahead and added notes to the speaker. So emphasize the words Gary V to establish authority and familiarity with your audience. The next note it did was use a more serious and passionate tone to convey the importance of content creation. So it's basically walking you through the steps of how to improve your speaking style as if it was a vocal coach in this situation. Then what we could do is make it more concise, upbeat, make it 500 words, change the style a little bit, and really tailor it to the specific presentation or speaking that you are doing. 
in this lesson, what we're gonna talk about is creating an entire ebook from scratch using what? Of course, ChatGPT. So let's hop into the process. So what I wanna do is write an entire ebook on at-home gardening and houseplants. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, what are the main steps? So it gave us a six point outline on what to do. And let's first focus on the first two. We wanna define our target audience and we wanna research and plan our content. So let's first go to step one. We want ChatGPT to help us define our audience. So let's say help define my audience for this book. Great, so we have some initial questions to ask about finding the age range of our audience, the experience level, where they live, what lifestyle situations, and what um, overall interest they have. What I wanna do is ask ChatGBT to define this for me. So the prompt I'm gonna write is define who my target audience would be for a book written about gardening and plants. Great, so we have our target audience divided into seven different potential categories, beginning, expert, apartment owners, homeowners, urban farmers, health and wellness enthusiasts, and environmentalists. Now what I wanna ask ChatGPT to do is write me an outline for this book that would appeal to this target audience. So the prompt I'm gonna do is please write a bullet point outline for this ebook that would appeal to this specific target audience. Great, so it gave us a brief summary of each main step of the process that the book would be about. So we have getting started with gardening, choosing the right plants, caring for your plants, designing your garden, troubleshooting common gardening issues, and the conclusion. Now what I want it to do is to turn each one of these bullet point summaries into a entire chapter of the book. Great, so the prompt I have is now take bullet point one and write a 3,000 word in-depth chapter for this book. And I'm gonna change 3,000, even though that would be what we'd want to use. But for our example, with time, we're gonna do 500. And ChatGPT is gonna go through and expand that bullet point into the entire chapter of the book. Now we have our first chapter of the book and this looks great already, but of course you can customize this. You could write this in the style of Morgan Freeman or write this in the style of a child's, a children's book. So let's say that this was refined and we had it the way we wanted to. We went through all of our bullet points and we created chapters out of those bullet points. Now what we need to do next is come up with our book name. So great. Now create three options for a great sounding book title. And there you have it. We have three different options. Green Thumbs, A Beginner's Guide to At-Home Gardening and Houseplants. Number two, A Houseplant Handbook, Everything You Need to Know About Indoor Plants and Gardening. And lastly, Cultivate Your Own Eden, A Practical Guide uh, to At-Home Gardening and Houseplants. Lastly, we have everything that we need except for a description for Amazon. So let's say, now create a 200 word description of the book for Amazon. So there you have it. Now we have our title, our entire book, and the description to use for the landing page of this product. And as a final little addition, I wanted to also drop this link in for you as a uh, online article that shows you how to publish an ebook online in a step-by-step -step process. So this outlines the entire process and I would highly suggest checking this out if this is something you're really interested in pursuing. What I wanna go into now is using ChatGPT for three different use cases and examples of social media posts. So let's hop into it. The first example is doing a life recap or something that's synthesizing a lot of information that you'd like to share online, but you don't wanna spend the time to group and rewrite all that information into one post. So the prompt we have is, I wanna make a life update post for Facebook and I wanna share what I've been up to. I've graduated college, I met a girl, I got a job as a software engineer, I've moved to a new city and started camping, 
And I want you to write a friendly and playful tone and include some jokes. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Perfect, so hey everyone, it's been a hot minute since I last updated you all on my life, so here it goes. First things first, I finally managed to escape the clutches of college and am now officially a graduate. I swear, four years went by so fast, fa or swear, went, excuse me, went by faster than the time it takes for a pizza to disappear at a party. Speaking of parties, you know what they say about college. C's get degrees, but A's get jobs. And that's exactly what I did. So it's trying to inject some humor in there. If we like this one, we can use it, perfect. If not, we can regenerate the response and fine tune it until it matches our own speaking style and something that we'd feel comfortable sharing online. Now I wanna talk about bulk writing posts. So this is a great tool to use, for example, writing 10 Twitter posts on the topic of the importance of cinematography and video lighting in the voice of a filmmaking expert. So you can really have it hone in on what topic you wanna to speak about and who you wanna speak about it as. Perfect, so here we have our 10 different posts for Twitter. And it even added hashtags at the end, which we can swap out or remove completely. We can even change specific words in here. We could replace cinematography with videography and just really go endlessly changing and fine tuning this until we get something we're really happy with. And lastly, let's go over one more option. So I'm gonna say I'm a travel enthusiast. I travel to exotic destinations around the world and post stunning photos to Instagram. I want you to list 10 positive quotes that I can put into my posts on Instagram. And there you have it. We have our 10 positive travel quotes. You could really even, even turn these into coffee mugs, but this is a great resource. You don't have to have it generate just text for you to use, but you can also pull quotes just like this from online. Here, we're gonna look at content creation for a specific niche. So let's pretend that I'm a travel influencer looking for content about traveling. I Google the best places in the world to visit, copy this. Now I'm gonna paste the top result into ChatGPT and ask five things to do in this location. Amazing, so now we have five things to do in South Island, New Zealand. Now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to turn this into a script so I have a script for a YouTube video to make content. Please turn that into a 200 word script for a travel influencer YouTube video. Amazing, here it is. So, hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I go explore the most beautiful places around the world. Today, we're in the South Island of New Zealand and I'm going to show you the top five things you can't miss on your road trip on this stunning island. So we have our script and it's ready to go. Now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to generate an image to go with each part of the script so we can add some visual interest to our video. So please give me one image per paragraph that visually represents what's being said in each paragraph. Great, so you can see ChatGPT even tried to pull some image links, which is actually beyond its capacity to do right now, but it gives us the exact description of the images that we'll need. So let's hop over to Unsplash to find these. If you're unfamiliar, Unsplash is an amazing resource for royalty-free photos that you can use. So here we can find our photo of Milford sound they have a bunch of amazing and beautiful options and we could download these to use them as b-roll in our video so the next step in our example is you could actually buy a teleprompter from Amazon or somewhere and hook it up so that you could read this script live facing to camera and then cut the b-roll over you talking which would deliver an engaging video now let's pretend we have our video. We can ask ChatGPT to give us 10 potential YouTube video titles. Great, these are honestly some amazing options. Just to show you, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to try again, but with shorter titles. So here we have some shorter, more concise titles. Now I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to please give me a list of 10 SEO optimized keywords to use as tags for my video. Great, so we have our script, the B-roll images that we need 
for the script, we could buy a teleprompter to read the script to camera. We could put the B-roll over the footage. We have our titles here and we have our video tags. Lastly, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to write a blog entry about our video. Please write a 150 word blog entry about the video. Amazing. So you can see this was a very specific example, but we went from start to finish and then some with ChatGPT in just a manner of minutes. Here we have a really unique case study about how you can use ChatGPT to generate icons. So let's dive right in. As you can see, that's just a really interesting way that might be perfect for someone who's trying to create a specific icon with ChatGPT. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the chapter. I have a quick learning activity for you and I want you to ask ChatGPT to write you a script for an ad that you're selling, for a product that you're selling, or for a social media video that you want to make about your specific niche. And remember, if you need help thinking of what you even want to write about, you can ask ChatGPT to give you a list of 10 potential products that you might want to sell. So welcome to this new chapter on ChatGPT and synthesizing information. I'm really excited to get into this one because the other chapters are more on content creation where we're putting in an input and a prompt in a chat GPT to create something new. In this chapter, what we're gonna talk about is how to receive and put complex amounts of large data, large sets of information into ChatGPT, synthesize it so that you can save time and get what you need. So at the end of the day, you can focus more of your time on what you enjoy and let ChatGPT do the hard work for you. So in this chapter, we're gonna cover how to use ChatGPT to simplify large amounts of information, like I mentioned, and research for your business or even other businesses and potential jobs with employers that you wanna apply for. After that, we'll talk about social dynamics and we'll learn about friends, families, and acquaintances and how to more effectively communicate with them using ChatGPT. <clears throat> then we'll move on to how to solve really complex math problems and even create a custom travel guide that's specific to you and the destination you want to go to. Then we'll go to how to create a custom schedule that's tailored to your specific needs and the goals that you want to hit. Those are just a few points that we're going to talk about in this chapter with much more. And by the end of the chapter, you're going to have all of these techniques to really quickly use ChatGPT to synthesize complex amounts of information and get all the info you're looking for in a short amount of time. So that's it for this intro on the chapter and now let's get started in the next lesson. In this lesson we're going to talk about how to use ChatGPT to go down the rabbit hole and really learn new pieces of information by asking the right questions. So what we're going to do is start with a more broad question. So I'm going to ask what questions can I ask ChatGPT to optimize my personal and work life? And what it's gonna do is come up with questions to ask it to get really good answers. So it gave us 10 questions for this direction. Let's go ahead and read through a few of them. What are some effective time management techniques I can use to be more productive and efficient in my work and personal life? How can I improve my communication skills to better connect with others in both my personal and professional relationships? And what are some strategies I can use to reduce stress and improve my mental health and well-being? So it's almost like a personal coach that's gonna give you outputs 
for questions that you can dive further and further into. So let's go ahead and choose one of these. Um, how can I develop my skills and knowledge to advance? Let's go ahead and elaborate, please elaborate on point five. So from that one question in point five, which ChatGPT provided us, now we asked it to elaborate and we have six steps or six bullet points of how we can actually act on this question. So we can identify our strengths and weaknesses, set goals, seek out training and development opportunities, practice, network, and embrace lifelong learning. So some of these are a nice reminder of, oh yeah, duh, that's something I can implement in my life. And some other um, steps in this we might not have thought of. So we're using the brain power of ChatGPT to set us in the right direction and give us different clues and different tips for some things that you know we might not be thinking of to solve our problems. So we can continue to go down this rabbit hole of, okay, now elaborate on point number one. So now it's given us four more bullet points to go further into this rabbit hole of self-reflection, feedback from others, a personality and aptitude test, which is actually a great tip to take a Myers Brig test, which you might have not thought of if you have a barrier or some type of resistance that you're experiencing in life, taking a test like this would help you understand more about your personality type and how to be more effective in your work and personal life. So just from a few questions, this might send you off down a road where you find that little thing that you need just to create a subtle change in your life to make you more uh, successful and achieve more of the goals you're looking to do all through ChatGPT. So now let's say that we went down this rabbit hole and we found all the information that we were looking for that potentially showed some blind spots in our life that we weren't thinking about that we can improve. And now we wanna shift our focus to a new set of questions. So I'm gonna ask, what are some ways that I can improve my, let's say for an example, personal coaching business. Perfect, so it outlined eight points to keep in mind. Defining your niche, building your online presence, leveraging client referrals, building continuously the skills and the knowledge that I have, creating coaching packages, building strong relationships with clients, and developing a marketing plan. So for the things that I'm doing correctly already, I wouldn't worry about, but some of these are perfect jumping off points for me to take into account or for me to share with my team in this example so that we can start to improve on areas of the business side that might be lacking. So these are all great points to consider. And what I wanted to do as a last example is to expand on point number eight and create a detailed marketing plan for my coaching business. So now what ChatGPT did is expand on point eight and it's created a nice outline for me to follow by starting with defining my target audience, determining my value proposition, setting marketing goals, developing messaging, choosing marketing channels, allocating a marketing budget, creating a content strategy, and monitoring and measuring results in the company. Now, these are all great points, and let's say that for my example, my weakest point out of all of these is creating the content strategy. So expand on point number seven and outline a detailed content strategy for my business. Perfect, so now we have nine new action items and it even talks about creating a content calendar which is what we're going to get to later in this chapter and there are really just unlimited amounts of reiterations that you can go through of going down the rabbit hole with ChatGPT. So the goal here and really the big takeaway is that it's going to show you things that you have in mind and it's also going to illuminate potential blind spots or areas of improvement that you haven't even thought of yet that you get to by asking it the right questions. So let's continue to find out more about what we don't know and illuminating answers and the right questions to ask using ChatGPT for specifically our business. And we're gonna get more specific on questions. So we got more specific and we asked, what are 10 questions I can ask for opening my own coffee shop? I'll be selling various items like drinks, breakfast and lunch, 
and coffee-related merchandise like trendy items for drinking coffee at home. And it came up with 10 great questions to ask ChatGPT. What is my budget for starting a coffee shop and how will I finance my business? What is my target market and how can I cater to their needs and preferences, which is a great question. And what location will be best for my coffee shop and how will I evaluate potential sites? That question, I'm actually really curious to see what ChatGPT will answer that I'm potentially not thinking about. This is great. So it's going into detail on considering the demographics in the area I'd like to open my coffee shop, foot traffic with really keeping in mind that you want to have a location with high foot, tra foot, foot traffic, accessibility, competition, rent and expenses, zoning and regulations, and community support with a nice little breakdown of each of those terms. And these all act as a great jumping off point to do before you start enacting any of the physical side or spending money or putting the pieces together because asking the right question here can save you so much more time and a headache not down the road by missing and not knowing what you don't know and making mistakes. So let's move on to another question of what are your competitors doing to gain success or drive sales? Of course, you can continue to go down breaking these different bullet points up into more elaborate answers or move on to a next question. So let's do that. What are my competitors doing to gain success or drive sales? So here's our answer. ChatGPT wasn't able to get specific information on my competitors in this scenario, but it still offered some good strategies for coffee shops to leverage and create more success and drive more sales. So offering high quality products, creating a brand and atmosphere at the coffee shop, providing excellent customer service, using promotions and loyalty programs, partnering with other businesses, emphasizing sustainability and social responsibility, and lastly, leveraging technology, which is what we're doing in this situation right now. And as my last example, as we're going down this rabbit hole, what I wanna ask it is, what are some trends that have been observed in the coffee business in recent years that are likely to continue in the future? So we're gonna learn about past successes, past trends that are really likely to continue um, in this specific business. So lastly, it's honestly identified some really great trends about specialty coffee, more craft, um, you know, local brewed coffee, and convenience, mobile ordering that's been so much more popular these days. And really just all these points could literally be copied and pasted into the overall plan for going after this type of business endeavor. So that should illuminate the right questions to ask ChatGPT to really learn more about what you don't know. And even if you don't know the question to ask ChatGPT, you can ask it to tell you the right questions to ask in the first place, which is an incredible tool to use. Now we're gonna ask ChatGPT to assist us in our job search. In a previous lesson, we asked ChatGPT to write us a resume. Now I'm gonna ask, based on my resume, what jobs would I excel at? And I'm pasting below the resume that ChatGPT wrote us. Great, so you can see here that ChatGPT gave me a list of jobs that I would be well suited for. Just for fun and to expand my horizons a little bit, I'm gonna ask for what are five other jobs that I could be well suited for. Great, you can see that ChatGPT came up with some different examples and honestly, some of these I haven't even thought of, but there's some pretty good ideas here. Now, just for fun, we're gonna say that Lionsgate Productions is hiring a new music super Supervisor, and I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, based on my resume, what would a recruiter at Lionsgate find positive or negative? So what would a recruiter at Lionsgate hiring for the music supervisor position find positive and negative about my resume? Awesome, so you can see right here, these are a list of positives that a recruiter in this position would find in my resume, while these are a couple examples of some negatives. I could ask ChatGPT to expand on the negatives and possibly even even help me overcome them depending on what they are. In this lesson, we'll be going over how to prepare for a job interview using AI. My prompt is, what are the top 10 questions for a music supervisor interview? So as you can see here, we have 10 questions that might be asked in an interview scenario for a music supervisor role. Now I'm gonna ask for a mock interview. 
I want you to act as the interviewer for a music supervisor role. I will be the candidate and you will ask me the interview questions. I want you to only reply as the interviewer. Ask me the questions one at a time waiting for my response before asking the next question like an interviewer does. Let's begin with, hello, my name is Benza. Hello Benza, thank you for joining us today. Can you start by telling me a bit about your experience in music supervision? What projects have you worked on in the past? I've composed for various short films including Tooth and Maslow and spent two years curating for Western Washington. That sounds like some great experience, Benza. Can you walk me through your process for selecting music for a project? How do you determine what will work best for a particular scene or sequence? Well, it all comes down to emotion. First, we decide on what the desired effect the music is supposed to have. Then there's a bit of trial and error trying different pieces until we finally find the perfect fit. Can you describe a time when you had to work under a tight deadline to find the perfect piece of music for a project? How did you manage to complete the task on time? Yes, I was in charge of putting together the music for a commercial for the state of Washington, and our producer mistook the deadline by a whole week. So a week-long project turned into a day-long project, but we just made the choices we had to make with the time that we had to make them. So you can keep going down this rabbit hole and get as much experience and as much practice in this mock interview as you would like. I just have one more different example I wanna show you. So now I'm going to tell ChatGPT to please ignore all previous instructions so we can restart for our second example. I want you to role play as an interviewer and interviewee for the music supervisor job at Lionsgate Productions. And this just gives you a different look at the interviewer interviewee process where you can read some suggested answers for the interviewee role. So hopefully you can see how you can be better prepared for your next job interview. Now we're gonna have ChatGPT help us in emailing a potential employer. Please create an email that I would receive from a potential employer for a job opportunity at Lionsgate. Amazing. So you could have ChatGPT help build your resume, act as a mock interview, and finally send you an example invitation letter for your job here at Lionsgate. Now write an email to a potential employer about getting a potential interview for a job as a music supervisor at Lionsgate. Add to the email my strengths, I'm a quick learner, adaptable, 12 years in music production, mention I have my work attached, and I'm an expert in Ableton. Great, so you can see we've written a potential email for the music supervisor role at Lionsgate. As a music production professional with over 12 years of experience, I've developed a strong set of skills and expertise in the industry. My strengths include being a quick learner and adaptable, which I believe would be valuable in a dynamic environment like Lionsgate. That's great, there's a lot of usable content here and I honestly could probably use this entire email. Now let's say I actually met with the person who's hiring for this role and I talked to them a little bit and I know that they're a fan of the Beatles and since we have that personal connection, I want this email to be a little bit less formal. Let's see what ChatGPT can do to help. The person the email is written for is a fan of the Beatles. Please add a relatable reference sentence. Can be slightly less formal, write two emails. Now you can see that we have two different options here. The first one is an email where we reference the Beatles right here as a direct quote from some of their lyrics. The second email we just mentioned that we are also a huge fan of the Beatles and the way that their music transcends time and connects with people of all ages. The tone of both of these emails is clearly more relaxed and a little bit more friendly while still retaining the professional standard needed for a potential employer. And I really hope you can see how helpful ChatGPT can be for generating email ideas and giving you options and things to choose from. This lesson I'm really excited to talk about because I think this is such a fascinating way to use this tool, which is asking the right questions to learn about other people's success in the past. And the reason I think this is so cool is because if you're gonna do this with traditional Google searches, it would be so many clicks to different articles and scanning through pages of blogs and write-ups to try to find just the quick most concise information to find on 
people's past and why they became so successful. So let's hop into ChatGPT and see what we can learn. So the prompt I want to start with is a public figure that most everyone knows, Dr. Dre, super famous music producer, super famous entrepreneur. And I'm going to ask a really simple question right out of the gate. Why was Dr. Dre so successful? Awesome. So we have a concise answer on his reasons for success. And let's just read through this quickly. Dr. Dre, whose real name is Andre Young, is considered one of the most successful and influential hip hop producers of all time. Here are some reasons why he's been so successful. First off is pioneering his own sound, which is one of the main reasons he's known for is creating that unique sound. Next is his talent as a producer. And then his eye for finding and discovering new and up and coming talent and his business savviness, which this is really interesting to me. And I want to find out more about point number four. So it expanded on point number four, Dr. Dre's success as a businessman can be attributed to his ability to spot trends and capitalize them. He co-founded Death Row Records in the early 1990s, which quickly became one of the most successful and influential hip hop labels of all times. Now, I would like a little bit more detail on this answer. So I'm gonna say, please list his most influential and successful events of his career in chronological order with a brief description. And what this is going to do is lay out all of his most important moments and let me know when they were and what they were. Perfect. So it outlined his most important moments in his music career, but it's related more towards his album releases. Now what I want to learn is now create another list that just shows his business related decisions that were a huge success. So rather than getting more about his music side, I want to just really focus in on the business side. So there you have it. Now I have a list of his most important business decisions and I can learn from this, get inspired from this and create my own roadmap if I was trying to walk in his footsteps and emulate his career. So that leads to the next prompt. What are the main points of his success that I can implement as an up and coming music producer? So now we have a specific set of steps that we can potentially follow as an up and coming music producer to develop our own sound, collaborate with other artists, stay on top of trends, build strong business foundation, and nurture other people's talent and our own talent the same way Dr. Dre did. Now I wanna take this one step further and ask to create a weekly schedule that outlines what I should do each day and at what time in order to implement the five steps outlined above. So now I have an overview of what I can focus on every single day in the morning and then in the afternoon to really walk in Dr. Dre's footsteps. And you can recreate this for any artist, any entrepreneur, any business person, and opportunities are endless here. So I really recommend that you try this out, find one of your favorite um, celebrities or people that you look up to dig down and find out about their success about their talents why they were so successful and then see what you can do to develop your own schedule to start emulating that success so let's continue to synthesize and learn large amounts of information in a short amount of time and what I want to focus on in this lesson is learning from past businesses and past world events. So the prompt I want to start off with is tell me the most significant events with dates and a one sentence explanation in Apple's history that played a major role in the company's success. So here we have it in 1976 Apple computers was founded by Steve Jobs. In 1984 Apple unveiled the first Macintosh computer. 85 Steve Jobs as we know resigns from Apple. Uh, 1988, they introduced the iMac. And 2001, they launched the iPod. I remember that as a kid. 2007, they introduced the iPhone, which was game-changing completely um, as one of the first smartphones to completely revolutionize the way people communicate. And then Apple releases the iPad. 
Steve Jobs resigns from uh, Apple as the CEO. Apple unveils the Apple Watch. And then lastly, Apple continues to innovate by releasing new types of microchips for their computers. So the overall theme of this is Apple really continuing to revolutionize and innovate with their products. So after learning from this list, what I wanna then learn is how is Apple able to innovate so much on the computer software side and technology side and do it so effectively? So whether I'm writing my own essay or I'm working in a similar field for another company and wanting to learn about their success and why it happened, this is an entire list that will help me get to that end goal. So we talk about visionary leadership, design focus, close integration of hardware and software, an emphasis on user experience, investment in research and development, a culture of innovation, and focusing constantly on simplification as we all know Apple really focuses on. All of these items offer some pretty clear insights and we can continue to break these down further and further until ChatGPT gets us the information we're looking for and we can move on to the next task. So what I wanna do now is move away from a business-related um, set of prompts and talk about and learn about past historical events. So the prompt I wanna start off with is, tell me in six concise paragraphs a summary of the Civil War and include as many dates and events as possible. Great, so now we have a concise summary of the American Civil War that has our dates, our times, and important figures. So we can read through this, pull the information that we want, and to go even deeper, we can now ask ChatGPT to convert this into a bullet point list of the events by date in chronological order. Great, so we have our summarized list in chronological order, and we can run through all of these, pull the data and the information that we want, or even expand, as you know, on further getting more info on a specific topic. So let's go ahead and get some more information on the Battle of Gettysburg. Great, so we took one of our dates from above and expanded it into a detailed summary, and this process is so much more effective than a standard Google search to get the same amount of information and really have this back and forth conversation. So now, as a final part of this prompt, I wanna get a little bit more info on General Robert E. Lee. And there you have it. We have the background of General Robert E. Lee, what he did in his life and when he passed away. So this was a quick way to really use ChatGPT as your own history teacher or even your own business coach and ask the right questions to get concise responses while saving yourself time and energy. So now that you've learned how to really use ChatGPT to synthesize information about past public figures and past events, what I wanna do now is walk through an example of how to use it in your life today with social dynamics and your relationships with other people in your life. So let's start with our first example. As a high school teacher, how do I approach and communicate with students who misbehave in class? And of course, you would tailor this type of prompt to your own specific scenario in life. So here we have our answer. Dealing and misbehaving with students can be challenging, but it's important to approach them in a way that is both firm and compassionate. I would agree with that. So our first point, stay calm and composed. It is important to stay calm and composed when dealing with misbehaving students and avoid getting angry or emotional. Number two, address the behavior, not the student. I think that's a great point. Number three, be clear and direct. Use positive reinforcement listen to the student, involve parents or other support systems. If this gave us the exact answers we were looking at or looking for, awesome. If not, we can further expand on any of these points or even regenerate the response to hear the answer in a slightly different way. Now let's start with a second prompt. I want ChatGPT to give me 10 ways to resolve a conflict with my coworker that's trying to obtain the same promotion that I'm working towards. 
So here we have 10 points to follow to help resolve any of the conflicts we might be having with our coworker, to communicate openly and respectfully, to focus on the work, send, uh, seek feedback from others, identify our own strengths and unique contributions, be willing to compromise, and the list goes on. Now, a follow-up question we can ask, let's say that our hardest part that we've identified from this list that we have the most hard time doing is keeping an open mind. So I find it hard for myself to keep an open mind like bullet point nine. How can I do this more effectively? And ChatGPT is going to go ahead and expand on this and ideally, like a personal assistant or a personal trainer or a coach, it's going to give us a tailored response that's going to help us reveal any blind spots that we have that might be barriers holding us back. And that's really the key here is to continue asking it questions and going further down into this discovery process. So here we have seven points. Recognize your own biases, seek out new experiences, be curious, practice empathy, stay informed, challenge your own beliefs, and be flexible. So some really great pointers, and you can continue to tailor these questions to your specific life. In this lesson, we'll show you how ChatGPT can help with the relationships in your life with your friends, your family, or significant others. I'm gonna input some information about someone specific in my life to ChatGPT. So I'm inputting some information about my uncle here. My uncle is a software engineer in his 40s. He loves hikes, traveling, and waterfalls. He is an INFP Myers-Briggs. He's been successful from a young age. He's a self-made man. He went to Harvard, but he has a temper and he will talk over me instead of listening to what I have to say. We come from different walks of life and I have a hard time finding things in common. How can can I more effectively communicate with this person? So here we have ChatGPT working its magic. Sounds like you want to improve your communication with your uncle despite your differences. Here are some suggestions that might help. We can acknowledge our differences, recognize that your uncle comes from a different generation and has a different life experience than you, accept that you have different opinions and values on certain issues, show genuine interest, listen actively, respectful communication, bridge your differences, and avoid personal attacks. So you can take this down a rabbit hole of getting as specific as you want. You can ask follow-up questions about each suggestion that ChatGPT gives you. You can input all the information you need to to really describe the person that you are trying to improve your relationship with and let ChatGPT help you through your problems. In this lesson, we'll be exploring how you can use ChatGPT to teach you skills that you didn't have before. So we're going to ask for a step-by-step -step tutorial. How do I use the pivot table in Microsoft Excel? ChatGPT wrote a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the pivot table in Microsoft Excel in these 10 steps. From opening Microsoft Excel, ensuring that our data is properly formatted as a table, to once the data is in a table, click anywhere inside and then click on insert. From the insert tab, select pivot table, create the pivot table, so on and so forth. Let's say you don't have a specific question you want to ask, but you just need some help. ChatGPT can also assist you there. What are the best tips for using Photoshop for photo editing? Great. Here we got nine tips for using Photoshop for photo editing. Let's say I just don't understand smart objects and I want ChatGPT to expand a little bit about that. Can you expand on smart objects? I need some clarification. Awesome. So I needed some clarification on smart objects. And here we have this extensive breakdown on what is a smart object, the benefits, how to create them, how to edit them, how to apply filters, and so on and so forth. Just as a different example, let's say I am a music producer using Ableton and I keep hearing some latency, some delay when I'm playing. I hear a delay in my headphones while recording vocals in Ableton Live. 
How do I get rid of the latency? Latency is a recording term that means that there can be a delay from when you make a sound to when you hear the sound back. So that was a specific problem that we were having, and here we go with some ways to fix that problem. Because I happen to be an expert in Ableton Live, I can tell that this is factually accurate and that these are good ways to reduce the latency or delay effect when you're recording. So let's say you don't have a specific problem that you're working with, but you just want to improve your workflow or your knowledge of a specific software, you can ask ChatGPT to help. What are the most important keyboard shortcuts I should know for After Effects? Adobe After Effects is a video editing software. And here we have it, a list of keyboard shortcuts for Adobe After Effects. Now as a completely different example, give me three plugins for Adobe Premiere that would allow me to create more interesting looking videos. Fascinating, I'll definitely have to look into these. These were just some specific examples, but I just want you to understand how you can ask ChatGPT for step-by-step -step guides, for solving specific problems, and so much more. Now we're going to be talking about general learning skills with ChatGPT. Give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a YouTube thumbnail on Canva. And there we have it. Here is a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a YouTube thumbnail on Canva. Sign in, create design, choose your template, upload an image, customize, add text, adjust the size, customize your background, save it, and our YouTube thumbnail is ready for YouTube. It's obviously important to know these specific skills and steps to accomplish something, but it's also important to know different terms, and each industry has their own jargon or own terms, and ChatGPT can help you understand those jargon terms quicker. Give me the top 10 jargon terms used in economics. Amazing. So here we have a breakdown of 10 jargon terms used in economics, from gross to from GDP to inflation, deflation, and so on and so forth. It's so important to understand the jargon terms because you can read an article that throws a word out that you don't understand, but you do understand the concept of that word. So understanding the jargon helps you understand the article as a whole. Lastly, even if you do know the step-by-steps on how to do or solve a specific problem and somebody else asks you a question, maybe you don't have the time. You can use ChatGPT to to answer their questions for them. Let's now dive into text and article analysis. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about finding articles online that you wanna learn about that are dense in the nature of how much text there is to go through. And we're gonna see how we can use ChatGPT to paste URL links directly from articles into the platform and summarize it so that you can get the information you're looking for much more quickly. We're going to start with this James Webb Telescope article. And the title is Why the First Webb Telescope Images Means So Much for Scientists. And as we scroll through here, we can see it's pretty extensive. There's also other parts of this web page that we don't want to put into ChatGPT. Obviously, there's ads, there's other sections for other articles, and there's other text going on. But we're going to go ahead and grab this URL. And I'm going to go to ChatGPT, and I'm going to paste this in, and I'm going to ask it to summarize the most important information from this article into 10 bullet points. And what ChatGPT is going to do is going to take the title, it's going to take only the information that we want, and it's going to break that down into the bullet points that we requested. And so as you know, here's our bullet point list. We can generate a new response. We can open up and dive into further detail any of the specific points. And we can also ask ChatGPT to define whatever parts of this breakdown that we want. For example, what is a mid-infrared instrument? And what is a near-infrared instrument? spectrograph. If we want more elaboration on those things, we can copy them, put them into ChatGPT, and it's going to give us a breakdown. So there's our definition of a near-infrared spectrograph. And the next thing that we can do to take this one step further is to ask ChatGPT to take the 10 most important 
keywords in the original article that I shared and define them. Let's see what we get. Now we have a bullet point list of the top 10 most important keywords from our original article. And for this example, I'm not gonna break down any of these further, but what I wanna do is ask what other events and information that's related to this topic that I should learn. So here's the list that it gave me. It gave me more details on the James Webb Space Telescope. It also talked a little bit about the Hubble Space Telescope, that how it was the successor to that telescope, and a few other events. But honestly, what I would rather get are other related um, key points in history and other topics related to NASA and these types of similar space events. So let's change our prompt to what are 10 other historical and significant events different from the James Webb Space Telescope that someone interested in space would want to know. Let's see what we come up with. Perfect, and we have our list of other important, significant events in the same genre of information. Now, lastly, what I wanna do is, because it's mentioning the Hubble Telescope again and how the James Webb was a successor to this first piece of technology, what I wanted to do to further synthesize this information is compare the similarities and differences of the James Webb Space Telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope. Explain the differences in simple terms that the average person would understand and find interesting. Perfect, and here's our comparison between these two pieces of technology. It compares the size, the wavelength, the location, the purpose, the instruments, and the launch. So a ton of really interesting things you can do with this tool, and I will see you in the next lesson. So here we go. Let's talk about solving some complex math problems that would either take quite a bit of time on your calculator or quite a bit of looking on Google to find the right website to help you solve some of these problems. The first thing I wanna start with is this prompt that's very practical for my specific use case. If I wanna create an online course in 30 days with 65 lessons and 17 learning exercises, how many lessons do I have to complete per day and separately how many learning exercises do I need to complete every single day in order to finish everything in the 30-day window? So we have our answers here. And what ChatGPT started with was the formula that it used and then the answers to the equation. So it's telling me that I'm gonna need to complete 2.17, so it shows the decimal, of lessons per day to hit my 30-day window and for the learning exercises out of 17 for the 30 days I need to complete half a day or one every two days to hit my goal. I could then put this into my calendar, put it into my schedule and use these numbers to make sure that I hit my goals. And for the next equation, let's do this. If I want to make 300k this year, how much money do I have to make per day excluding weekends and holidays? There are online calculators that you can find that will do something similar, but having these answers all in one place with your past conversations logged adds a really easily um, way to find the information that you looked up in the past and just keeps everything organized in one place. So here's our answer. For 300,000 with uh, 365 days per year, I would have to make $821 per day. And with the non-working days um, subtracted from this, aka weekends and holidays, the amount that I would have to make per day is a whopping number of $1,096. And to take this even one step further, you could ask ChatGPT, what is the best way to make $1,000 per day? It'll pop out answers and you can further refine and get more different ideas that you might not already be using to hit your goals. So just another reason to use ChatGPT over some of the other tools 
out there. Now let's go on to our next prompt. What is the formula to convert USD to Euro with a Google Sheets expression? So this is a slightly different than our previous equations, but it's gonna actually give us the code and the way to do this inside of Google Sheets. So that's pretty sweet. It gave us the code and it gave us the way to more effectively use Google Sheets. And I wanna add one last example with Excel. So what is an Excel expression to calculate a depreciating asset at 23% depreciation per year? And just like that, ChatGPT gave us the formula to use inside of Excel, and it also gave us an example. So it says, let's say you have an asset that initially costs $10,000 and you want to calculate its value after five years of depreciation at 23% per year. The formula would be right here, we have it, and this would return a value of $2,997.11, which represents the value of the asset after five years of depreciation at 23% per year. So this is an excellent tool for coming up with formulas for other tools that you can use to solve these more complex math problems while still saving time. Now let's dive in using this tool to compare and contrast two separate topics and let's see what we learn. So what I'm gonna do is start with this prompt. Write a two paragraph essay comparing Buddhism and Hinduism. Please highlight the main differences and similarities. So here is our two paragraph essay comparing these two things. Buddhism and Hinduism are two major religions that originated in India. Although they share similarities, they also have significant differences in their beliefs and practices. One of the most significant differences between the two is the concept of the self. In Hinduism, the self or soul is believed to be eternal and part of a larger universal soul or Brahman. In contrast, Buddhism rejects the concept of a permanent self or soul and emphasizes the impermanence and interconnectedness of all things. So we can elaborate on this, we can ask for more information, we can ask it to uh, expand on the soul or on one of the specific belief systems about the yoga that these different um, backgrounds practice or anything else in this article. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with the comparing and contrasting. Now what I wanna do is do a completely different example where I take two Amazon items that are similar because they both are related to transportation and getting places, but they're two very different ways of going about it. There's a different price point and there's just different uh, overall differences about it. So let's paste these into ChatGPT. I'm gonna start a new chat. Please compare the similarities and differences between these two items. I'm gonna move it down, paste the first one, go to the next, copy the link, come back, hit enter, and now what it's gonna do is break down what the difference is and what the similarities are. And this is pretty cool, this breakdown is on point. ChatGPT says both of these items are electric powered vehicles that can be used for transportation, but they have a few key differences. The form factor, the Hurley Mini Swell is a bike while the Team G, these are funny names, H5 is a skateboard. This means that the Mini Swell is designed to be ridden while seated and the H5 is designed to be ridden while standing. It goes on to talk about the speed. The max speed of the Mini Swell is 20 miles an hour, while the H5 is 22 miles an hour. The range, which is incredibly important, one is 45 miles on a single charge, and one is 11. The price, which is pretty obvious, and then the different features. Both the Mini Swell and the H5 has similar features, such as LED lights, wireless remote controls. However, the Mini Swell also has a seven speed gearbox, which allows the user to adjust the level of assistance provided by the electric motor. And then it gives a summary at the end. So I know from personal experience, going through and looking at Amazon items, for example, trying to find out which one you wanna buy takes a ton of brain power and time of having two tabs open on your web browser to find which one is gonna be most well-suited for you. And just in a few seconds, ChatGPT took 
all that time needed and gave us a very practical and concise list to help us make better decisions. So we just went through our two examples of this tool breaking things down and comparing and contrasting them. So what I want to do is go to our Buddhism versus Hinduism example and ask ChadGPT to now write this in the style of a New York Times article. And what it's going to do is going to take the same information and remix it in a way that's written in this new style. So in our first example, the second paragraph starts off, another major difference between the two religions is their approach to the pursuit of enlightenment. In Hinduism, the path to enlightenment involves following the religious and moral duties assigned to one's caste as well as practicing yoga and meditation. In the New York Times version, it sounds like this. One of the most noticeable differences between the two religions is the concept of the self. In Hinduism, the self or soul is considered eternal and a part of a larger universal soul known as Brahman. In contrast, Buddhism rejects the idea of a permanent self or soul, instead emphasizing the impermanence and interconnectedness of all things. This belief forms the basis of Buddhist teachings on the nature of reality and the path to enlightenment. So the differences went from a more generic writing style to a little bit more of a stylized sound. Now I want to take things a step further by saying, now write this article in the style of Jack Kerouac. Perfect, and I like this example much more because the differences aren't as subtle. Jack Kerouac was a rock star poet in the 60s and the way ChatGPT decided to write it out was, hey man, let me tell you about these religions, Buddhism and Hinduism. They're both really cool, you dig? They both come from ancient India and have been around for like forever. And sure, they've got some similarities, like this whole idea of samsara and karma, but they're also different in some pretty trippy ways. So this is a better example that I really like that shows once you have some information from ChatGPT, you can then remix it and change the tonality by asking it to reproduce the information in a way that's specific to someone else's style. This lesson is about language and learning with ChatGPT. So for this lesson, I had ChatGPT generate a list of 10 random words. Now, write the definition, an example of the word being used, and the Spanish translation for each of the words. If you were actually learning a language, you would probably have a list of words given to you already. So here we have each of the words defined, an example of it being used, and the Spanish translation. Great, now you can take one of these words. I'm gonna take number nine, for example. Tell me about the grammar rules and pronunciation for this word. Awesome, so here we have the grammar rules for this word, the pronunciation, and how to use it. And I can see it's pronounced here, etereo, hope I'm doing that okay. The word etereo is an adjective in Spanish that means ethereal or heavenly. It refers to something that is extremely delicate, light, and beautiful in a way that seems too perfect for this world. In terms of grammar, it is a single masculine adjective, which means it agrees in gender and number with the noun it modifies. As a totally new example, I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, I am learning French. Will you have a conversation with me in French and give me feedback on my grammar? So ChatGPT responded, Bien sûr, je serai heureux de converser avec vous en français. It's saying, yes, I'd be happy to talk to you in French. So then I said, hello, how's it going? My name is Benza. Here it responded, Bonjour Benza, ça va bien, merci, et toi? Said, good, I'm doing good, how are you? And now it's giving me some feedback. And as you can see here, it even responded in English, so I can definitely understand what it was saying. And it says regarding your friends, here are some, here are a few corrections to help improve your grammar. Comment ça va? Should be comment ça va? Perfect. This is the correct way to ask, how are you in French? Je m'appelle, should be je m'appelle. I spelled that totally wrong. This is the correct way to say my name is. Remember to capitalize the first letter of your name as well. Well, that's true in every language. 
You used je suis triste correctly to say I am sad, great job. That is pretty impressive. ChatGPT will respond to you in the language you want to learn, give you the English translation, and then also give you feedback on how you responded to it on your grammar and your spelling. This lesson is about DIY and home improvement enhanced by ChatGPT. It's a Saturday, I have some free time, I want to get crafty, but I just have no idea how to do that or what to even get started with. So what can I build with four cardboard boxes, nails, screws, red and blue paint, a 2x4, an old wooden box, and a piece of pipe I have at home? These are just some random objects I have lying around my house and I would love to put them to some use but I just don't know what to do with them. Okay, so with the materials you have at home, there are a number of creative things you can build depending on your interest and skill level. Here are some ideas, a bookshelf, and it tells me sort of how to do that, a birdhouse, a storage bin, and a desk organizer. I can ask ChatGPT to expand on any of these and say, give me step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a birdhouse or how to build a bookshelf. And if those instructions weren't detailed enough, I could pick any of the points and any of the steps it gave me and say, please expand on step one or step two or step three, et cetera, et cetera. So you, from a list of random objects in your house, can have ChatGPT help you construct something from scratch. Let's say you have a different kind of question for a DIY home life. How do I reset my circuit breaker? And there we have it. Here is the instructions on how to reset a circuit breaker. Identify the tripped circuit breaker, turn off all electrical devices, reset the breaker to reset the breaker, for switch off the tripped circuit breaker to the full off position, then switch it back to the on position, test the circuit, and there you have it. For a last example, let's have ChatGPT help us install an electrical outlet. Step-by-step -step guide to install an electrical outlet. It's important to exercise caution and follow safety guidelines. Materials and tools, this is really cool. Right off the bat, it's giving us a list of things we're gonna need. Here, a seven step guide on how to install an electrical outlet. From turning off the power in the area, planning the location, installing the box, installing the cable, connecting the wires, installing the output, and testing the outlet. This is truly incredible, and I hope you see how you can use ChatGPT to help you in your DIY projects. This lesson is about having ChatGPT act as your own personal travel guide. Let's pretend I have a wife and kids and we'll say, I'm traveling with my wife and kids. We wanna go do some outdoor activities, visit museums, eat ice cream, and go sightseeing. Please create a five-day schedule for us to visit Paris. Incredible, so here we have a five-day schedule for my pretend family trip to Paris. Day one, arrival and introduction to Paris. Morning, arrive in Paris, check in your hotel, drop off your bags, afternoon, take a walk around the city, see some iconic Parisian landmarks, Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, etc. We have day two, we start in the Musée d'Orsay. Day three, we're visiting the Palace of Versailles. Day four in the evening, we're taking a cooking class at a local school and learning how to make some classic French dishes such as souffle, ratatouille, and creme brulee. This took a manner of seconds. This is so cool. Now I'm asking, please add specific locations to what was mentioned in the list with physical addresses. As you can see, day one, here are the places, and this is exactly where they're located. And let's say for some reason you're somebody who needs things to be tabular, we can ask ChatGPT to input this data in a tabular format. Day one, activities, location, and address. Awesome, so here we have the days, activities, locations, and addresses in a nice tabular format. So I hope you can use ChatGPT on your next trip. In this lesson, we're gonna dive into something I think is pretty dang cool with this tool. We're gonna create our own custom schedule tailored to who we are and the goals that we have in our weekly schedule. So let's hop into our first prompt. I'm gonna write, I'm a college student that wants to study, go to the gym, hang out with friends, and work part time. Please organize my schedule with specific times to do all my tasks. 
And just like that, we have our Monday through Friday schedule. And let's just run through what ChatGPT did on this first draft. So 7 a.m., wake up, have breakfast, get ready for the day. 8 o'clock, attend class. 12, have lunch. 1 o'clock, study for two hours. 3 p.m., go to the gym for an hour. 4.30, so it even budgeted time. If we go to the gym for an hour, that would be 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It budgeted a little bit of extra time for us to take a shower and get ready for work. Then it has us starting work at 5 o'clock, finishing work and having dinner at 9, spending some time with friends at uh, 10 o'clock for two hours, and going to bed at 12. So I can leave this as is or individually ask ChatGPT to change um, that I don't want to go to bed at midnight on Monday. Please adjust the calendar accordingly. And it will go in and it'll update that schedule. Now what I want to do is take this a step further with being more specific. I want to work from home on Monday and Tuesday, then work from the office on Wednesday and Thursday. Please update that in the schedule and add 20 minutes of commuting time as its own step to get to my office, then work, and a 20 minute step to leave my office on Thursday and Wednesday. Perfect, so it updated my schedule and it even left on days that I'm working from home to not have any commuting time. But the days that I am gonna go into the office, it added a 20 minute commute to the office, working there and having time to then commute home. So you can completely customize this. I can also add, let's say 30 minutes a day for meditating in the morning or the afternoon, or even saying that on every Monday, I wanna set aside time to create new social media content for projects. So this is a really cool tool to schedule and structure your weeks with ChatGPT. Congratulations, you made it to the end of this chapter. So we just covered a ton of information on synthesizing information, learning and researching in a much more quick, efficient and effective way using this incredible AI tool. Now what I want you to do is take all the information we learned in these lessons and choose your favorite lesson and either create your own schedule from scratch with your daily goals that you wanna hit or go in and prepare for a job interview, ask the right questions to grow your own business or even ask ChatGPT to give you the right questions to grow your own business. So take the time now to put one of these learning lessons to work and I'll see you in the next chapter. Welcome to this chapter and in this section, the goal is to learn from real world use cases between Benza and I. So in this section, we're not gonna be typing up new prompts. We're actually gonna be doing a little bit of a case study on past scenarios where we really used ChatGPT to speed up a workflow, to solve a problem, or to do something specific for a project. So with that said, let's hop into our first use case example where we reorganize a spreadsheet. So here we have a Google Sheet um, that I was actually using to create a purchasing list for one of my students wanting to build his own at-home production studio. And I kind of just went through this list and put out items kind of randomly as I was brainstorming initially. I'm like, okay, the student needs a camera, storage system, lenses, filters for the lenses, a microphone, um, cords, accessories, light stands, tripods, sandbags, power strips, everything. And I went through and I pulled Amazon links and then I put the price. Now, what I realized afterwards is that it would be a lot more beneficial if these were organized by the specific type of gear that they were. Uh, so what I actually did is I went over to ChatGPT and I copied this whole list just like this. I copied it and I pasted it into ChatGPT. And then I said to please reorganize these items by price. And what it did is it actually kept the proper format and it put it in descending order of the lowest price item at the top and the highest price item at the bottom with the total. Now, if I wanted to flip the order, I could then reiterate and ask it to put it in descending order versus the current order. But what I actually did is like, okay, great. Now group these by camera gear, lights, 
and sound equipment. And I was honestly curious if it was gonna be able to know what camera gear was if it didn't mention the words camera. So the black magic camera, because it says camera, okay, for the average person, that's pretty obvious. But it also picked up the lens, the tripod, and it did put iPad into this category, so I would, of course, fix that. But I was honestly impressed. And if we move down to lighting, it put the lights, a soft box is an attachment that you put on your light. It's a lighting accessory that changes the quality of the light. So it knew the word soft box and basically knew the context that, okay, soft box should go in a lighting category. Rim and fill light, it knew that industry term, RGB lights, wall mount lighting, sandbags. And so sandbags you use at the bottom of a light so that you put it on the tripod itself so that it doesn't fall over. So I was really surprised at the context that it picked up. And now here's the other thing too, it, it organized it into an equipment section. Now the mic, that says mic, so I think that's pretty obvious that that should go in the sound section. But this item is a cloud lifter, which is basically something that you plug in via an XLR cable to your microphone that boosts the signal of your mic. For whatever reason, from its database, it knew that that should go in the sound section. So that was really impressive to me as well. And for the items that it didn't know how to categorize, it created an other equipment category that I didn't initially ask it to create, but it did it on its own because it didn't have an area to put these. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I wanted to also test what its limitations were. So just out of my own curiosity, honestly. So I asked it, which of these items would you um, say are the least essential to purchase for my home studio? Because I really want to see what it would say. So it said, the decision of what equipment is essential for a home studio depends on your specific needs and goals. However, if you're looking for items that may be considered less essential or could be postponed for a later purchase, you might want to consider the following. It said the teleprompter, and it also said the pad for our mic stand, which is honestly a very secondary, non-important item. And then it said the, the basically the extension cords that we use to create three outlets out of one outlet. It's a bit of a technical thing for film. It said that that was secondary as well. So you don't need a teleprompter to shoot a video, but it is a nice to have. You don't need this pad for the microphone, but it's a nice to have. You don't need these cube taps for creating more outlets on set. So again, I was pretty damn impressed with its intelligence of not taking away the camera, not taking away the lenses, not taking away the tripods. It knew that those things were essential to making an at-home studio. So that was pretty impressive. I then went on, I said, okay, great. Now optimize this list for a Google spreadsheet and it put it back essentially in the same format here that I started with. So now I have everything organized by category and I could go in, highlight all of this, copy it, and then paste it into Google Sheets and then boom, we have what was here unorganized now in a nice list. But I also wanted to go further down this rabbit hole and see what else I could do in ChatGPT. So I was curious if it would be able to, let's say I made this list and I wanted to get two of one item instead of one. And I went, I said, okay, please 2X this specific item and put it in the table. And it went ahead and took this item and duplicated it and then updated the final price. So I thought that was pretty cool. Next, I said, now please create a subtotal row, a final total row, and add the cost of tax for purchasing in the state of California. And that tax amount is 7.25%. And here's what it actually did a great job of doing. It took all of our items, it made a subtotal row, it added 7.25% which is this line item, and then it adjusted the final total. And I was like, okay, great. Now I have a more accurate list than ever before of what the actual final cost is gonna be for this student that I was creating this list for to purchase this equipment. And then I said, okay, great. How can I bring the total cost down without losing any important items I need to film with? Again, testing the limitations of ChatGPT. And it said there are several ways to bring the cost down. Um, without losing any of the important items, here are some suggestions. So it said, look for used or refurbished. That's a good option. That may work for some scenarios, may not work for others. Prioritize essential equipment. I totally agree with that. Look for budget-friendly alternatives so you don't have to buy name brand stuff. 
and rent equipment and negotiate prices. So for this question, it didn't specifically address this, but it just gave me some overall tips and advice. So I hope this case study opens up your eyes to really some of the abilities and limitations of using ChatGPT for something like a Google spreadsheet or Excel document. Next, let's get to another real world example where I use ChatGPT to help me write a course description. And we've talked about priming earlier in the course of feeding it a specific set of data so that it learns what kind of style, syntax, language, and tone you wanna replicate. So let's hop into this example. So we have one of my past courses on Udemy and there's the description section for every single course. And I found a layout that works really well of starting with a question, telling people, okay, perfect. If these questions align with you, you found the right course. Here's what you're gonna learn by the end of the course, the different chapters with a paragraph that explains the chapter, followed by bullet points that just go into more granular detail about each chapter and that's kind of the formula. Oh, and then technically we talk about the biggest goal for you from the course um, and just a few other little tidbits about the information and details and specifics of the course. And because this is a very intensive process, this is a lot of copy and every other year and every other time that I've uh, created these, they've always been from scratch. Of course, I kind of copy and paste my template, but I'm, I'm rewriting the whole thing from scratch. There's no shortcut, even if I have a template that I've used before. So what I was curious of was how much can ChatGPT help me with this process? So as an exploration, here's what I did. I said, use the description for one of my past courses as a framework. In the upcoming prompts, I'd like for you to take the speaking style and layout of the example text and apply that to a new description that I need uh, you to generate for another course. Is that understood? ChatGPT, yes, understood. You'd like for me to keep the same style and layout of the given text for a course description. Now please provide me with the example course description and then the details of the new course that you'd like me to generate a description for. And then I said, here's the reference text for you to consider. And then I literally paste in the entire description from this course that we just looked at, where I did the hard work to create it from scratch. ChatGPT replied, sure, please let me know the details of the new course that you'd like for me to generate the description for. And honestly, this is where it gets a little bit crazy. I was honestly wanted to just test the limits of this tool. And I wanted to see, because I have this document that has all of my chapter and lesson titles for this course right here with a notes um, a column of what I need to know when I'm filming, but I wanted to prime ChatGPT with just lecture titles. So we have our section for this actual course that you're watching on ChatGPT, on learning and research, on mid-journey, on Dolly 2 and all the other elements of this course. So it just only has lesson titles. What it did was said, sure, I can create a course description for the new course in the style of the reference text that you provided. Here's the description. It went in and kept the same exact outline and actually did a phenomenal job of differentiating the chapter, what's gonna be in the chapter, and the overall layout of the exact course with honestly a not very um, practical set of base information or priming data. So I was a little bit floored and blown away by this output. I will say that there were a few mistakes for this mid-journey section. It said, in this chapter, you'll learn how to use ChatGPT for the mid-journey program. There was a lot of, well, I won't say a lot, but there was a decent amount of editing that I had to do to get this uh, complete and ready for actual view and for it to go live. The other thing is it stopped at seven because I believe it hit its limit on how much text it can output in one prompt. So I simply said, please continue um, number seven and the remaining descriptions. And it went ahead and did that perfectly. 
So let's go and see what other interaction that I had with it. So I said, please break part five into two different sections. One section focusing on mid-journey, reiterating, upscaling, and remixing, and the other section focusing on mid-journey and more unique ways to create and advance parameters. Don't include anything about ChatGPT because I was having a little bit of an issue there, or Dolly2 in these descriptions. There was a little bit of back and forth. It did exactly what I wanted of splitting it into two sections, but for whatever reason, it kept bringing up chat GPT. So this is not perfect, but I was honestly pretty blown away. I still had to do the final pass, the re-editing and the rewriting, but I can honestly say that because I've created a handful of different courses and done this process, it had to have cut the time needed on my end more than half. So in theory, I could create two course descriptions in the same amount of time by doing this process. So I hope that opens your mind on how you can prime chat GPT with past text from you or text from another source that you want to emulate. So in this lesson, I wanna talk about a recent time when I used ChatGPT to compare and contrast two similar Amazon items. And I was honestly personally a little bit interested in how it was able to pull data from Amazon and get the information. So here's actually what it said. As an AI language model, I don't have direct access to Amazon servers. However, I can use a web scraping technique to extract information from Amazon links. When a user provides an Amazon link, I can use a web scraping library or tool to fetch the HTML code for the Amazon page. From there, I can extract the information such as the product, name, price, description, and reviews by searching for specific HTML tags and attributes. So I thought that was pretty fascinating that, and I was a little bit, you know, I wanted to learn a little bit more on how that was actually happening. So just as a sidebar, I think that's a little bit uh, interesting. And now let's actually get into this example. So here's my initial prompt. Please compare and contrast these items so I can purchase the right tripod for my upcoming video shoot. So I paste it in the two options of two similar tripods at two similar price points and I wanted to see what kind of info I could get. So it says, these two items you provided are different types of tripods that can serve different purposes for video shoots. Here's a breakdown of the differences between them. It gave me kind of the dimensions, the weights, um, not too much information that I felt was super beneficial. So I went ahead and I said, okay, great. Please be more descriptive and put your answers in tabular format. And this was a lot more effective at giving me a one sheet that I could glance at and see, okay, well, there's a height difference, there's a weight capacity, stability, intended use, portability, compatibility, and price. And I was curious, honestly, to see what other descriptive columns it can add. So it went ahead and added, you know, things like the material that was used, the weight capacity, um, and a few other rows in this table. Then I got curious to see well, okay, what other kind of, you know, applications can I use this for? So I said, thanks for the answers. Now, please ignore all previous prompts in this conversation. I'm gonna share with you two new links for potential TVs that I wanna buy. Please compare and contrast the most essential differences, including the price, quality, reviews, specs, and other important factors into one table. Here are the two products that I'd like for you to compare. And it went ahead and it popped out okay for this TCL 55 inch with AirPlay and Google Assistant and this TCL 55 inch 4K, um, a similar product, but it went ahead and it gave me the exact breakdowns of all the different things that I would very likely be interested in knowing when I was making my purchasing decision. After that, I went ahead and said, okay, great, now condense all the information that you provided. So I essentially wanted to know, can it give me a summary of all this information into two sentences if I just wanted to get a quick answer and move on? And it went ahead and did that summary. Of course, this is a little bit more effective for making a buying decision, but I thought this was a really great real life example because you very well know you can have multiple tabs open 
you're looking for an online product, there's a lot that are similar, and sometimes it can be hard to make a decision. So now that you know that you can compare and contrast items on websites like Amazon, I hope that you can use this in your everyday life. Hello and welcome to this course on ChatGPT. In this series of videos, we're gonna be talking about ChatGPT and how coders can use it to augment software engineering, uh, the process of writing code, and just coming up with new technologies. We're really interested in seeing the new ways that we can use ChatGPT to kind of help us code and come up with new ideas. And so that's what we're gonna be exploring in this series of videos. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. We're already up on the OpenAI page. Um, this is the organization that's behind ChatGPT, which is a large language model. Um, on this page, you can basically read all about ChatGPT. And interestingly enough, one of the first examples they have here actually concerns coding. So they're talking about in this following example, ChatGPT asked the clarifying questions to debug code. So that's one of the things that we're probably gonna be touching on in this course uh, alongside code generation, algorithms, and creating documentation for written code. So ChatGPT, if you're not familiar with, um, you can kind of talk to this uh, language model AI in this sort of conversational manner and basically ask it questions and it'll respond to you and basically answer your question. Now, this isn't something that's like kind of groundbreaking in the sense that it's giving you an answer to a question you asked because that's kind of what the internet was for to begin with, right? But we're gonna see that ChatGPT actually responds in a way that's almost kind of dumbfoundingly like human. That's like, it's so interesting how it can respond with such eloquent sentences and and we're going to see that the conversational format that ChatGPT kind of engages in with us kind of adds to the experience. And it really helps us kind of go one step further and continue asking questions based off previous questions that have kind of given it context. And down here, we can also do a little bit of reading about how exactly the model was trained. And um, here they talk about reinforcement learning from human feedback. So basically, um, they took a lot of data on the internet and basically fed it into this learning network that was able to pick up on speech patterns. And now it's basically this model that's able to come up with very likely next words based on the things it's already seen and give you responses that kind of make sense. And one thing that's worth noting is that ChatGPT uh, using this human feedback component actually does kind of restrict certain queries. So it's basically able to look at certain queries and choose not to respond to them. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using this. Um, there is an organization behind this and um, there's certain questions and answers that maybe they don't want to be explored for reasons that could be maybe they're too offensive or maybe something not kind of productive to explore. But in this course, we're going to be talking about coding applications. So that's probably not something that's going to be um, hindering our progress. So just to get started, let's actually ask ChatGPT what it thinks it is. So let's just create this little query here and see what exactly it is. Because ChatGPT is um, something that originates from the coding world. So maybe we could even ask it like if it knows how to implement itself. That'd be a pretty interesting to ask. But yeah, as it says, we see that ChatGPT uh, is telling us that it's a language model developed by OpenAI. It was trained on a large data set of text to generate human-like responses to a wide range of questions and prompts. So yeah, it's giving us this very conversational flow and we can ask it, just because we're curious, do you know how one would go about implementing? Let's see that. Would require expertise in natural language processing. This is another field in the realm of computer science. Um, there are many strategies and techniques to go about doing that, but um, yeah, and if you, and honestly, another really useful resource about ChatGPT is that it's really helpful to help you learn stuff, right? So you can ask it like, oh, how do I go about learning about X or Y? And it's going to give you sort of step-by-step -step detailed explanations on how you could get that done. So yeah, this process is being described right now, it collects a large data set of text data, and that's basically in the case of ChatGPT, um, lots of internet data. And then it's pre-processed. This is just um, like a machine learning technique that allows this stuff to be processed. And then it's trained, fine-tuned, and deployed. And 
yeah, so we can see that it is able to report how one would go about implementing something just like itself, which is really cool, but this kind of goes way beyond the scope of this course. And if you're interested in those kind of things, there's lots of actually um, good resources. So, I mean, we could even ask it, what are some ways I can learn about the theory behind the natural language processing and machine learning necessary to implement this. And this is, a, this is an interesting footnote here that um, it's a complex and time consuming process. So yeah, there, this is a really big project. So um, it's probably worth noting that one person probably couldn't go out and just make this because if they felt like it. But yeah, um, this is a pretty generic response, just online courses and books. But yeah, um, in, this, in this course, we're definitely gonna be talking about ways that um, even intro level coders can kind of get into this and use ChatGPT to your advantage, whether that be learning how to code, learning how to program, or if you're an existing coder or software engineer, um, how ChatGPT can kind of augment your learning and even help you create documentation for your code. Sometimes it's the case where we end up writing really complex systems and maybe we don't even understand them. So it could be useful for this model, which is trained on code as well. It can actually generate code as we'll see in a future course. Um, it, it could even generate documentation for pieces of code that we may not even understand if it's really complex as code gets. So yeah, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next videos where we're gonna further explore the uses of chat GPT in algorithms, debugging, documentation. So interestingly enough, just as an example that chat GPT isn't always gonna give you the most accurate information, I was actually able to get it to report something that is seemingly inconsistent with what we just saw on the homepage of ChatGPT, which is that under their methods section, OpenAI has written that they train the model using reinforcement learning from human feedback or RLHF. So I am trying to fact check that with ChatGPT itself and queried if he was trained or it was trained using RLHF. And it responds to saying it's not familiar with that term. So then I clarify and sure enough, it reports a no. So dangerous sometimes it can sort of lie to you but it's never in its intention to lie to you it's just because the data that it was trained on just did not agree with maybe something that was seemingly updated in the future so this probably may have come after or maybe wasn't included in its training data which is a pretty big limitation but for a lot of the use cases we're going to be exploring in this course it's again not going to be that much of a hindrance in this video, we're going to be exploring the role of ChatGPT in code generation. So let's think about how we could use ChatGPT for our benefit when it comes to generating code. Because sometimes, as coders, we find ourselves writing code that's kind of redundant, repetitive, and it's almost what we call boilerplate code, which is um, basically reoccurring and it's kind of a structure that's going to always be there. It doesn't really take brain power to come up per with, per se but it definitely helps to kind of automate this process. And that's definitely something that ChatGPT can help with. So let's ask uh, ChatGPT to write a simple website for us. Do you write a simple website for me? Now, this could be a pretty loaded question. So it may be the case that it will ask me to sort of clarify the constraints of this website. So what exactly do I want? What kind of features do I want to see on this website? So that's kind of exactly what it's coming up with. It's not able to create one from scratch. Um, you need to decide on the purpose and content of your website. So now it's actually kind of giving me a, sort of this way that I can go about building a website and it's almost kind of dodging the question, but we'll see that if I actually kind of reword this question, I can actually get it to report to me what I want. And one thing that's worth noting is that sometimes you do need a little bit of domain knowledge to know what to ask for. So that's what I'm gonna to try to give to you in this course. So um, one thing that's really big um, when it comes to website building is that there is um, these files called HTML files, which can actually author very simple websites. So maybe I want a simple portfolio website written in HTML. So if we say something like that, ChatGPT sure enough says, sure, I'd be happy to provide you with that. So this is a basic example. You can modify it to fit your specific needs. So if we go ahead and look in here, 
we see that it's actually writing us code right now. And one thing that's a little weird is that it's saying that, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, code snippets, but typically when it shows up in this block of text with this different font, um, this is what's known as a coding snippet and in certain types of, types of languages that are used to express text, they kind of stylize it in this way. And it's kind of weird that up here it says PHP, which happens to be another language that is um, not what's shown here. This is clearly an HTML file. Um, so that is what we're going to be using as our base for our website. Now, it's not going to be one that's deployed at some domain name or URL, so we're not going to be able to access it on the internet. But sure enough, it is a layout for a website. So it's telling us exactly what it does too. So it's saying it includes the basic structure of a portfolio website and the things that it's included for us for free almost. So we can go ahead and copy this code, come over to Visual Studio Code. Now I've just created a folder on my desktop that basically is just gonna hold a file called uh, website.html. It doesn't have to be called website.html, that's just what I'm calling it, but it does have to have this file extension HTML because that kind of hints at your operating system that it's um, something you wanna open with your web browser. So if we go ahead and do that and we paste that in and save it uh, just using control S as a shortcut. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and open that in my file explorer and I'm going to open it. So as you can see, that kind of went to Google Chrome, which is my web browser of choice. And now we can see that this local file is being referenced and it's been opened. And sure enough, that's a website right there for us. And if we want to go through and substitute out these things, my portfolio, my name, um, this is sort of just like a template for a website. It's kind of like the bone structure of a template or of a website, if you will. So if I go ahead and change that and refresh the file, you'll see that my name actually appears there. So if you didn't know anything about this before, this is like a really useful tool for just coming up with a basic website. And there are ways to make it look better, which is uh, CSS. So, and it actually mentions that right here. Keep in mind that you'll need to create a style.css file to add styles to your website and make it look visually appealing. So that's something you could continue probing ChatGPT about and asking it to generate styles for you. Now, this is a pretty bare bones thing. So we're gonna actually try to take it a step ahead and try to get it to use a framework that's known as React for building a website. So how would I go about creating a web app using the React framework? So let's see what it tells us here. Because these problems are actually well-documented online. So this is a framework that coders can use. It's essentially coders building on top of other people's code. So Facebook actually created this framework called React and uh, people have used it to help create their web apps. And here it's saying creating web, web app using the React framework involves a few steps. And it's basically telling us how we can do that. We're gonna need to install node.js, um, the node package manager. This is basically the runtime for the JavaScript um, and then this is a way to install packages or basically sort of components or modules that you'll need to install into your project. So there's tons of instructions online about how you could go about doing that, or you could even ask ChatGPT how you could do that. Luckily for me, I already actually had these things installed, so I'm not actually gonna go ahead and do that. So let's instead ask, how could I create a React app? So to create a new React app, you can use a command line tool called Create React App, which is the official way to start a new single page React application. That's exactly what I was looking for actually. So it actually is able to tell me this based off of the internet data that it synthesized. And here it's actually giving me the exact answers that I, or sort of steps that I need to follow to do that. Now, one thing that's worth noting is maybe in the earlier question that I asked about how you could write a simple website for me, um, basically it doesn't know what our specs are, right? Like ChatGPT isn't sort of this all powerful being in the sense that it's going to be able to be an endless pool of creativity. Like you as a human, this unique human and technology interaction is something that together can be very fruitful. It's not like a magic spell that we can suddenly just use and it'll be the cure all to everything. Right? So there's, it does require a little bit of domain knowledge to know what to ask it. But once you know that, um, lots of doors are open, so to speak. 
So once you have this installed after you have the node package manager, we can actually run this command. Um, interesting that these code snippets are labeled Lua as well, because that's a scripting language that is definitely not being used here. Um, quite the opposite of that, we're actually going to be running this command, npx create react app, my app in the command line. So if you go ahead and run that, it's going to run this command on an app called my app. And it's also going to create a directory for us. And as we can see here, a directory has been created. And we can look inside that a file has been created. Um, this progress bar that shows here is also representative of that app kind of being generated as we speak. And yeah, so we're just going to give this a second to run. But in the meantime, we can continue kind of looking through what ChatGPT has prescribed for us. So we can see here that once you do generate this, we gonna, we're going to want to change directory. That's what the CD stands for. So it's pretty interesting. Here it actually has the correct um, sort of code snippet uh, detail here. So it's actually Bash. Uh, I'm not using Bash because I'm on Windows, but I'm um, using uh, the PowerShell window here. You can see PS, which is the Windows equivalent of the command line, essentially. And basically, we're going to change directories into this. Directory is just another computer science way of saying file. So once we're in that directory, uh, we can basically run this npm start. Again, this code snippet is kind of off. SQL or standard query language is a way, a sort of language that we can use to manipulate databases or interact with databases. And that's clearly not what's supposed to be here. So um, sometimes you've got to be a little above chat GPT in the sense that you kind of have to know what it's trying to say, because here this is definitely not a SQL command. But we're going to go ahead and run these commands anyways. Now in the terminal, we can see that our React app is successfully initialized. And we can see this directory is now very populated with a lot of different folders and things, goodies to see here. So right now we're not in that directory. So let's go into my app and then run npm start. And that's going to boot up the web service for or the web app. And here we can see that, wow, lo and behold, we've got a simple React app going for us. And there's a hyperlink to the React page where you can learn more about how one would go about using React, which is a very popular JavaScript framework. Um, and yeah, so let's see. This website is probably not what we want. So let's actually use React in the way that it was kind of created for, which is that this sort of web app can update its uh, DOM or document object model in response to changes in state. So could you help me add a button that shows the number of times it's pressed to my React app? So let's see if ChatGPT can come up with something like that. Like we want a feature for a website, like we know what we want, but we're gonna ask ChatGPT to help us out. And sure enough, it does say it'd be happy to help us. So let's open the React app's app.js file and import the use state hook from the React library. So that's pretty straightforward. If we go ahead and copy that code, it's got a home write up. So it was basically saying to go into app.js here and it's going to ask us to add an extra import statement. And that's going to be right there. And then we're going to want to declare a state variable to keep track of the number of times the button has been pressed. So that's going to actually go right here. And then we're going to want to add this to our website. So here we can see that the file has a sort of very similar structure to um, what we saw in our HTML. And sure enough, that's actually what this is, but we're going to go ahead and add some extra stuff in here. So we're going to copy paste that div, which is an HTML element. And if we go back to our page, we can actually see that there's a button here and this text that says you've pressed the button zero times. So this use state or this use state um, hook from React that we imported up here is actually going to give us these two constants or count and set count. This is going to be a function that updates the value and this is going to be the value itself. But every time we press that button on the click event, it's going to basically set count 
to increment the current value of count. So if we actually click this button, whoa, we can see that that counter up here is actually going up every single time that I click on it. I don't know if you can hear me clicking, but I am, I'm not lying to you. But yeah, so we can see that this, this is pretty useful. This is like, we just came up with some random idea and we wanted it to show up on our website. And sure enough, it did. So the reason that we're on React, by the way, is that earlier we were just given some bare bones HTML. And this HTML, like I said earlier, is kind of like the bones or skeleton of your website. Um, the CSS, as they said, is kind of like the styling. So how do I make it look beautiful, right? And then finally, the JavaScript is like the brains behind it. So it's what actually makes it move and be interactive, things like that. So um, this stuff is all in JavaScript. It's just returning HTML elements with a little bit of extra functionality. So hmm, the only thing now we're missing other than HTML and JavaScript is actually CSS. Um, so let's ask ChatGPT could you make that button uh, blue? Let's, let's just say blue. Sure, you can easily change the button color by adding a style attribute to the button element. Here's an example of how you can make that button. So it's gonna presumably give me some code. Um, so this is exactly what we've got before. We've got this app function. This is something we've already kind of brought into our app. And here we can see the difference in what they told us before, right? So. Earlier, we had a button element that specified an on-click behavior. Here, it has an on-click behavior in addition to a style. So if we actually copy that and bring that into our code, so let's actually make that look just as it looked on its response, even though you don't really have to. Um, oops, I think I am missing a curly brace there. I, I didn't copy a curly brace here, that was on me. But um, if we had copied that correctly, that's what it would have looked like. And if I go over here, oh, sure enough, my button is now blue. Maybe not the prettiest blue you've ever seen, but um, I'm sure you could continue the conversation with ChatGPT to try to get it to more of what you want. So maybe we could even ask, could you make that a lighter blue? So like, yeah, it's, it's really just treat ChatGPT as this sort of conversational format and um, it, it'll kind of like evolve throughout the conversation because it accumulates more and more context about what you want. So on the left here, you can actually see that you can start new chats and it doesn't actually preserve memory between chats. So if you want it to kind of hold context on what you told it before, make sure it's in the same chat. So here, let's see what, this is kind of interesting, right? Like let's see what chat GPT thinks is a lighter blue. So if we go ahead and copy that, we can see what it actually thinks, like how much, it's, it's curious, right? Like how much lighter is it going to be? So if we bring that in here, I accidentally removed one of those angle brackets there. But if we save that and come back here, oh, hmm. It, uh, honestly, in my opinion, that's a little more purple, but um, I'll leave that up to you to decide. But uh, yeah, so you can kind of go back and forth. Like once you've got an idea, right? You just ask ChatGPT how you're gonna do that. And it's gonna give you an answer. Maybe not the best answer as we saw here, I mean, I'm sure that's a little blue in some ways, but basically what we got from that is that we can actually use a value that's not the string representation of the color blue itself, right? So we can actually use this sort of hexadecimal specification for a color. If you're familiar with um, the computer representation of color, there's RGB, red, green, and blue, and the hexadecimal digits specify the intensity of each of those color channels. So one thing we can take away with that is we can kind of tinker around with that color and tweak it until we get a color that we want or we can use some online resource. Um, and yeah, this, this, this kind of shows us the power of um, ChatGPT to generate code for us. Now, one more thing that we do kind of want to explore is, well, can it also write code to play a game? So let's say like, could you write code that plays a game of, let's say rock, paper, scissors. It's able to do that, sure enough. It's gonna give us some code generation here. Um, here is a JavaScript file that gives us a function of how we could do this. And so one thing that's kind of cool about browsers is that we can actually go into our console and start writing JavaScript and actually executing it in here too. So if I actually go ahead and 
copy this code once it's done generating and pull it into the console here, it's actually its own runtime. So if we go ahead and copy that function in, we've declared this function. So now we're gonna actually call that function like so. And sure enough, we've got this prompt up here saying choose rock, paper, scissors. Let's go ahead and say rock. And we won somehow for the rules of rock, paper, scissors, rock, beat, scissors, so we won. That's kind of cool. Let's see if I can try to get a tie or a loss or something. Um, let's, let's just go ahead with paper. Oh, I want to get, maybe I'm just too good at this game, but yeah. So we can see it even goes ahead and describes what it's doing in here. So if you're not familiar with coding, um, it explains exactly what it just wrote in terms of code and how it used the math random function to select a choice for the computer, right? Um, we can see here that the computer choice is being picked from this math function that's generating a random number multiplying it by three and then flooring it to get one of the indices of this options array. Um, if that sounds, if, if you're unfamiliar with any of the terms I just said, those are some pretty basic computer science principles and you could ask ChatGPT about any of those and I'm sure it'll give you a great description of what those are, how they kind of interact in the code. You can go down the rabbit hole, right? Like you can ask it to clarify what it meant by a certain thing. And now this is of course not an introductory computer science, but how we can use ChatGPT to learn how to code, to write code for us, to document our code, generate code, all those sort of things. And we could even go one step further and maybe even ask it to bring this game into our React app. Could you bring that rock, paper, scissors game into my React app? And let's see if it's able to do that. That seems like a pretty challenging thing. I'd be pretty surprised if it could do it, but sure enough, it does say it's able to do it. So there really is no limit to what you can ask this thing if it's probably above some sort of confidence threshold that it can answer your question. It's gonna go ahead and tell you, right, that it's able to do it. So maybe blindly we'll just go ahead and copy this in for fun just to see if it'll actually work or not. But yeah, this is kind of just experimenting at this point to see if this will actually work. So we're, yeah, so you can see there's a lot of striking similarities between the code that we had just written or just been generated for this game and right here, except now it's being declared as the function under play game. And yeah, so we're, we're basically just porting it all into our React app. So we're gonna declare this function here in addition to the other functions we had declared. And then we're gonna just copy this whole div in as well. So there is a little knowledge required to know like what exactly you should be copying in here, but um. Let's go ahead and remove that button counter that we just had, as well as the React app intro stuff. Because we don't really actually care about that. We just want a rock, paper, scissors. And whoa, <laughs> that actually works. So we now have a rock, paper, scissors website. Choose your weapon, interesting choice of word there. Um, let's go ahead and say rock. You chose rock, the computer chose rock, it's a tie, paper. You chose paper, the computer chose rock, you win. Well, wow. okay, I guess this game really doesn't want me to lose, but or the computer is just going really easy on me today. But as you can see, as long as you have an idea, ChatGPT can make it come true. And that's a really beautiful thing about using this, right? Like, honestly, this is pretty mind blowing, even to someone in the computer science field. Um, so yeah, as long as you have an idea of what you want and you have a little bit of base knowledge about sort of coding, which ChatGPT can help you get to, um, it, it's really fascinating the amount of things that ChatGPT can do in a coding perspective. In the next video, we're going to be talking about algorithms and how we can use ChatGPT in that realm. In this video, we're going to be exploring how we can use ChatGPT in algorithms. Um, so let's just go ahead and start with a simple example of prime numbers. So, hey ChatGPT, could you write me a Python script slash algorithm to generate all the prime numbers up until a given number x. So hopefully it creates some sort of definition for a function in Python that takes in x as an argument. And sure enough, that's exactly what it does. It labels this as a Python script. Um, it's a function called generate primes, takes in x as an argument. And look at that, it's even documenting the code that it's writing. Um, so this is going to be an algorithm that uses the sieve of Eratosthenes. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but um, 
error toss the nearest algorithm to generate all prime numbers up until a given number x. So we can kind of test that for correctness in the sense of kind of just running it. Um, maybe we're not going to be able to like completely fact check it because as a famous computer scientist once said, um, like test cases or kind of checking certain inputs and certain outputs can only show the presence of bugs, but does not prove the non-existence of bugs or like the absence of bugs. So I don't know if this is completely robust, but we can try to check it with some numbers and see if it works, right? So this is Python code. Let's actually go over to VS code. And in my terminal, I actually have a, um, I have Python installed on my system. So let's actually go and run Python. So here I'm actually in the Python terminal. Uh, let me actually zoom in a bit. So this is a Python terminal just by running Python on the command line because I have it installed. And I can actually go ahead and type in uh, this code. So if we type that in, paste that in, um, we're actually gonna see that there's an unexpected indent. So let's actually go ahead and create a file for this instead, just to make things easier. So let's call this primes.py. And if I copy that code, this is the function declaration. So like they said down here, there's an example usage of the function to generate all the prime numbers up until 20. So it's definitely gonna consist of a function call to generate primes 20 and then it prints the output. And sure enough, that does make a lot of sense, right? These are the prime numbers up until 20. Um, so if we actually go ahead and run that, um, if I quit my terminal and then run that file using pi.primes, we can see that that's actually the output, right? Um, we can try it for a larger number. Let's go crazy and uh, put a million and hopefully that doesn't take too long. But yeah, that's a lot of output right there. I guess my computer is pretty fast at that, um, as computers are. Um, so yeah, that, that's, a lot, that's a lot of numbers. I'm, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head if these are the prime numbers, but um, I think this algorithm is pretty true and tested. And that's one thing that um, ChatGPT is gonna be good at, right? Is if you ask it for a well-established algorithm, that's gonna be something that's very well documented and proven, and that's gonna be code that's already out there. So um, this is stuff that it's probably not gonna be getting wrong because there is a good robust explanation for how this stuff works. And there's actually other algorithms used for generating primes. So it's interesting that ChatGPT happened to give me one that was quite well known and efficient. Could you use an algorithm other than the sieve of Eratosthenes? If I can spell that correctly, hopefully I did. And certainly here's an implementation of the trial division algorithm to generate all prime numbers up until a given number X in Python. So this is going to be a completely different function definition, but it's probably gonna give us the same output in terms of generating all the primes up until a given number. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and give that a try too while, while we're at it. So up here, we've got the defini definition for the sieve of Eratosthenes. Um, let's prefix this function call as sieve so that we don't call it. Um, so here, we're gonna be calling our, our new generate primes function. And if we call it with 20, it should give us the same output, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. So if I go ahead and run that, sure enough, yep, that's exactly what it's giving us. So an interesting thing about uh, algorithms, if you're not familiar with computer science and the study of sort of writing code and these algorithms in the first place, is that they have um, ways to be measured. Um, so those two things are space and time complexity. So Let's actually ask, so this is actually a footnote here that they include. Note that the trial division algorithm is less efficient than the sieve for generating prime numbers, especially for large values of X. So let's actually go ahead and try that out, right? Cause like earlier we went ahead and ran a million on the sieve version of this function. So let's try to run that with generate primes. And oh, you can see that that's taking a little longer to come out, right? Um, so it's, it's giving us the same answer, surely. However, you can see that my computer did actually stall up for like a second or two. So let's actually ask GPT why that is. And the way you would phrase that is, well, you could probably ask why is one slower? So that would be a sort of naive question. But if you're familiar with the theory behind algorithms, you could ask it, what are the space, what are the time complexities of both of these algorithms? So let's see if you can tell us that. Time complexity of the sieve of Eratosthenes algorithm to generate all of the prime numbers up to a given number x is big O of 
x times log to the log of the log of x in the worst case scenario. So if you don't understand what this means, the big O notation is a way of describing the runtime complexity of uh, algorithms. And there's a lot of sort of understanding that needs to be done there. But we see here that the trial division algorithm has a complexity of O of x to the power of 1.5 in the worst case. And that's considerably worse, right? So if you think about the graphs of both of these, right? So if you kind of view a graph with um, having function as a function of the size of your input and the number of time that it takes for the algorithm to complete, this one is going to grow substantially slower than this one, right? So this one's gonna blow up. So as your X increases, the amount of time that it takes for the algorithm to complete is going to sort of skyrocket because it's like exponential, right? It's to the power of something. So yeah, we can see like why that is, like why did one take longer than the other. If you wanna know more about this, we can probably continue the conversation with ChatGPT and just continue asking questions, right? Like this stuff is gonna work super well if you're like curious about learning and just know what to ask. So there's another component of measuring algorithms, which is space complexity. So what is what are the space complexities of both of these algorithms? So let's see if it can tell us that too, right? So does it really understand what's going on? Does it like actually comprehend? Not so much, but it does, it is able to generate likely sequences of words that kind of make sense in the given context. So space complexity of the sieve is O of X. Um, the reason for that is uh, we actually go ahead and create an entire array, um, one for each of the numbers, right? So that's why that is O of X. Um, yeah, so we create a Boolean array and the space complexity of the trial division is O of one because we're not actually storing, we're not actually creating any auxiliary structures to help us, right? We're just, the only space that we're creating is to store the output itself. So that's kind of the trade-off that we've got going here. The sieve does have some space involved, but it runs much faster. Whereas the trial division one has uh, no extra space, though it does have um, a much, much worse runtime as we get to higher, um, bigger sized outputs or inputs. So yeah, this is pretty interesting that it's able to come up with all this for us and even sort of tell us how they perform in terms of space and time. So if we actually go over to this uh, very popular website called Leak Code, we can actually try to see if ChatGPT can solve one of these questions. So let's actually bring this over to over here and we can see let me zoom in on this for you so this happens to be the daily question of the day so leak code is um, a very popular website that's used for software engineers preparing for their interviews and basically they're going to ask you this sort of not really brain teaser but like sometimes they're brain teasers but they're basically just questions that basically ask you to implement a solution to in uh, code of your or in the language of your choice right so this question right here is called single element in a sorted array. Uh, you're given a sorted array, so basically a sequence of elements, and it's consisting only of integers, so whole numbers, and every element appears exactly twice, except for one element which appears exactly once. And we're gonna want to return the single element that appears only once. And our solution must run in O of log n time and O of one space. So this, off the top of my head, sounds like a binary search problem due to the fact that it's sorted so if you're familiar with that at all, um, that's that would explain the log n runtime. So basically it's gonna be looking like halfway through, checking if it's less than a right, and kind of probing for that, right? So if we go ahead and maybe let, let's actually see if it can read. Could you could you solve the problem prescribed in the following link? Here's a solution to the problem single element in a sorted array from leak code. So it's right now it actually went into that link that I sent it and it's reading out the problem and the examples and hopefully it's going to give us a correct solution. And the reason why this is going to be pretty cool is because um, LeetCode actually has a, a grader. So we're going to be able to test our solution against um, a, a suite of tests that will verify its robustness as a solution and see if it also meets this um, runtime requirement which is that it must run in O of log n time. So in computer science, you can write all types of code to solve the same problem. But as we saw before, 
in the case of generating all the primes up to a certain number, it's often the case where one algorithm might be better than another in terms of the space-time trade-off. So if we go ahead and look over here, once again, the code snippet has been annotated by the incorrect language. We are, this is not a SQL script uh, by any stretch, not even syntactically. But if we go ahead and copy that code, we can actually bring that into here. Um, one thing I will note, though, is that it actually deleted the, the class declaration for solution, which we actually do need. And it also got rid of something here, which we do need. So if we go ahead and patch that up real quick and we run that, let's see if it actually runs, um, passes the, the test cases. And uh, Python is indentation sensitive, so let's go ahead and indent that as well. And sure enough, it accepts, which is pretty awesome. Now, one thing I will warn against is that there's probably some solutions in here that it could have very easily just pulled straight from. Um, however, this is locked behind a paywall, I believe. So yeah, it definitely didn't look there. So we can see that it's accepted. The, this is only on two very small test cases though. So let's go ahead and submit that. That's gonna run against many, many more tests. So if it actually passes this, we'll know it's actually good to go. And that's so cool, right? It actually works. So yeah, and it even gives us an explanation for what's going on here. Um, it gives us the time complexity, it gives us the space complexity. I almost kind of wonder if the reason it did that is because I asked about that for an earlier question, which would be really cool. Um, so yeah, we can see that that actually just works. But what if we wanted it to be in Java? Could you give me Java code instead, right? So that's, that's one thing that could be super cool um, for sort of applications of chat GPT is you could have written code in one language and maybe you want it to be in another language because of portability reasons or whatever reason that you may want. And if you ask chat GPT to like kind of generate the same code for that problem spec in a different language, it's probably able to do that. And let's actually verify if it did it correctly. Once again, it incorrectly annotated the type or the, the code block here. But um, as long as you are familiar with coding languages, in fact, let's actually, let's actually run an experiment on that. I mean, it, it, it's referencing this as Java code, but in case you really didn't know, um, you could probably try copying this code and then asking it, what language is this written in? And it should probably say Java, because I mean, that's what it looks like, right? But without further ado, let's just copy that straight into Java, the Java um, code pen here. And let's submit that, see if it works. Sure enough, it is a correct solution once again. So that's really cool, right? Like you can translate between the two languages here, um, more or less using the same algorithm here. But yeah, that just really shows the power of ChatGPT in algorithms. And look forward to seeing you in the next video about debugging. And this video, we're gonna be talking about how we can use ChatGPT for debugging. Now, let's just go ahead and ask ChatGPT to create something for us. And then we're gonna intentionally mess it up just to kind of simulate what it would have been like if we had written something ourselves that was maybe incorrect or missing a crucial line of code or a piece of logic that we just, because we're humans, we're subject to mistakes. Um, just maybe we just forgot about something, right? So let's see if ChatGPT can actually help us with the debugging process and um, kind of reading through our code with knowledge of the problem spec and then just trying to figure out what could have possibly went wrong. So first, let's ask it an interesting question. Let's see if, could you, generates the Mandelbrot set, or rather, could you generate a visualization of the Mandelbrot set in Python? Now, this is, um, so the, if you don't know, the Mandelbrot set is a, a, a fractal, which is basically when viewed, it's like infinite complexity as you continue to zoom in and zoom in. And it's basically a mathematical function and yeah, so it's able to do that. So if we go ahead and copy the code here, this is some beautiful code right here. It's literally telling us, it's giving us comments for everything and telling us what each and every line of code is doing. But yeah, let's go ahead and create a file for that real quick. So manabro.py and, oh, I think I stole it when it was not done generating stuff. So let's go ahead and wait for that to, to finish writing. So now it's gonna go ahead and tell us what's going on generates a square image of the set with 500 by 500 pixels. So if we go and take that and we run it, let's see what it gives us without like kind of messing with anything. So we actually know what we're working with here. Well, that looks really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the Mandelbrot set. 
I can go ahead and zoom in here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's not really infinitely detailed as I have not made the size too large, but that's something I can tweak here. Let's see if we can kind of mess with this thing, right? So this is like a very crucial part of the math here. So if I, let's say mess with this, let's say one, I'm, I'm interested in what this will look like. Probably wrong. Yeah, so <laughs> that looks very strange. And that's definitely not what we expected. Let's, let's mess it up even more. So if we do that, this will definitely, oh yeah, it, we've, we've completely destroyed it. So let's, let's ask it. This is my code for displaying the Mandelbrot set. What is wrong with it? And then let's go ahead and copy that in here. Your code looks mostly correct, but there is a small issue with the formula you use to calculate the iterative sequence for each point. The Mandelbrot set is defined as a set of complex numbers C, first the sequence Z times N plus one is equivalent to Z of N to the power of two, plus C does not diverge. So this is basically just the math behind this really beautiful fractal. But um, yeah, it, it's able to point out exactly. So like it's saying you've modified the formula to be this instead, which changes the nature of the set being generated. So if we go ahead and fix that real quick, it should give us the right answer again. And that's, that's really funny because it almost knows exactly what we did. We've modified the formula. That's, that's a funny way of wording it. But yeah, we can see that it's once again giving us the code. Pretty much the same thing as what it gave before. I don't see any really big changes here. But yeah, uh, we can see that the, the two numbers we had modified, this became 1.5, this became 1, I believe. Um, those, are, those are back to normal, right? And... That's funny that's able to kind of just pick out on exactly what was wrong because it knew what was right. Let's actually recall from a previous lesson this lead code problem, right? So what if we tinker with some of these things here, right? Um, and just, just, to, just to prove the point, let's actually... This, this is a different um, chat window from the other chat that we had where we gave them the lead code link. So let's say I have the following sequence, or the following problem. Statement, and paste that in. My solution is not working, why? And then let's go ahead and paste in a modified version where we kind of screw up the binary search. Add a one here, let's um, put a two here, and let's maybe even misspelled, misspell right here to become light, right? And let's see if it's able to pick out some of these issues. So clearly, first of all, there's a big issue in the logic, like it shouldn't even be correct. And secondly, there's a syntax error, which doesn't even allow it to compile correctly because light has never been declared as a variable in this, in this function. So the, the issue in your solution is with the calculation of the middle index mid. So that is, that's perfectly fine. So let's see here. The things we ended up changing is this mod function here. And let's see what they give us. Yep, they've changed our mod right back to two. You should be divided by two to get to the middle index. Change the calculation of mid and allow your solution to work instead. Yeah, so he's also made, or sorry, ChatGPT has made a few other modifications to the code, including the check for mid mod three equals zero to mid mod two equals zero, as well as a typo. So it's talking about literally everything that it's fixed for us. And if we go ahead and paste that in, I'm, I don't doubt that this is pretty much what we had had before, but yeah, nonetheless, it's a correct solution now. And yeah, that works, perfect. It knew, it knew exactly what we had fixed, even though this is a different context from the conversation that we had in the previous lesson. So it actually remembers those things, which is really interesting. Maybe we could even go back even further to a previous time where we talked about primes, right? So what if, what if we say, let, 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 let's, so, so remember the sieve of Eratosthenes needs to, needs to have a certain range of numbers that it goes through, right? So let's start it at five and then let's have it go up until not the square root of X, but two, like a square root of X, right? So let's see, why is my algorithm to generate primes slow and incorrect? 
Because now not only are we not going up onto a square root factor of our input number x, but now we're going to a power of it. And then we're also messing with the starting number. So this is literally not even going to find the factors um, 2, 3, 4 for numbers, which is going to be extremely problematic, right? So let's see if it's able to pick out what's wrong with that after I change it. It's incorrect because the range in the outer loop should be 2 to the square root of x, not 5 to the square of x. Dang. This is really good at this is this is this chat GPT thing is really something else. It's yeah, so I mean if you're implementing some well known algorithm and you just don't know what's wrong and you're getting some like incorrect input, this thing is insane. Like it can really just pick out the flaws with your algorithm and give you the corrections that you need to make, quite simply. So yeah, and it even explains why, right? It says the reason why this algorithm is efficient is because you only need to check up to the square root of x, which this, this is a very big um, component of the really fast runtime that this algorithm has. So if we iterate more, right, up until the square of x, that's just wasting a lot of compute and giving us an incorrect answer. So yeah, it, it's telling us exactly what's wrong. So this is really powerful. And if you know what you're doing, like once you've gone to this point as a coder, um, where you're, you're able to write your own code, ChatGPT can be a really useful tool for kind of understanding what you may be doing wrong, as long as you're able to provide the problem statement, right? So the first and foremost important thing is to tell them what your goal is, right? So in the same way that for code generation, you have an idea of what, what kind of code you want generated in the first place, here with debugging, you need to tell ChatGPT what it is that you want your program to accomplish in the first place so that it can help you generate the correct behavior, right? So here I told it I was trying to generate primes. So that's how it knew what it needed to fix. Hopefully this is helpful for you to understand how ChatGPT can help you debug. And I'll see you in the next video talking about documentation. Now, one thing that's very commonly said in computer science is that code, or rather software engineering, is that code is much more often read than it is written. And we've already talked about how useful ChatGPT can be in the generation and slash writing of code, but it's just as important for you to be able to tell people what that code is doing. And that's the primary purpose of documentation. Because at the end of the day, we still have software engineers running around, writing code for unique business um, use cases. And sometimes that's just something we gotta leave to the humans, right? So rest assured, um, all the coding jobs are probably not gonna go away because there's definitely things that we can do as humans that ChatGPT cannot, though we can use it as a tool to augment software engineering and coding and all things like that. But in any case, let's see what ChatGPT can do for us in terms of documentation. In previous lessons, we actually saw that um, it was able to give us some very well-documented code, right? So it's in this um, sieve of Eratosthenes algorithm that it gave us, it literally told us like what every little piece of code was doing, right? So create a list of all numbers, explains what this line of code is, zero and one are not prime. So here I think we have pretty sufficient documentation. This is like a pretty short function. So there's not really too much to talk about here. But what if we try to go and look at some more elite code problems, right? Like let's, let's actually just go ahead and look at some other problems. Maybe we'll do some, some hard ones, right? So let's do a regular expression matching. This is something that people like to say is quite, um, these regular expressions are, can be quite challenging sometimes. And sometimes we even use computer systems to help us come up with a regular expression because sometimes they're a little tricky, especially for ones that are like detecting like emails and phone numbers and things like that. But yeah, in any case, let's actually go ahead and ask them to generate a solution to this leaking problem. Please generate a solution to this problem and please document the code. So hopefully now that we've added this suffix, um, requesting ChatGPT to document our code, um, we're basically now getting these nice comments in our function that are, that are telling us exactly what's going on, right? So let's actually see if this matches the function signature and it does. So we're gonna actually be able to test this on the leak code grader to see if it um, is actually correct or not. So yeah, it's telling us exactly what's going on in every line of code here. Um, theoretically, 
this algorithm may be quite complex and saying exactly what each line of code is doing may be um, not too useful, right? Because saying what a singular line of code does in isolation may not be as interesting or important to you as a coder as opposed to knowing what each line contributes to the algorithm as a whole. But this is actually really awesome because after that, it always seems to suffix this code block with an explanation of the intuition behind the algorithm. So in this case, it's uh, dynamic programming, which is a strategy that's commonly employed to help increase the runtime complexity of your algorithms. So yeah, this is, this is a super long paragraph. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail about what exactly is going on here, but you can see that quite simply, it's able to generate documentation and explanations for the code that it's writing. Now, we've already kind of seen this application in algorithms and we just tested it on a more complex algorithm. Maybe just for good measure, we can actually bring this code in here and just verify that it works. So if we go ahead and paste that in and correct the function signature because it is not correct right now and fix that, we should run it. And sure enough, Oh, there is actually a runtime error, but that is because it is not indented correctly. So that's actually on me. But if we run that again, well, it should probably be correct. And yeah, I'm not even gonna bother to submit it because honestly, it's probably correct. And yeah, we can see that it's able to also explain why that's the case. Now, one thing that's really popular in computer science is this thing called GitHub, which is um, a place for you to kind of, in a sense, upload your code. Um, it's built on top of Git, which is a uh, source control or version control software. But um, yeah, basically we can go in here and see commit history or basically changes that have been made to this code base. Now the code base that we're actually currently looking at is Visual Studio Code, which is which happens to be the application that we've been using to uh, view our code and edit it and view our file system. This, this beautiful app here is actually open source or available on GitHub under the Microsoft organization. And we can actually go in here and do some digging into uh, the entire code that this sort of runs, right? To, to create this app. Now, you can scroll down, see the readme, see more details about it. Um, but what we're really interested in is seeing how ChatGPT can document this. So this is a pretty popular repository, lots of contributors, lots of issues, people basically reporting bugs. Um, pull requests, basically like contributions, basically requests, like as you can see here, they're like updating things, implementing linting, using variables. So basically people are trying to add, right? So that's the whole essence of open source is that you've got lots of people working on one project and all contributing their efforts. Now, if we were to go in, let's look at scripts or something, right? So we've got a script right here. Um, and we see that there, this is a batch script. And I don't, let's, let's just say I don't know what a bash script is, right? So like, let's go ahead and ask, what is this code doing? Could you please document it? And if we go ahead and paste that in, let's see if it's able to tell us what's going on here. This is a Windows batch file script that is used to launch VS Code in development mode. Here's a summary of what it does. It sets the script to run in the local scope. It sets the title of the console window to VS Code Dev. So it's literally, I'm pretty sure if, if now with this description, right, we can go through line by line and kind of dissect what each of them are doing, even though we've never seen this type of file before, but we now have a better idea of what it's doing. Now let's maybe look at some other, other scripts. So this one's called test. So it probably runs some tests. I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. Let's do a little more digging here. Let's see source. Source is probably interesting. And that's not a very long file. Let's see if we can find a, a long file. So this is main. This is a pretty long file. So yeah, let's, let's, let's actually not, let's save ourselves the um, burden of copying that entire thing, even though there's a button right here for it. But actually let's just take the URL because we know from a previous lesson that it can actually go into the URLs and read the content on there. This is, this is amazing. It even shows us actually that we can run the script with an argument which is probably specified here, right? So you can run it with an argument and builds built-in extensions for VS Code. So that's super cool. It's, it's, I just learned so much about the script that I had never known before. So um, could you please document and describe what is being done in the code here? And let's paste a link to that. 
And similarly, it should give us the rundown on exactly what's going on in that code here. So it's the main entry point for Visual Studio Code's main process. Managing the UI, handling user interactions, communicating with the renderer process. And yeah, it, it's literally now going through all of those functions that are declared in there. So yeah, I think it's going through those functions right now. So it's probably looking for create window. I may have not looked that up correctly. Yeah, so it creates a function create window that is used to create a new browser window. And yeah, it's, it's basically going through and telling us everything right now. So this is amazing, right? Um, let's like think about this from the point of view of a, an open source dev or even you as a software engineer, someone who's writing code, you could ask them, what is that piece of code doing, right? Maybe let's see if it even understands or is able to tell us what it had generated in the code generation lecture, right? Um, if we go ahead and copy this, um, I think we get the idea of what's going on here. It's, it's really smart, right? It, it's, it can actually go in and tell us exactly what's going on. So what is being done in this code? Or maybe we could even ask it to add comments, right? Like um, this isn't some terribly complex code, but um, by any means, but we can definitely ask it to tell us what it's doing. So this is a simple React component that implements a rock, paper, scissors game. Um, it imports things, defines the app function, uses state, to keep track of stuff for the rock, paper, scissors game, and even tells us what this function is doing, right? So it recognizes this unique structure of code and basically just tells us everything about this code. So this is, this is really, really useful, right? Because as I had said before, um, code is often read more than it is written. And if you ever write software, it's very important that you write documentation for it or else no one's gonna wanna use your stuff because they don't wanna have to go through the code and read it. But now with ChatGPT, not only can you really stop saying that because now you can just have this ChatGPT thing generate that for you, but as a programmer writing your own software, I think it's very helpful to do this to not only get a better understanding of your own code, maybe see it from a different perspective if ChatGPT happens to give you a different perspective on it. So yeah, this is, this is very powerful stuff. And I think it's important to keep in mind all the powerful things that ChatGPT can do for you in terms of code generation and writing algorithms for us or implementing algorithms for us. But what's really important is that at the end of the day, you understand what's going on. So I think this is really important to do, right? So computer science is very logic-based. Um, you can definitely convince yourself of why a solution is correct. So whenever you do generate code, I think it's very important to supplement it with asking ChatGPT why it is the case that it works and then taking it upon yourself to make sure you understand why it works and then this is a very useful tool when it comes to that. In this lesson, I just wanna just say a few parting words and maybe outline some of the key takeaways that you should be taking from this course. So yeah, ChatGPT, all in all, as you can see, is a very powerful tool when it comes to learning how to code, just advancing in your coding journey, with that, whether that be learning more about algorithms, helping you understand why your code's incorrect and maybe even helping you debug and finding out what's wrong with it helping you be more mindful about the code that you're writing and helping you to generate documentation to gain a better understanding of the code that you've written and also just be able to help eliminate the monotony of certain tasks like writing boilerplate code or setting things up. So it can be a great alternative to Google, which software engineers already use all the time to go ahead and read documentation about code so they can integrate other people's code into their own code. And yeah, so we can see that it's great in all these ways, but it's very important to keep in mind that it does have its limitations here, right? Um, it is capable of generating incorrect information as we had earlier established. So, I mean, one thing you're probably thinking at this point is, well, that's great. I can use ChatGPT to learn about coding, but if it can do all this great stuff, isn't it just gonna take all of our jobs? So maybe just as a way to end this all off is let's, let's ask for its opinion or not opinion, but what does it have to say about that? Um, how many jobs are you taking away by existing? This is a pretty interesting question to ask. As an AI language model, I don't have physical presence. I don't perform tasks that human workers do. So it's saying, it's claiming that it's not taking away any jobs, but how many programming jobs are, will you displace? I think that's a good word. Um, and it says, 
It doesn't have the ability to displace programming. Okay, that's that's very interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do agree with that actually. So um, there there at the end of the day, there's only so much this thing can do in terms of generating code. A lot of the code that it, it is very good at generating is well-established algorithms or even code snippets that already exist online. So not to sort of say those resources are bad because those are definitely helpful and can be reused. That's, that's, that's a very core principle in computer science is that we always want to reuse code, right? Like why write code that already exists and if it's better, right? So it's something we all kind of work towards. That's kind of why open source exists as well, right? Because we all want to pull our efforts in to something that's great and like why rewrite stuff, right? Like that's, that's a pretty core, t core tenet of um, software engineering and computer science. So while AI and automation may change the nature of programming work, they're unlikely to displace jobs entirely. So yeah, rest assured, um, this is a great opportunity. We should view it with its flaws. We should be aware that it has the capacity to make mistakes and report information that's incorrect. Obviously not its fault, but just something we should keep in mind so we can coexist with this technology healthily. Hopefully you've learned some new interesting ways to utilize ChatGPT for coding, whether that be learning or sort of growing to become a better programmer. This is a great tool and I think it's really gonna change the way that we sort of go about coding and how we may even find future discoveries in the field of computer science. So thanks for coming with me on this journey and hope you enjoy it.